and welcome to another lawn care live stream. It's Friday night as always. You guys know what we do. Get down, talk about lawn care, uh, have a great time um, answering your questions, and just talking about the projects that you're working on. My name is Ron Henry and the live stream is all about you guys. So the way this works, pretty simple. Uh, drop your questions down in the chat and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time. So let's see who we have in uh, the live stream tonight. I hope everyone's doing pretty well. Um, let's see what we got. I think Mflow has the honor of being there first. He says, hey, Ron, what state do you live in? I am in the fine state of Georgia, Northeast Georgia, Mflow. So I see you got a question there. I'll, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, we got Flip McNeil in the house. We got VMH in the house. What's going on, man? I hope, hope all is going well. I know you've been um, fighting with a lawn renovation project there trying to get rid of some crabgrass. So hopefully that is doing better. We'll dig into it a little bit. And uh, let's see who else we got. We got Finn Cut in the house saying good evening, happy Friday. Very, very cool, man. So guys, we get right into the questions. We got some really good ones going on. Um, you know, it's Labor Day weekend. So, you know, as far as like a great time to get out there and, and mess around the lawn and mow, you know, it's a great, great time. So hopefully you guys got some good plans uh, for that. So the first question we have here is from Mflow. He says, I'm working on a little league uh, infield. Grass, the grass is long and weedy. I cut it shorter and I see new growth, but I'd like to reseed. Can't afford new sod. What seed do you recommend for SoCal baseball field? Um, so it's so it's hotter there. What I guess it'd be nice to know what kind of grass you currently have. Um, M flow, if you're still on the on the live stream, if you can drop it down um, below, uh, that would that would be helpful. Here's the thing. Um, some of what you're dealing with, with the grass being thin um, has has been because to your point that you know weeds have been really like running the show, right? Now that you are, are knocking those backs, you're probably, I'm not sure if you're using herbicides to be able to do that, but it sounds like you're beginning to, to make the weeds less dominant. That's allowing the grass that is there to grow through. So, you know, I might do that for a while before I get in a hurry to start, um, you know, throwing down more seed or anything like that. I, I might see how the lawn does over the next month or so um, just to see if the, if the grass recovers and begins taking over the field. I don't, I mean, being in SoCal, I imagine you have warm season grass. Um, Again, I'm not really totally really familiar with California weather. If it gets as cold there as it does here in Georgia, like seeding isn't something you're really going to want to do now anyway. Assuming you're, you're going to want to put down warm season um, grass seed anyway, right? Uh, because, um, you know, there's not a ton of time between now and when it's going to get cold uh, that you might lose some of the seed. So, so I guess you can give me some more details as you drop in there down below um, and uh, we will definitely revisit uh, it. All right, um, so we got a super chat. Let me run down here and grab that really quick because I don't want to ignore it. We got one from Thomas Tucker in the house. Thank you so much, Thomas. Super Very generous. Received. He says, what's up, Ron? Uh, with us losing daylight daily, when's the absolute latest you would put out a quick release triple 10? Uh, thanks for your help. In this growing season, my turf has never looked better. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Glad to hear that. Always awesome to hear that. And look, 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 you live, bro. Look, you, you, you spend some time in the gym, man. Um, so as far as uh, triple 10, so I'm going to be, I'm still using the same formula that I've been using um, since April. So I'm still going to be putting out Humic Max, um, which is a 1608. I'm going to be, I'm doing that. I'm supposed to do it this morning. I'm going to do it tomorrow. So that's going to go down at full rate this month. And then in October, I'll, depending on how things are looking, how temperatures are looking and how things are beginning to fall off, I'll probably go half rate in October. So um, if you want to put down your triple 10 this month, you're good to go. Um, if you, uh, I'm not sure where in the country you are, but you know, when, when October rolls around, you can begin backing that off a little bit if you, uh, if you want to, but yeah, you're, you're definitely good to go at least one more, um, one more go around this month. But again, look at your grass, see how it's doing and let that be, um, your primary guide. I'm glad to hear that your turf is doing better, um, than ever. It, ha it really has very little to do with me and has a lot more to do with the fact that you're just, you're paying attention to it, right? You're just taking more time and you're spending more time on it. And that is uh that's the result you know where focus goes energy flows so that really shows uh it's showing up in your turf so thanks again for the super chat um if you have any more questions let me know but i would do it this month and then next month see how the grass is looking see how temperatures are and then back um back it down based um on that great great question all right next up we got mr flick mcneil in the house he says do you think it would be okay to use your celsius certainty combo on bermuda that was laid five months ago I have an outbreak of carpet grass. So five months ago, so we are in September, so August, July, June, um, May, April. Yeah, oh yeah, so like like late March, early April, so it was laid down, yeah, you're, you're good to go. The thing is, the reason why um, I chose Celsius and Certainty for two reasons. One, that combination can be applied when temperatures are higher, like now, like in, in summer months. 
Um, and they are a little bit slower working herbicides. Like there is, there is stuff you can use that's, that's a lot faster. Like if you use like dismiss and speed zone, that's a great combination. Works really fast. Will kill weeds quickly, but it's also going to discolor your grass. You also got to be really careful when you, around the, around the temperatures you spray it because it's just, it's going to discolor your grass and it's going to look unsightly, right? Um, the Celsius certainty combo was chosen specifically because you could spray it at higher temperatures. Um, it is a, as far as like a, um, a set of herbicides being milder on the grass, it is a milder, um, a combination and some of the stuff you could be using and you get good results with it. So yeah, um, if you've got an outbreak of carpet grass and you want to put down some certainty Celsius, yeah, I would absolutely, I'd absolutely go with that. Um, five months is, is plenty of time, uh, to be able to, uh, to do that. Great question, man. And congrats on the Bermuda. You didn't say what kind of Bermuda, but it's Bermuda, right? So it's all good. Cannot, uh, can't, can't fault you on that. Uh, let me know if you have any, uh, other questions. All right. VMH is in the house. It's happy Friday. What's going on VMH? Um, and, and I was ta asking, talking back and forth with him about a uh, crabgrass problem he's having in his lawn. He and I have been talking back and forth probably for like six weeks now where he's trying to do a lawn renovation where his lawn was overrun with crabgrass and he, you know, we've been working on, on different, um, options to eliminate that so we can get his lawn going. So I think he's starting to make progress. We'll, we'll um, get to his question here in a second. And then next up, we got Michael C saying army worms are taking over LOL. Yeah, they are. It's really a thing. So, um, on Sunday, I have a video coming out. Um, Sunday morning, I have a video coming out on army worms. Um, you get the sick for the 63 of you guys that are in here. If you guys want to know ahead of time, what I'm going to tell you guys to put down, you guys could probably guess already is going to be a celeprin, a celeprin G. Um, and then if you want a liquid, I'm going to be um, recommending the Miramichi green pest control. So I'm going to give you guys some rates for applying the granular and some rates for applying the liquid product. Uh, a celeprin G is a more expensive, um, uh, insecticide. It is a little bit more expensive, but here's the thing. Alex put this stuff down on his lawn in April. I did the same thing on my lawn. Like whenever you guys, you guys look at my YouTube videos, like I did a video on a celeprin, um, in April. That was the last time I put any kind of granular insecticide down on my lawn. And that's it. And we have no issues with grubs, no issues with army worms. Like other lawns around us are having problems with army worms. Neither of our lawns have any issues whatsoever. So it is more expensive, but it's a really good product. The residual of it, like last, last, like what they say, all season. So, um, so we'll be talking about that Sunday morning. If you guys are interested, it's a really short video. It's like three minutes, but it gives you everything you need to know and nothing that you really don't. And then for a liquid, if you want something that's going to work really quick as far as to like kill them, like a contact killer type thing, um, type product, uh, the Miramichi Green Pest Control, all natural, non-toxic won't hurt kids, fur babies, that kind of thing. So that's going to be in the video. So you guys are getting a sneak peek as far as what's happened. But yeah, man, I think it's, there's a cycle for what I understand, um, Michael. The, um, and I think this is like every seven years, army worms get bad. And this this year, man, like the country's just getting ravaged by them. So um, if, you, if you had your preventative insecticide down, you're good. But if not, a Celeprin G and then the Miramichi Green Pest Control, um, which you can get at the golf course lawn store, are going to be um, a good combination that... Um, is effective and is also like as, as good as you can be for the environment, right? The, one, the reason why I recommend Acceleprin as well is because it's not going to hurt pollinators. It's not going to kill like bees and, or, or things or the insects you want to keep around. So hopefully your lawn recovers quickly. Um, army worms can do a lot of damage really quickly, unfortunately. So sorry you're dealing with that. All right. So VMH is up with this question. He says, when Bermuda goes dormant, does the root system um, still actively growing? Is the root system still actively growing? I read online that the top goes dormant when soil temps around 50 degrees but the roots still are active. Another person told me otherwise. Yeah, so if you think about it, VMH, um, that is correct. The, the the top growth slows down or comes, I mean, you say it comes to a halt, but really it slows down a ton. Like it's not, not really visible. Um, but the bottom growth, the root system is still active. It's still alive. Because if you think about it, if you if the root system died, like if it went completely dormant, um, like the grass would would die, right? It, so it's still it's still um, taking up water, still taking up nutrient in much smaller quantities to feed the crown of the grass, so that whenever temperatures come back in next year in the spring, um, Bermuda can wake up and do its thing, and you know consider continue its its uh, its role as the dominating grass that it is, right? So yeah, um, you are right. The top goes dormant, the bottom is still active. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So, I mean, perhaps the person was confused or they just, but if you, if you just think about it for yourself, right? Like whenever someone tells you something, like sit back and ask yourself, does that make sense? Does it make sense that the top goes dormant? Yeah. Because I can visually see it. Does it make sense that the, like the root system would completely shut down too? It could, but I mean, then how would the grass live or how would it survive? Right? So, um, great question. It's a good one. I've never been asked that one before. Um, like everything slows down, but the root system is still, uh, very much alive. So great question. 
All right, so you're saying that with your renovation project, about 90% of the crabgrass is already dead or actively dying. Awesome, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Uh, sounds like success, right? Between Celsius and the conchlorac and everything else you've been using, sounds like you've been you're getting some um, some uh, some good results there. And the, the, as far as new ones growing, that's going to be pre-emergent, man. Like the. Um, I can't stress enough, and again, there's going to be a, some content coming out in a, in a month or so on pre-emergent, but literally outside of like mowing your lawn religiously, one of the best things you can do for keeping weeds out of your lawn is putting down pre-emergent in the fall and putting down pre-emergent in the spring. So doing it twice a year, spring and fall, um, literally if, the, if you only do two herbicide applications a year, that should be it. Um, and that's going to do a ton coupled with regular mowing for keeping weeds away, right? So, I mean, uh, it's 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 much um, cheaper. Trust me, it's much cheaper to, to to prevent weeds from growing in the first place than to kill them um, after the fact. So, uh, so just something to keep in mind there, um, uh, BMH. Great, great uh, question. All right, um, so next up, we got a super chat here. Let me go down and grab it. One from Patty Barnes. Super chat received. She says, essential G put down on my TIF grand and my son is doing well, glad to hear it. She says, however, Nuts Edge is spreading quickly. How long to wait before attacking it? How um, how old is the sod, um, Patty? I mean, again, uh, you know, for nuts edge, you could use certainty. Certainty is um, is a pretty is a pretty good herbicide. I mean, it'll kill it kills pretty much all sedges. Like you know, the, you, just, you look at some labels, they'll say you know it kills this sedge, doesn't kill this one. It's, it controls this one, but not that one. Like certainty, pretty much kills all of them, gets most of them. Um, so that is what I would go with. Just use it at the low rate, like the three scoop, the the the, the rate that I showed in that video. Um, and that should help you um, knock out the uh, the nuts edge. It's very very effective against that, um, and it's it's pretty easy on your on your grass, right? I don't know how old the sod is, but certainty is what I would I would use if you're looking for something that's more professional grade. If you're looking for something that's um, even slower, uh, but it's not quite as good, you can go with Image. Image is a, is a decent product. Um, there's also a spray that um, Ortho makes. You can find it at Home Depot. That works really fast, but it's like kind of temporary. It'll knock it back. But then the the nut sedge is going to come back. Like certainty will knock it back and re and truly kill it to where it's going to take a while for it to reemerge again. So just um, depends on which way you want to go uh, as far as like cost. Because again, Celsius is what does Celsius cost? It's like a hundred dollars for a, a, a container of it. Granted, it lasts a really long time. I'm sorry, a certainty rather. Um, it, it lasts a long time, but it's not um, it's not inexpensive, unfortunately. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about here. Let me show you. Um, boom. So this. So if you're looking for something more professional grade, you can go with Certainty. I have a video that I'll link to you here in a second that actually shows you how I mix it. Um, and it's again, this is as far as for sedges, this is excellent. Sedge hammer is also excellent. But out of the two, I'd probably give the nod to Certainty. It's a little bit more pricey, but it pretty much kills everything um, from a sedge standpoint. And also Poa and, and, a, and a few other like pain, pain in the neck weeds. So uh, hopefully that helps. Um, let me know if I can help with uh, anything else. Great question. All right, we got Kevin D. Jones in the house. He's up, hello, alpha grass people. These army worms are a beast. They are a beast, man. They are pretty nasty. And I gotta tell you, now here's the thing, guys. I I hate to do this. I hate I hate to come to really, you know, even admit this, but I did an experiment on, you know, the three little grass plots that I have in the back lawn. I have like, um, I have Leroy, which is the Arden 15. I've got the yet to be named um, Zoysia um, plot that is um, Compadre Zoysia, I think it is. And then um, I got Rymuda and then another um, RN15. So I did an experiment with PGR, right? Because I know sometimes people um, you know, always question, you know, can you go a little heavier on PGR? What could possibly happen? And instead of like doing damage potentially to my lawn, I went a little bit heavier on the rate on those three plots. Um, if you guys want to see the results, check out my YouTube stories. I filled up a bunch of content on it this morning. But um, the Bermuda started yellowing. The tip started yellowing, getting that, that normal yellowing haze. The Zoysia still looks great, man. I, went, I put it at like down at like 0.45 ounces per gallon or per thousand square feet, like a heavier rate. The Zoysia just took it. Um, the Bermuda started yelling a little bit. So, I mean, we're alpha, but I, I got to give the, the nod to Zoysia, man. I think it's probably because it's been hanging out with, um, with Leroy and them. It's starting to, you know, start, it's starting to lift, starting to bulk up a little bit. It's trying to make some gains. So it's interesting that the Zoysia um, took to a little bit higher dosage of PGR better than the Bermuda did. So something kind of a fun fact. Um, very, very cool. All right, so um, Alex B is in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Almost go time for this one. Looking forward to it. Happy upcoming Labor Day weekend as well. Definitely, guys. Hopefully you guys got some plans. Want to get out and do some stuff, you know, spend time with the family, um, do something fun that's not only related to lawn care, but, you know, get out there and also mow the grass too. You know, get out there and do something fun in the lawn. It's a great, it's a great um, weekend for it. 
Kevin says, have you run? Have you had a birth? Uh, you had a birthday? Mine was last week. Happy uh, belated uh, king of grass intelligence. I don't, I'm not really the king of anything, man. Probably maybe the king of consistency, but not necessarily, I wouldn't say necessarily of, of being like a grass expert by any stretch. Still learning uh, a ton. And no, I have not had a birthday this year as yet. My birthday is in September though. Still in September, but it's not It's not come up as yet. So um, nope, not yet. I am, I am a September baby. All right, um, so Thin Cut um, is up next. He says, Ron, did you get what I sent you? Sent you the address on the envelope you sent to me? I have to check and see Thin Cut. Um, I'll, um, I'll check it. Um, I, can't, I, can't see. I can't check it tomorrow. I can check um, Monday, and I'll see if it came in. If you, ma- if you mailed it, I don't know, like, or like middle of this week, it should be here by now. So, um, but yeah, I'll look out for it, and I will let you know. Because I have your email address. I'll definitely let you know um, if anything came through for me. We have uh, Papa Mo's Low in the house. What's going on, sir? Um, hopefully you had a happy birthday and you know, someone sent a, sent a care package to you. So hopefully it showed up and, uh, you, hopefully you're enjoying that. Always uh, fun to have you in the live stream. You know, Alex is talking again about army worms. He says, uh, army worms are out in force this season. It seems, um, down South, especially I have family in a few parts of Florida and Georgia and are all are dealing with army worms more than ever. So I guess it's a quick poll in the live stream. How many of you guys are dealing with army worms this year? I did a poll, um, a couple of days ago asking about like lawn issues that you're dealing with, but I, I would be interesting to find out like of like you guys are like pretty much the hardcore lawn care people. Um, you know, which of how many of you guys have are dealing with army worm problems in your lawn this year? It'd be just, just out of like the, you know, 80 people that are in here, be nice to find out, um, you know, what, what that looks like. And yeah, VMH says right now I'm at 20%, uh, 20, 30% Bermuda, but it's growing in evenly over my entire yard. It's, uh, they're about 50%. I'm putting down some triple 12 next week to push them harder, adding some RGS, air eight, C kelp and biospectrum to help. Sounds good, man. It sounds like a plan. It's just time. Remember this, remember it. And this is a, a good point for anybody that's doing like a lawn renovation, right? If your lawn was weeds, like super, like just full of weeds, like it was, I wouldn't say neglected, but you just didn't do a lot with it over the course of several months or years and you start working on it, it's really easy to get into the trap of, you know, just throwing tons of stuff at it, trying to speed up the process. Um, VMH, I know we've been talking, he's been really like knocking back um, uh, the, trying to kill off the crabgrass and you're doing a lot of great things to, try, to help the, the the Bermuda begin to, to grow in and take over, but just know that it's still gonna take time, right? It's still gonna take time. It sounds like you're moving in the right direction, but just realize for anyone who's doing a lawn renovation, it's a, uh, it's like watching grass grow, right? I mean, fortunately, if you're dealing with Bermuda, you're watching a grass that grows more quickly, but it still it still takes time. So uh, it sounds like you're on the right track, sir. Definitely keep you posted on as far as how it goes. I'm sure you're gonna get a good result, mainly because you're paying attention to it. So uh, thanks for the comment. All right, next up, we got Joseph Roberts at the house. He says, hey, Ron, ha- um, hello, everyone. Happy three-day weekend. Uh, same to you, uh, Joseph. It's nice having um, having a Monday off, right, for a change. That's uh, it's always nice, always nice. All right, so now we get a top dressing question, our first top dressing question, because here's the thing, guys. For us warm season um, guys and gals, our top dressing window has pretty much closed for this season. If you want to do a little bit of spot here and there, eh, I still wouldn't recommend it, but you might be able to get away with it, right, depending on, on where you are. But for the cool season guys and gals, like, this is your go time, right? This is, you're going to see, like, all the top dressing videos come out and lawn leveling videos come out from all the cool season folks. So, um, so yeah, but Kevin is asking a question. I imagine he's got cool season grass, but he says, hey, Ron, I have 800 square feet that I want to level. Will one ton of sand uh, be enough on average? Not sure if this is my first time doing this. Is bar sand okay? I'm not sure what bar sand is. Um, if you're talking about river sand, um, yes. The idea, um, um, Kevin, you want a coarser sand. You don't want like play sand. You want something that's a little bit more coarse uh, to level with. And as far as one ton, um, I typically go more by the by volume. So like one yard, one cubic yard of sand per thousand square feet is, is usually a good number. One cubic yard weighs around a ton. So yeah, if you're getting a ton delivered, that should be should be enough. Um, it, a lot of it, here's the thing, it depends on the lawn too, right? Some lawns, if they are already, you know, they're not terrible, they're not gonna take up, they're not like super, like a, like, I don't know, like a, like a dirt track or something. Um, you know, they'll take, uh, they take a little bit less sand, but in general, one yard per thousand square feet is enough to be able to do a, a decent job top dressing. And you got 800 square feet, so you should have plenty, um, and then some left over, or you can, if you got an area that takes more, you should be good to go. So, um, only thing I'd recommend if you haven't, if you don't have a leveling rake, uh, I would pick one up or if you have a buddy that has one, borrow one from them, 
because it does make the process easier. I, I think so. There's people that do different things. Um, like Premiere Cuts did a really cool video where you're showing using like a mat, like a really, those big um, like anti-slip mats and using that to drag the material in, that can work too. But I am a fan of a good old fashioned uh, leveling rake, like the lawn loot, I guess, as like the Australians or the Brits call it. But yeah, those are uh, very good and it's a, it, it'll, it'll make the work a lot easier. All right, um, Papa Moslow says, yeah, Ron, thank you. And James for the hat, love it. You're very, very welcome, sir. Uh, happy birthday or happy belated birthday. Um, I'm glad that, you know, we were able to make that happen. You know, so it's always, always, uh, always cool to help out. All right, so VMH says, I'm also doing another uh, test. You scalp three areas, seated, uh, TXD Bermuda, watered five times, five times a day. Ooh, that's a lot of water, man, be careful. Um, he says, and now a lot of Bermuda germinated all over those areas in four to five days. Very cool. So here's the thing now, VMH, now that it's germinating, you, can, you need to keep watering it, but let's back it down a little bit. I don't want you to um, put so much water on it um, that you start introducing other problems like fungus issues, algae, that kind of thing. So, I mean, you're not saying how much water you're putting on in each of these five, um, five time a day watering sessions, but now the grass is germinating and growing in, you can probably back that down just a little bit just to prevent the chances of um, getting some issues. It sounds, sounds like you're doing a lot of testing, man. You're kind of like me. You don't mind making your lawn ugly or just playing around with stuff. Uh, just, just in the sake of science, right? It's grass. It's kind of hard to hurt it permanently. Very, very good. All right, next up, we have Mr. Kevin D. Jones. He says, hey, Ron, I need to email you with a top dressing referral for South Atlanta. He is familiar with you, and I told him you two need to connect. Uh, scalped, aerated, and top dressed with PJ Sand. Very cool, man. It sounds like they're, they're doing, it, doing it right. On my email address, you guys, most of you guys know it, but it is ron at golfcourselawn.com. Uh, send me an email there, Kevin, and I will, um, I'll, I'll help them out in any way that I can. So yeah, very, very cool. Thanks for uh, for letting me know. As far as things that I had to revisit or take care of um, last week, um, there was someone that had a question about Spittlebug. Spittlebug and um, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. If this product, like the all-natural um, pesticide that I, I've been talking about here lately, um, if that will control it. So I reached out to them, um, to their formulator, and they said they have not specifically tested that against Spittlebug. Um, they said that, that they're fairly confident that it will repel it, but as far as it killing it, controlling it, um, that they were not able to speak to. So if you have it, try it, give it a shot. Um, it's supposed to have some of some effectiveness, but as far as being able to say, like I can with army worms, that yeah, if you apply this at eight ounces per gallon, um, it's going to kill army worms. Can't say that for sure with with the um, with the um, spittle bug because they just haven't they haven't tested that particular um, insect um, as yet. So one thing I had to do some housekeeping. I want to make sure I didn't forget. So now it is done. All right, we got a super chat here. Let me scroll down and grab it from Mr. Kevin uh, Sheehan. Super chat received. He says, um, "Thanks for all the help this year, Ron. I've learned a lot and screwed up um, some also. That's all part of it, man." Um, messing up your lawn, screwing up, making mistakes. That's all, that's all part of the, uh, the process. I learned a lot. I mean, you know, as long, as long as you're, you're willing to make mistakes and, um, you know, and recover from them, you're going to be, you'll, you'll learn faster. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to learn, but it's a, it's a good way to learn what not to do. Right. Um, so yeah, you're very, very welcome. I'm glad that your lawn is doing well this year and that, uh, you know, all your, all your hard work is, is paying off. All right, um, let's see our our next question. Our next question here. So we got Mr. Chris Balducci in the house. He's saying, uh, "Ciao, Ron. What's going on? How's it going, Chris? Glad to see you uh, here, hanging out as always." And um, next up, Jason Greeley's in the house. He says, "Good evening, Ron. This is Jason from Hampton, Georgia. Welcome, Jason from Hampton." He says, "When do you start raising your mowing height of cut before your Bermuda goes to dormancy?" So here's the thing. This year, Jason, I've been mowing at half an inch um, pretty much all year. This past week, I went up a little bit. I've gone up to 0.62, I'm at 0.62 um, high to cut now. Um, and I might get all the way up to three quarters of an inch by the time the season is all over. Last year, I mowed the lawn at 0.75 at three quarters of an inch all season long, and I didn't change it even when the grass went into dormancy. Right now, though, this time of year, as fast as the grass is growing, like unless I want to get out there and mow it like every day, and I mean literally like every day, half inch is really, really hard to do. Um, 0.62 seems a little bit more tolerable to where I'm able to cut it and not have scalping issues and things like that. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I can tell you last year I went 0.75 all season and there were no, no issues with the lawn coming out of dormancy this year. There were no problems, anything like that. Keep in mind too, like us being in Georgia, we don't really get hard freezes like a lot of, like if you go up to like 
say Tennessee, just a little bit more further north than we are, right? Like they get they, they get colder weather um, and are much more likely to get freezing temperatures that last for you know a, a longer period of time. In Georgia, you know, we get like you know flurries on the ground and people forget to drive, and it, and it's it's you know it, it's it's rare that we have days upon days upon days of just bone chilling freezing temperatures that could actually injure the grass. So um, I've already started taking it up a little bit. I might end up at three quarters of an inch um, here by the end of September. And um, that's that's as high as I'll go because last year I did that and got a real good result. So that's what I will um, do this year as well. So it's, it's kind of up to you. Look at your grass. Pay attention to how your grass is looking. I can tell you in my in my case, that's not for everybody, but in my case, three quarters of an inch going in the dormancy worked out just fine. So um, just uh, something, something to keep in mind. Hopefully uh, that helps. All right, Alex B saying, my autumn renovation plans have been pushed back slightly due uh, being uh, being in path of old Ida's remnants in the northeast, eight inches of rain, lawn is saturated, and the hard out aeration was postponed. Yeah, man. So it's this one thing. I mean, rain is good, but like too much rain is not good. So uh, just keep working on it, man, Alex. You know, if it's um the it, it, that should start falling off soon, the grass will dry will begin drying out by this time next week. You should be good to go, I would think. Right? You know, fingers crossed for you, but you should be good. Um, but yeah, it, it's smart to back it off and wait because you don't want to get out there and actually end up doing more damage to the lawn um, uh, try by, by trying to go through and like get heavy equipment on it or anything like that. We're just doing more damage than you are really helping things. So I think you made the good call on, uh, on postponing it. All right, we got Connor Souls up here. He says, what's up, Ron? Hope you're doing well. I am, sir. Cannot complain. I got my lemonade here. Guys, tonight, being Labor Day weekend, you know, ha- had a spring for the Milo's. Got the Milo's tonight, so I'm not I'm not drinking like, you know, that um, the, the Publix lemonade. We're going to, you know, it's Labor Day weekend. We got we to gotta do it right. So we got the, the good lemonade. Whoever recommended that to me, who's it, Kevin or Andy? Whichever one of you guys recommended it. Man, that is some good lemonade. That That is like, I mean, if we, if we make Chick-fil-A lemonade the gold standard, um, then Milo's for mass-produced lemonade is it's it's there. It's not quite as good as Chick Fil A, but it's it's a pretty good. It's good stuff. I gotta gotta admit, it's good good recommendation. All right, Derek's in the house. What's going on, Derek? I uh, hope you're doing well, sir. And then uh, Jeremy White has a question about Caravan G and Headway G. He says, "Big bro, hey, I asked earlier today if you use Caravan G along with Headway. Um, if not, which pest? What pesticides do you use? Okay, so if you are doing Caravan." Um, Caravan G, Jeremy. I would not do Caravan G and Headway G at the same time because you're, then you're basically going to be doubling up on azoxystrobin. So um, Caravan G has an insecticide. I forget what the name of the active ingredient in that one is, but it also has azoxystrobin as a fungicide. And Headway G is uh, uh, azoxystrobin and propoconazole. So you really wouldn't want, want to put both of those down at the same time. What you would do is you'd put down Caravan G if you have, like, say you're dealing with an army worm issue, you want to go with that um, instead of a celeprin. You could go with that. Um, and then if you still had fungus issues that you wanted to address 21 to 28 days later, that's when you would bring in the headway G. So I would not do them both at the same time. I'd do caravan and then 21 to 28 days later, then we could bring in the headway and that's just gonna help, you know, clean up any um, any fungus that you're dealing with. Um, that That is what I would... Um, I'd recommend. As far as pesticides that I use, I really don't use a ton of pesticides on my lawn, man. Like, um, again, a celeprin, and I keep, I keep talking about it and I haven't showed you guys. Let me just... Um, let me get up here and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Acela G, boom, there we go, yep. Okay, so as far as the insecticide that I used on my lawn this year, like uh, Caravan G, the one you're talking about, is an option. But the one that I went with this year is this guy, Acela G. It's a little bit more expensive, a little more pricey, um, but at the rate that I apply it, which is around to about right under two pounds per thousand, you're gonna get around, you're gonna get 12, between 12,500 to 14,000 square feet of coverage. So it's plenty for most lawns. Um, this is the stuff that I use. I put this stuff down in April. I had no issues with grubs this year, no issues with army worms. It's an excellent, excellent product. And the reason why I like this one more so than say um, Caravan is that it's also better for the environment, right? You, you look at it, like eventually, you know, eventually what's gonna happen in America, I'm pretty sure, is that they're gonna start regulating all the, the sides that we're putting down, right? Like the pesticides, fungicides, insecticides. So the, the quicker we can get on on the, on the track with like using stuff that is uh, that's effective, but also less bad. Um, you know, in other words, we're not, we're not killing the stuff that we don't want to kill. Um, the better off, the better off we're going to be, right? So, um, so yeah, that's what I use. I use a celeprin. It's a great, great um, insecticide, and I actually will drop it here in the chat for you in case you are, um, are in case you're interested in it. So, a celeprin G, the granular. It also comes in a liquid as well. But um, I'm a fan of granulars because mainly they're they're easier for most people to apply. Most people get a little bit more intimidated when it comes to applying liquids. 
Um, so that's why I, if there's an option between a granular and a liquid product, I tend to lean more towards a granular because for most people, um, that is easier for them to get a good result with, if that, if that makes sense. The only exception to that obviously is the Miramichi Green um, Pest Control. It's a liquid, but it's also non-toxic. So if you go a little heavy, you're not gonna really hurt anything other than your wallet. You're just gonna be applying it heavier than you really need to, but you're not gonna hurt yourself um, or, uh, or anyone else or the environment. So that's, that's, uh, that is that. Okay, um, so great question, uh, Jeremy. So yeah, so hopefully that helps you as far as how to how to um, how to um, step those two or how to use those two products um, in succession. All right, um, VMH is back in. He says he's killing off seventy to eighty percent of the crabgrass instead of waiting for them to die from winter. Is the best things I've done uh, for the remaining Bermuda. They're coming in strong now that the dense crabgrass is gone. That, that's the thing, man. I mean, once you can give Bermuda a fighting chance. So you're knocking back the, the crabgrass and you're allowing the Bermuda to really catch all that sunlight, that heat, and just let it be, do what it does. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna be in a much better place. So you're, you're doing exactly the right thing. It's just gonna be time at this point from what I'm, what I'm hearing. All right, next up we got James Leegee says, you like the grass whisperer. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, um, James. Um, I know a little bit about Bermuda, but you know, a little bit about a few other things, but yeah, I don't know about being, uh, the grass whisperer. If you got Bermuda, I can help you out. Uh, other grasses, not not so much. All right. Uh, next up, we got Alan. Alan, Ali Gower in the house. Saying, Happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Alan? Thanks for coming to hang out as always. And here we go. The rest of the continuance here. We got Doug. Doug is in the house. We have someone that's speaking in Arabic. I'm not sure what you're saying, but uh, yeah, hopefully it's saying, hey, what's going on? Um, and then uh, Jesse Snow's in the house. Says, Happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Jesse? Hope you are doing well, sir. And then next up, we got Anthony Watalo with a question about leveling. He says, hi, I'm in South Carolina and I wanna know if it's too late to do some leveling on my centipede grass. Here's the thing, Anthony, I don't have centipede, but um, the little that I do know about is that it's more sensitive than um, Bermuda, right? And we are getting to the point in the season where like as far as the time for it to really grow in and, and recover from top dressing, um, that window is really closing. So, you know, if you do it, I, I mean, I personally would not recommend it, but if, if you're going to do it, you got to go really light. And when I say light, like a quarter of an inch or less, like just, you know, just very, very, very light, can't submerge any of it. Because none of it, think, the thing with centipede, it doesn't grow nearly as fast as Bermuda. Like Bermuda, you can, you can, you know, you can top dress it later in the season, you can top dress it super heavy, and it's going to be fine. Other grasses um, are not that way. So if it were me, I would say no, I would just wait. But if you really want to go for it, you really want to try it, um, just go super, super light um, and, and see what you get. Uh, it's, you're probably not going to kill the grass, but you're just not, it's just going to look ugly because it's not going to grow through um, very quickly. That's, that's the thing that you're going to run into primarily. So hopefully uh, that helps. All right, next up, we got San Antonio or SA uh, Town holding it down. <laughs> it's a great avatar. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Miss your stories uh, this week. Looking forward to today's live stream. Hey, man, yeah, so I got some. I put out some today. You're right. I didn't um, I didn't do any for a few days uh, here this past week. Um, been working on some content. Um, but I did the, today, I did do some. So if you wanted to see what's going on with the lawn, what's going on with Leroy, what's going on with the Zoysia uh, grass plot, um, check it out. I put some content out there um, this morning that you uh, might like. So hopefully... Uh, you can take a look at that. All right, next up, Papa Moe's Low says, no better way to spend a Friday night. <laughs> My wife asked me if I wanted to go to dinner. I told her Fridays are run. Listen, you better not, you don't, don't get your wife coming to come, come get me now. I don't want, I don't want to get on any woman's bad side. So do not like, you know, I am a firm believer in happy wife, happy life. Do not, um, you know, do not push off dinner plans <laughs> for the live stream um, and get you and then um, ultimately me in trouble. So hopefully as long as she's cool with it, I'm cool with it. So, uh, but yeah, I appreciate it, Pop Most. I, I appreciate the support. Appreciate you coming to hang out. And uh, as always, always a fun time. I always like having you around. All right. Next up, we got Ben S. He says, says Ohio. Very official. He says, Ohio. My soil test shows 574 calcium and 160 magnesium, uh, which are both five times higher than the max range. What can I do to lower this? Um, my grass struggles to stay green and keeps getting disease. It would be good to actually see the soil test results, Ben, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, send them to me here, at ron at golfcourselawn.com so I can actually look at them. Um, because I don't want to give you a two second answer over um, the live stream without seeing how everything else looks. As far as calcium and, and magnesium, like getting rid of them, um, there's not really an easy way to do that. I mean, if you if you start bagging clippings, like you're taking nutrient out of your lawn. Like, you know, um, Soil Lab, which is um, an extension of the guys at MySoil did some testing and they, they, did, uh, like they did a test of a lawn where they bagged clippings 
And then the same lawn were part of it, they mulch clippings and they were doing tons of testing on it to see, you know, how much nutrient do you really lose by um, throwing clippings out? And they actually measured it and there is a measurable loss of nutrient. So as far as a way to lower levels, um, you know, you can you could do that, but you know, more than, I would be more inclined to just simply be more cognizant to not add products um, that that to, to increase the calcium levels or to increase magnesium levels. But again, I'm giving you an answer here in a vacuum without seeing the soil test results, like seeing everything else that's going on. I'm like, you didn't mention pH or anything like that. Um, it's hard to know exactly, um, you know, what else could be contributing to the fact that your lawn um, is getting disease. Because disease can be come from a couple, from a lot of things, right? It can be from a lot, a lot of different things. So if you don't mind, send me an email to here at ron at golfcourselawn.com. I will take a look at it and I will get you an answer um, the best I can. And he says, even with disease treatments, he says, that's interesting. So um, some of that could also come down to your watering practices. Like if you're putting a lot of water on the lawn, like too much, that can help promote um, or, or create an environment where disease um, runs rampant more often or you know, can take really take root. But again, send me the soil test results. Um, and when you do that, if you got any pictures of the lawn or the disease, the issues you're dealing with, send those to me as well. I'll take a look at it and I'll get you an answer um, as best and as soon as I can. Um, great question. And if you, I will commit to, if you send me an email tonight, I will get you an answer tonight. Since you asked on the live stream, I will, uh, I'll get you an answer tonight if you ask, if you send it to me. All right, um, Winchair says, but yeah, I'm up on tonight. What's up, Grassaholics? Yeah, we are, we are Grassaholics, you know. It's it's kind of funny, you know. I, I I'm trying to convince myself that like us getting on the live stream and talking about grass on a Friday night is actually pretty cool. I'm I'm pretty much convinced that it is cool to do this, um, but part of me also just makes it makes me think that we're just like you know those those like old crotchety people that are just like spending way too much time on our lawns. But I'm I'm thinking it's just a cool factor, right? Like the rest of the world hasn't caught up with us as yet, um, and we are just ahead of the curve. I think we're just gonna go with that wind chariot, right? I think that's what we're gonna go with. All right, next up we have Emilio in the house. Up New York Lines says, happy Friday, folks. Here we are, one more week. Yeah, man, and I think this is, this is um, like we've crossed a year, a year of doing live streams, long cure live streams, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, right? Um, I, I did this as, around this time of year as a, as a way to just, uh, you know, stay engaged with you guys and have something to talk about and just, just have fun just engaging with the audience over the fall and winter. And you guys seem to really like it, so I kept doing it. So, but it's, yeah, we have crossed a year at this point, guys. Kind of hard to believe. It's pretty awesome. All right, next up, Alexander Thomas is in the house saying, what's going on, everybody? What's going on, Alexander? Nice to see you um, in the house. Um, and yeah, Ben says, yeah, he probably needs a line, but I'll leave that to Ron. You know, he, very, very possible, um, James. The thing is, is without knowing, without seeing like pH, because that's the thing I'm looking at, right? When he says the lawn is getting disease and having lots of issues, even after putting down like um, fungicides, the thing I really wanted to see is what his pH is. Because, you know, like, like, every, like nutrient uptake, um, you know, nutrient uptake is how the grass does. Like soil pH is hugely important. That's why like, you look at like the my soil tests, like the pH is literally the, list, the first thing they list on the test because it's really that important. Like, like how well the grass takes um, advantage of all the other nutrient is really based on pH, right? So among other things, but pH is, is super important. So it'd be interesting to know what his pH is like um, based on those soil test results. So we'll, we'll see. But I think, I think you're onto something, James. He might need either, you know, some citric acid to, to lower it, but I, I'm getting the feeling that his pH is probably not um, optimal based on what he's describing. Unless he's like putting water, like tons and tons and tons of water on the lawn. That could be it too. Quite possible. All right, LG in the house. The notorious LG says, smoke, see, my, why you gotta do that? I don't have any brisket. Because he was smoking brisket and watching the Ron Henry show. What more could I ask for? I know what I could ask for. I could ask for some brisket. That may be really nice if you you know, would send some, or you could like teleport some like my way, that would be really good. I'm sure, you know, out, out where you guys are in the country, you and JG, you guys, um, I'm sure you guys know how to make a pretty good brisket. I get the, I get the feeling. I'm sure you guys are pretty serious about your food. So enjoy it, sir. I appreciate the support. Even though you're out there cooking, making me jealous. I am glad that you took a little few moments out of your, uh, out of smoking the brisket to come hang out in the live stream as always, always fun. All right, so uh, Emilio is giving us an update, guys. He says, the bent grass putting green and the rye grass fairway are growing great. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, the perennial rye is almost three inches in a week, LOL. 365 SS KBG is finally growing in two. Planning a big big video soon. Yeah, man, definitely let me know. Let me know whenever you um, get that video done. Like, like literally, like um, send me an email with it or just message me on like the content or something. Whenever you get the video done, if it's really, really good and you want to get it promoted, let me know. I'll, I'll send it out um, to the audience. Because I mean, I, I'd like to see how the lawn, you know, how your green and your fairway came out. Be really cool. All right, uh, next up, we got Lone Star in the house. Says, bless Ron, big up yourself, man. All right. Thanks, um, thanks, Lone Star. I'm actually not Jamaican. I actually, you know, if, if, if anything, what would I be? I'm kind of a mutt. 
So I was born in St. Croix, but I grew up in the Dutch Antilles, but I don't speak Dutch. So I don't know. I guess that, that kind of makes me like, um, um, I don't know, I guess it makes me a mutt, right? So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But I really appreciate it, man. Always nice hearing from my, fair, my uh, fellow island brethren. Um, so thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream tonight. And then we got Papa Mo's Low saying, spray my Miramichi green carbon package today. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, man. Tomorrow is going to be a big day. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be for, um, mowing, which I should have um, mowing, which I should have done today, but I didn't get to it. And then uh, the humic max will go down, and then the carbon kit will go down as well, probably in the afternoon. Normally I do it in the morning, but I'll probably wait till the evening um, if I mow and and uh, fertilize, put the granular down earlier in the day. So yeah, man, awesome. Congrats on that. I'm glad that you're being consistent with it, Papa Moslo. That's that's the trick, really, guys. That's the trick to having an amazing lawn more than anything else. If you're consistent with your product application, but also really, really consistent with your mowing, like that's what that is the secret sauce uh, right there. So I'm um, sure your lawn looks awesome for it, Papa Moslo. All right, next up we got um, Felipe Felipe La Bomba in the house. He says, "I'm in Oklahoma. What is the correct time to throw down insecticides to kill grubs?" So the the best time would have been like Aprilish, right? That would have been to, to prevent them. But if they're here now, um, now, like I mean, if, if grubs or army worms are actively eating, and, and have, I have to, I have to train myself to not say grub worms because grub worms actually, grubs actually aren't a worm, but it's grubs to kill grubs. Um, if they're actively in your lawn now, apply something now. Like don't let them run rampant because they'll destroy your lawn. Literally, they're 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 horrible. Um, so, th but the best time, Felipe, if you're trying to if you're trying to get um, season lawn control. What I would say is apply in the spring. So April is when I did mine, the, the insecticide. I already linked it there in the chat earlier, but it's one called a Celeprin. Really good product, not inexpensive, but it's a very, very good product. I applied it in April. I've had no issues with grubs, no issues with um, army worms, just eating up some of the lawns around here. So it's a really good product. You can apply it once in the season and you're, you're good to go. But if you have grubs in your lawn now, I would still get an insecticide down now to take care of them. I would not wait till next year um, because like grub stink, man. They're really, they're really nasty. They what they'll do to a lawn. So uh, hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, just drop a follow up in the live stream. We're still pretty early in here. I should be able to get to it. All right. Next up, we got Grace Ortiz. What's going on, Grace? Thanks for coming to hang out. As uh, always, good seeing you around as always. And um, next up, um, Kevin D. Jones says can't find anybody here uh, in North Atlanta, um, can you recommend? What are you looking for, Greg? I didn't see the first part of your question. If you can, like drop it in there. I'm not sure what you're looking for a recommendation on. Like if you're on top, on top dressing, I can give you someone on getting a mower service. I got a recommendation for that. But I need to know um, what you're lo looking for. So this is Kevin D. Jones. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, the, what, the question, what the question was. But yeah, if you can follow up, uh, let me know and I will uh, do my best. All right, next up, we got Torian Israel, a new person to lawn care. Love it, I love it. He says, My, I'm new to lawn care, what equipment should I get? Okay, so, this is a slippery slope. It, it, depending on how hardcore you wanna get, like, you know, I can have you filling up your garage with tons of stuff, but at, at a minimum, the most important piece of equipment you need to have, Torian, is a good mower. Uh, like the right mower for your grass type. So if you've, I don't know what kind of grass you have, you didn't um, say, you say your lawn is bumpy and full of weeds, um, and uneven, how should I start? Okay, so I've got a series for you to watch, the Fix My Ugly Lawn series that I do with my uh, next door neighbor, Alex, where we did exactly kind of what you're going through. His lawn, I mean, it wasn't, it was, it looked It looked like a normal lawn. I would say it's the worst lawn I've seen. It's definitely not the worst lawn, but it had some challenges, had weeds in it, wasn't even, um, it needed some love. And we went through, in the course of three months, um, we transformed his lawn from like ordinary to amazing. And his lawn looks looks great. I mean, some parts of the season this year, his lawn was looking better than my lawn because I've been torturing my lawn this year. He's been nice to his all year. I've been like really abusing mine, trying different things to it. Um, so, um, but yeah, I will send that to you. Let me get that um, get that that link for you. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a really good series. It's, there's 15 videos in it, but the long short of it is you want to get a, a quality mower, get a quality mower and make sure it's sharp. So for a lot of people, they'll go out and they'll buy a mower, right? Like a rotary mower like most of you guys have. Um, and the only time the mower is really sharp is whenever they take it out of the box, right? So it's really important that you use sharp equipment because um, a big part of having a good looking lawn Torian is regular mowing. And every time we mow the lawn, we're injuring it, right? And the way you cut down on how much injury you're doing to the lawn and how quickly the lawn can recover and continue to do well is by using sharp equipment. Like you want it to cut it, you want as clean a cut as you possibly can 
And to get that, you need um, a sharp a sharp mower. Um, as far as dealing with weeds, you didn't say what, where you are in the country, what kind of grass you have. Um, but um, what we did with Alex's lawn is we got the weeds under control. That's where we started. And in this video, the series I'm about to send you, I'm about to send you here. Um, there is in the chat now, um, Fix My Ugly Lawn series. That is going to, um, we started with weeds and we started um, improving the quality of the soil. We started, we did some soil testing because here's why I'm a big fan of soil testing. Like I, one of the big questions you're gonna get is once you start mowing, you're gonna ask me like, what kind of fertilizer should I apply? What should I, you know, what kind of fertilizer should I be putting on my lawn to, to get the absolute best out of it? And really without a soil test, it's really, it's practically impossible to answer that question accurately. I can give you some good recommendations and you can use them and you'll probably get a decent result. But if you're really trying to optimize things and get the best possible result, you wanna use a soil test to guide um, the, your fertilizer applications, to drive your fertilizer applications. That's really important. The soil test that I recommend is the one from my soil. This is the season to really doing it. Even for you cool season guys, it's this one here. Um, you're gonna wanna get this along with um, the probe. You probably don't have one of these. Um, what this is, is you will stick this in the ground, 10, 12 spots in your lawn, um, get soil samples from all over your lawn. It's got like a little um, vial in here, not really a vial, but like a little container with deionized water and a scoop. I can get it out. So once you get all your soil samples, you're gonna mix them up with this and take a scoop of it, and then you're gonna put them in this, which is like um, a, pretty much you can think of it as like a synthetic root, right? You mail this out, within a week, you're gonna get an email that says, hey, Torian, this is what's going on with your soil. These, and this is what we recommend as far as fertilizer applications or pH adjustments and this kind of thing. And then you're gonna be well on your way to start um, you know, fixing your lawn in a way that is based on data, right? Um, but yeah, as far as equipment, mower's important. I would absolutely get a soil test. That's really important. These are not that expensive and they're worth their weight in gold. Um, uh, and then watch that series. Watch that series. There's, you can go down a rabbit hole as far as tons of other things. I mean, a, a mower, a good like uh, string trimmer and edger, I'd say those are like the basics. Um, you also are gonna wanna have a good uh, broadcast spreader. So if you're gonna do your own fertilizer applications, you're gonna wanna have a broadcast spreader. Those are super handy, right? Because a lot of the products that... Um, that I recommend as far as, uh, as, far as fertilizers go, um, I try to stick, um, or, or say this, the, the staple, the foundation is granular products. Because I, I know that even though liquids, you, you tend to get more for your money with liquids, for most people, they tend to be intimidated by using those. So um, a good broadcast spreader. The one that I recommend is from Earthway. It's the Earthway 2050P. It's like $140. It's a little bit more expensive than the ones you can find at Home Depot. But the reason why I recommend that one is that if you really get into this um, seriously, a lot of the products like um, your insecticides, your fungicides, like a lot of your, your better quality fertilizers, the, like pretty much all of them are gonna have Earthway spreader settings on the label. Whereas you get like a Scott spreader, nothing wrong with Scott spreaders, we're not hating on them or anything like that. But um, like as far as the more professional products, you're just not gonna find, um, a lot of times those are emitted from the professional product labels. Why? I mean, I've got some theories behind it, but I mean, um, you'll, you, the Earthway 2050 is a good spreader. It's a, it's a good prosumer um, broadcast spreader. So I'll, I'll put that in the chat for you here. So if you, get, if you look on Amazon, you can find that, um, you can find one um, there. So good mower, broadcast spreader, um, string trimmer and edger, and then you're really on your way, man. And then it's just a really, believe it or not, a big part of getting an amazing lawn really comes down to regular mowing. Um, as far as uh, making the lawn, um, leveling it, that's a, no, that's a whole other process. I've got videos on that on top dressing, but let's just first get the lawn under control. Let's get your soil test done. Let's start mowing it regularly. Um, let's get the weeds under control based on, um, you know, based on what kind of grass you have. I can give you some recommendations on weed control. Um, and that by itself is going to make the lawn look a lot better. And then if you really want to go hardcore, then we can get into top dressing and some of the more, the more time consuming things. But I can tell you, it's a rabbit hole, man. You can really, you can easily start, um, you can easily go down a rabbit hole as far as, um, as far as like products and equipment. But I mean, as far as what you actually need, doesn't really take a whole lot. So hopefully this helps enough to get you started. I've got some links in the chat there for you to take a look at. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other questions that I'm not answering in the chat or an email, um, feel free to email me here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. Uh, great, great question. And welcome, welcome to the craziness that is um, DIY lawn care, man. Uh, welcome, I think, you know? You have to be careful what you, what you ask for. We're getting into this. All right, um, Philippe Labamba says, I treated with granular spectricide last April. Um, yeah, um, you said this, this this past April. I guess when you say last April, like 
five months ago, six months ago. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've here's the thing. I've never actually used any of any of the spectricide um, insecticides or their fungicides. I've only used their weed the weed control. The weed control works pretty well for the insecticides and fungicides. I tend to go more for the professional grade products as I can because I really want to minimize how many times I have to put that stuff down. Like any of the sides, herbicide, insecticide, fungicide. I try and keep this stuff out of my lawn as much as I possibly can, right? And the thing with the professional grade products is if you if you get them and you apply them at the right time per the label at the correct rate, you tend to get a better result that lasts a lot longer. So that's why I tend to lead to lean towards those for insecticides versus um, like the stuff you can get at Home Depot. But I mean, if you're gonna get a result with that, um, Philippe, um, stick with it. You know, if it's working for you, uh, no real reason to go out and and make a big change. All right, next up we here, we have um, Thomas Frey says, I have a cold season lawn and I have an outbreak of Pythium. How would you control or get rid of it? Okay, so Pythium blight absolutely stinks. Um, I created conditions for me to have it in my front lawn through a bunch of excessive watering through an experiment that I was trying. So the, probably the best, the best product um, for getting rid of Pythium, um, Thomas, is a liquid, um, it's something that has um, mephanoxum in it. The active ingredient is mephanoxum, is what you're after, right? And as far as a good product that has that, there's um, there's a fungicide called Subdue Max. Syngenta makes it. Like as far as something that's actually going to kill an actual, like actually uh, kill the um, the Pythium, that's a great product. It's expensive um, and it's a liquid, so you gotta be comfortable with um, you know, mixing up, um, mixing up liquid um, fungicides. You need to have, you need to wear the right PPE when you're wearing it. You need to make sure you really follow the label as far as the protective equipment. But as far as like the best product to use for that, like it's it's really good. That's that's probably the one I would say to go with. Um, what I have done on my lawn, something you can do is if you go with something like azoxystrobin, like in it's like it's in um, that's in Heritage G. Um, what that will do is it's not going to kill the active Pythium. It's not going to kill what's there now, but what it will do is prevent it from spreading further, right? So it depends. Without seeing pictures of your lawn and seeing how bad it is, um, it's up to you like how hardcore you want to go about it. You, really, you can do both of them if you want, but if, you, if you're saying, hey, I want something that's going to kill um, Pythium, like get rid of Pythium, um, Subdue Max, um, which is the, um, that's the, the name brand from Syngenta, is uh, is the product? I actually got a link I can I can I can give to you for it, and I'll show you here um, what it looks like. Um, but it's again, it's not it's not inexpensive. Like bring your wallet um, when you apply. It's like it's again, it's like like 180 bucks for a, for a container of it. Let me show you here, um, and I think I've got that up. And boom, there we go. All right, so right here, this is the product that I am talking about. So you can buy it, um, you can see the price range, right? It's like uh, $181 for a quart of this stuff up to, you know, $600 for a gallon, $600 for a gallon. But a quart should be plenty for you. You can try and look around, shop around for other products too, but what you're looking for is this. You're looking for something that has me uh, mephanoxum in it. That's the active ingredient you're looking for that will specifically target um, Pythium blight, right? That's the thing you're after. But um, again, if you're not necessarily looking to kill it, but you're just trying to, hey, I want to not to make this um, spread any further, you can go with something like um, Heritage, which is going to prevent, it's gonna slow, it's gonna stop the spread, but it's, it's, it's kind of up to you what your budget is and your comfort level with applying um, liquid, liquid fungicides. If you want, I will throw a link here in the chat for you. Um, if you decide to go with, um, with the Humic, with the, sorry, with the Humic Max. <laughs> if you decide to go with the, with the Sub 2 Max. Um, but yeah, so are you dealing with that, man? Because the thing with Pythia, man, it, it takes off quickly and it can ruin your lawn. It may look really ugly really, really quickly. So you got a couple of options. I did a video here recently on um, on actually that, like I actually created the conditions that caused Pythium to, to cause a Pythium outbreak in my front lawn. Um, and I all I've used is her, is um, is um, uh, in, in, is, a, is heritage. I didn't go with anything anything crazy. I didn't go with with the subdue max. Mainly, even though it's better, mainly because I know that most of you guys are not going to be able or not going to want to or going to be intimidated by that, and you don't necessarily have to use it to get rid of the problem. So um, hopefully that helps. You got a couple of options there. Um, sorry you're dealing with that. And if you have any other questions, let me know and I will revisit it. All right, next up we got Luis um, um, Rodriguez in the house. What's going on, Luis? Thanks for coming to hang out with us as always. Next we got Jose. Jose Rio says, my lawn is full of weeds and moss and I need to level the lawn. Do I need to kill the weeds and moss first? Okay, so you got to, let's unpack this. Um, do you strictly need to kill the weeds and moss before you level? No. 
Would I do something to get the weeds under control prior to? If it were me, yeah. I mean, I would. I'd want to get rid of the. At least I want to put a, a herbicide down um, prior to leveling. I wouldn't let trying. I would not let um, um, getting the weeds 100% gone hold you back from leveling your lawn. Because here's the thing: a lot of the top dressing mixes that you use, um, Jose, some of them are going to introduce weeds into your lawn. You know, the the stuff that I got from. Um, Soil cubed from um, Super Sod. That stuff is really good. It, it, like that stuff didn't um, bring any weeds into my lawn, but it's also a lot more expensive, right? Um, but if the like the, the the basic river sand or core sand or masonry sand that you get, um, if you mix that with like if you get like a top dressing mix, which is part river sand, part um, compost, it's not uncommon for you to bring some weeds into your lawn with that. So I would treat what you have now. Then if you, I, I'm assuming you got like a cool season lawn because you're talking about top dressing now. Um, I would top dress or level if that's what you want to do. And then once the lawn begins to recover, if you want to put down, if you want to go after um, the weeds, then um, you can. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of your call as far as um, as far as which way um, you want you want to go. Um, I would question as to why you have moss, right? So the, the moss, the weeds part, I'm not I'm not. Um, I'm not, you know, too concerned about, but the moss part, a lot of times with that, mosses can be a couple of things, right? If you have areas of your lawn where there's drainage problems, so like if water is just like when it rains, water is settling there, if that's that's um, part of the issue, that can cause you to have problems with moss. Um, pH issues can cause problems with moss, but I mean, I would look into that as well too. Perhaps that's why you're looking to level. You've got some areas where water settles. In that case, leveling or like fixing the grade where the lawn drains a bit better, that could help with that. But I'd be interested to find out why you have um, the issue, uh, the issue with moss. Um, in, in the case of Alex's lawn, if you look at the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, in his case of his lawn, we took care of weeds first and then we leveled, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You don't necessarily have to do that. So hopefully, hopefully that, um, helps. All right. Luis Rodriguez says, um, what pre-emergent are you using this season, Ron? So earlier this year, I didn't put any pre-emergent down. This spring, I didn't do any pre-emergent. This fall, I'm going to be trying out Coastal, which is, um, a pre-emergent that ha it's it so it's three herbicides. It's got prodiamine as a pre-emergent, and then it's got uh, simazine and amazoquin as post-emergent um, herbicides in it. So that's what I'm gonna be trying out um, this year. There's gonna be some content coming out on that um, here soon once I get around to filming it. I've already got it scripted. I just gotta start putting it together, start assembling it. Um, but I'll show you the stuff that I am talking about. The only thing about it, and what kind of stinks, is that there's a lot of states where you guys can't get it. So hopefully, if you guys want to try the same things, and again, assuming you have warm season grass, um, you know, it's, it's there's a lot of states where unfortunately where, where it's not for sale, it's not labeled for sale as yet. But I'll um, I'll put the link in the chat there for you, um, Luis, and I'll also show you uh, the product. Um, that one right there. And then if we go to do my own look up coastal, um, this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about here. So this is the stuff I'm gonna be using. So it comes in a 64 ounce container. Thank you, do my own for making it available in that. Cause before you could only get it in like two and a half gallons, which if you see the price on that, yikes. But at 64 ounces, that's a lot more palatable, right? But as you see, one negative about this is there's a lot of states where it's not for sale. So even when I make the content, a lot of you guys are not going to be able, or not a lot, but some of you are not going to be able to, to get this. But really what it is, is it, it saves you time and money because you're basically um, you're basically applying um, prodiamine, which is really the pre-emergent, and then two post-emergents, um, amazoquin and simazine. So if you get like some POA, um, or other cool season weeds that germinate, the two post emergents will knock those back. So the idea behind this one is you can apply it a little bit later. So whereas most pre-emergent you'd put down, say the end of this month, you could wait till into October to apply this because any cool season weeds that have begun germinating, the two post emergents like the simazine and mazaquin are gonna knock them back. So I saw a really cool um, video on it by this, this turf, um, this professor of turf grass, and I said, hey, that'd be cool to try out this year. So. That's what I'm trying out this year. But as far as other options, you can just do straight prodiamine. For, the, for any of you guys that are cool season people, first of all, if you have a cool season grass, do not put this stuff on your grass. This is for, um, for Bermuda. For, it's, for, it's for warm season grasses only. Your options if you have cool season lawn are prodiamine, um, diethiopyr, like uh, Dimension. Um, if you've really got some coin, you want to go with a, a really Cadillac um, pre-emergent, you can go with like a Spectacle Flow. That's a really, really good one, but it's a little more expensive. But you can use any of those, prodiamine, Spectacle Flow um, or Dithiopyr. Prodiamine and, di and Dithiopyr are the more economical ones. We actually have Prodiamine in these smaller containers 
here on the golf course lawn stores. If you have like a smaller lawn, you don't want to buy like a big tub of this stuff. You can actually get that on the golf course lawn store. Um, it's like $21 for this. And this, this is big enough to treat like most lawns. If you just want to go prodiamine, you can do that because that's essentially what I'm going to be doing on my lawn this year too. It's, it's basically this stuff with like two post-emergence mix into it. So if you if you don't want to do what I'm doing, um, just, just do prodiamine. So hopefully uh, that helps. All right. Um, next up we got here, Heartfelt Fashion says, hey Ron, can you tell me what size lawn leveling rig to use for spreading sand on 2,000 square feet? Depends on what, on, on, um, on like how much, you know, how, how, like, not necessarily how strong you are, but how much material you want to be able to move around at a time. Um, my leveling rake that you see in my videos is a 40 inch wide rake. Um, for me, that is about as wide as I would go. Like 36 to 40 inches is, is in my opinion, like the sweet spot where it's not so unwieldy and you're going to hate life moving it around, but also it's wide enough to where when you're trying to actually use it as a, as a grading tool, it's wide enough that you can actually identify like low spots whenever you make a passing. Okay, right there needs a little bit more sand because the, um, like the ends will like um, create that daylight. It'll let you know that this area in the middle needs a bit more sand. So 36 to 40 inches um, is what I would go with. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's, a, that, that's going to give you a pretty good result. If you've not seen my video heart fashion on, um, leveling or on, um, on like the one I did here recently, if you want to see the rake, actual rake that I'm using, uh, check out, uh, this video where I talk about like fixing a rut in your lawn, like leveling a bumpy lawn, which a lot of you guys might find useful. At least you cool season folk this time of year. Uh, so check this out. Um, let's see, heartfelt fashion um boom that video there is like uh, all about leveling a small spot in your lawn and you'll see the actual rake that i'm using that rake is 40 inches is 40 inches wide all right great great question and congrats on taking on the project 2,000 square feet is not that's not too big so that, that should be you should be able to knock that out in a couple of hours um but yeah leveling rake will definitely help you get a better result in my opinion there it's an expense but they have a lot of a lot of benefits and are very useful tools all right next up we got ruben gonzalez saying hey ron what's up hello good evening have a good evening what's going on um ruben says you're an iraqi uh, operation iraqi freedom thank you for your service sir um really really appreciate it i know lots going on in the news and but just let you know that um you know anyone that went over and served and did awesome stuff for the country we absolutely recognize and you know respect and honor your service so thank you uh, so much for everything um, that you've done in defense of freedom. Thanks so much for that. And let me know if you have any questions. All right. Um, next up, we got um, Stacy Sims in the house. Says, hey, Ron, I'm Stacy from Illinois. I, um, I said, interesting, I have a thin grass. So I have thin grass in my backyard along with clovers. I just did weed and feed last month. Should I do another weed and feed before overseed in October? Okay, so if you did the weed and feed, Stacy. Hopefully that's beginning to knock back the weeds a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of doing weed and feed as you're like, every time you're putting fertilizer down, you're doing weed and feed. Um, what I would do is if you're still having problems with, um, you're in Illinois, so you have cool season grass. Yeah, so if you're still having, if, you, if you're still having issues after doing the weed and feed, then is when I would go to um, just a herbicide. So, so in other words, I would, I would decouple, I would separate your fertilization and your herbicide control. Um, spectricide, which is a really good, um, herbicide. And I think it's, it's safe for a lot for certain cool season lawns. I think it's good for, uh, rye and KBG. I believe so. I have to look here and, and see, make sure I'm not, make sure I'm not telling you a lie here. I'm looking at the label. I know you can use it on certain, on certain cool season, um, lawns. This one here, but t t take a look at the label. Um, and, and let me, again, let me know if this works for you. I'm not sure what kind of grass you have. But if you have cool season grass, I know that spectricide can be used on, on certain ones of them. But this guy here, let me switch over. Um, this is a great product that, you know, will, that will target clover, targets a lot of other weeds. Um, make sure that it's safe for your particular grass type. Again, I don't, I don't know what you have in Illinois. Um, but to answer your question, I would not do another um, weed and feed um, you know, I won't use that every single time. I would, I would actually use something that is that is just gonna just gonna target just the weeds um, without having to apply fertilizer at the same time. This this stuff also being a liquid, it's gonna be a little bit more effective. It's gonna work a bit faster than like the granular weed and feed product that you're using. So just from a standpoint of just just getting a better result faster, um, spectricide is gonna is gonna work pretty well. It's pretty it's pretty good stuff. It's a good product, not super expensive, um, and you can um, you can get a pretty good result with it. So hopefully that helps. Um, and yes, I would do, I, you can do that. You can, can use spectricide, the orange label one, 
prior to um, your overseeding. But again, check the label, make sure that it is safe for your particular grass type before you apply it. All right, we got Mr. Jay Pompano in the house. What's going on, man? It's been, uh, been, a, been a while. It says, Big Ron, uh, Big, uh, how are you? He <laughs> says, um, I've been doing and that I miss you. I miss you too, man. It's been, a, it's been a while. You've been in a couple of the live streams, but I guess, you know, I've been out doing summer stuff. It says, cool season repair underway. Uh, good summer survival this year. Learned about RTF fescue, self-repairing. Cool, sounds cool. So let's see what we get. Uh, hashtag strap action, baby. Very nice. Yeah, it's 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 go time for all you cool season guys. You get to you get your second season this year. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that your lawn didn't suffer as much, um, Jay. And um, wishing you a healthy and nice lawn this fall uh, growing season. Good stuff. Glad to have you back, man. All right. Next up, we got um, Andy CGO2 in the house. Says, hey, Ron, new Bermuda sod put in just last week in Central Valley, California. You know, it's not a mower thing, but it is Bermuda sod going down. So got to clap it up. Got to clap it up. It says, tips for keeping it healthy this upcoming winter and into the spring. Um, Just mow it. Um, mowing it is really is really important. Um, that You just had it put in. So I'm going to say don't actually do pre-emergent just yet. If you just had it installed... I'd almost say let's let's forego pre-emergent this fall um, and then just do it in the spring. Here's what that means is you probably are going to get if, if Poano is, is an issue where you are in California and Central Valley, um, you are going to see some weeds in the spring, but you can always just spray those out. So what, what I'd say is let's surrender, um, you know, this winter as far as like putting down pre-emergent because I don't want to take the chance of... Um, of you know doing anything to your side. I mean, again, it's probably going to be fine. You probably could do pre-emergent, but best practice is give it a little bit of time. Because when you say you just had it installed like last week, you know, really the time that the window for pre-emergent um, is going to be opening here in the next thirty days or so, right? And that's a bit soon to be smacking the lawn with um, with pre-emergent, even though it is Bermuda. So I would say no pre-emergent this fall. Let's do it again. Make sure we get it down in the spring, and then just do your mowing. Just do your mowing. You know, keep up with your mowing as long as the grass is growing. Keep mowing it. That's going to do a lot for helping it just um, to help it root in nicely. It's going to help stimulate growth. Um, if you have weeds in your lawn, you can spot spray here and there over the winter months. But um, yeah, man, you're on your way. If you've not done a soil test as yet, I'd recommend that. Soil testing is super important as a way to know, um, it's a way to get the best out of your out of the products you're putting on your lawn. And again, I, I, can you can you just go out and just pick something off the shelf at Home Depot or whatever and apply it? Yeah. You know, can you just go buy Humic Max and apply it to your lawn and get a great result? Yeah, you probably would. But the best the best um, thing I do, especially with you having new sod, you spend all this money putting new sod in, is get a soil test done because that's going to let you know what the soil pH is at and you know what what nutrient deficiencies you might have in your lawn, and that's going to give you the recipe to know exactly how to feed and take care of that lovely new Bermuda sod you just got. So, congrats again, sir. Um, hopefully that helps. If I can help with anything else, uh, let me know. Let me go down here and go get these super chats from these, um, from people down here. We got one from Bamzilla. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Super chat received. And then the usual suspects, um, we got um, LG with a super chat. Super chat received. This is another week with cryptocurrency. So I'd like to sponsor tonight's 7 p.m. SIP. I appreciate that, um, LG. It is, you're right, it is the top of the hour. It is 8 p.m. here. So while I take a sip of my lemonade out of the cup provided for me by Mr. Josh, if you, if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button, ever so gently. It's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel. It sends good vibes to the algorithm. It sends more people here. So if you guys wouldn't mind taking that, doing that for me, touching that like button, watching some of my lemonade, I would really appreciate it very much. Good, good stuff. Our second super chat is from the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Josh Habib. Super chat received. He says, family's in town for my kid's birthday and the yard is, is looking crispy chairs. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome, um, Josh? Like, you know, whenever family comes over, and they're like, man, Josh, how does your lawn look so awesome? You're like, oh, man, you know, just I mow it, you know, water, a little water, a little bit of little, little herbicide, you know, little things here and there, a little bit of carbon, you know, just not too much. When they know you're out there every week putting something down on the lawn, or every two weeks doing something on the lawn, right? It's always that's always makes it worth it. Whenever people come over and you have that wow factor, so it's pretty uh, pretty awesome. So glad that you got family coming in town and that the lawn is looking, as you say, crispy. Always good stuff. Girl LZ Lawn. What's going on, Girl LZ Lawn? Says Virginia is getting slammed with army worms. Yeah, that's that's going around this year, man. Um, hopefully you didn't get hurt with it too badly. You know, getting some kind of insecticide down. You probably already got it taken care of. I know I, I've, I've watched some of your um, some of your content, so I'm sure you're 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 good to go as far as that goes. But yeah, 
I have a video coming out on Sunday on Sunday that's going to talk about army worms. A couple of options for getting rid of it. The long short of it is, is it's going to be a Celeprin G and um, the Miramichi Green Pest Control, the non-toxic liquid pest control, um, and that that's a really good one-two punch for to kill the active army worms that are like out actively eating everything. And then the Celeprin is going to give you um, that extended coverage. So um, yeah, I'm sorry that that you're dealing with that as well too, but um, we can take care of it. We have the technology. Thanks for, thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. And um, uh, uh, Imhotep MTGA says, no army worms here, just outside of KC. Oh, that's good, man. You, you're one of the, I guess you're fortunate. I mean, the rest of the country is really getting uh, getting slammed by them. We got, let's see what else we got here. We got Papa Mo's Lowe saying he found a few, but it's been addressed, no damage. Um, Joseph Roberts, yes, army worms under control. <laughs> James Legey, only Navy worms. <laughs> Uh, that's very good. That's a good one. And then uh, Alex, uh, Alex B says, don't want to jinx it, but no armor worms for me. Family and friends down south are mostly dealing with them. Um, but yeah, so 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 it's, it's a mixed bag. Some of you guys are having dealing with army worms. Some of you guys are not. Um, um, Thin Cut says he doesn't have any. So yeah, but I mean, the big thing is that the best way to not, to not deal with army worms is to put down a, a preventative insecticide. And once you do see them, as soon as you see them, um, take care of it quickly because they can destroy a lawn really, really rapidly. So uh, something to keep in mind. All right. Next up, Mr. Kevin Sheehan is talking about a height of cut reset. He says, I did a re reset of my Bermuda height of cut to 0 0.450 and reset it to 0 0.563. Now, are you sure it's 0 0.563, Kevin? Are you sure it's not like 0.562? Are we, are we, your final answer is 563. You're sure about that? You know, I'm just giving you a hard time, right? He says, hope it's not too late in the season to come back uh, nice and green and thick. It should bounce back. I mean... I forget. I think you're in North Carolina, aren't you, Kevin? I think you're. you're near, I know you're near me, but I think you're, you're further north. It's it's getting close to where um, I probably I probably wouldn't have. It's a little bit late in the season for that, but it, I mean it, it's Bermuda, man. You're not gonna you're not gonna kill it. You just um, you know it just may not green up and get as thick and as lush as it would had you done it say a month ago. But you're not gonna you're not gonna hurt the lawn. You're not gonna kill it. No uh, no worries there. All right. Next up, we got Mr. Clayton Nichols says, "Hey, fresh cut Friday." That is a fresh cut, man. That stripe action is on point, Clayton. Looking good. It says, lay down some nice stripes before the live stream. Apply the Carbon Kit and Turflex and Country Club 1608 yesterday. Lawn is still bumpy. We'll sand level next year. And yeah, Clayton, um, I'm glad. It sounds like you're doing everything right. That's uh, pretty awesome. And guys, just so you guys know, um, for any of you that are new to the live stream, um, Humic Max is now available everywhere in the continental United States. So like whereas for most of the season, there's only a select state you could get it. Now you guys can get the same fertilizer that I use and love and that, Ke that Clayton is talking about, um, Humic Max by Lebanon Turf. This is the good stuff, guys. Not inexpensive, but it's a very, very quality product. Um, not only is it a fertilizer, but you're also getting like 8.9% uh, humic acid as well in the product. So it's an excellent, excellent product to help stimulate microbial activity, help improve the quality of your soil while also taking care of of those macros. So it's in stock and shipping now and pretty much everywhere in the country, as long as you're in the continental United States, you can get it now, which was not the case um, before a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. So very, very cool. I'm glad that you are doing well, Clayton. The lawn looks awesome. All right, uh, Doug says, no arm worms. I did an, an early May uh, app of Bifenthrin and Imoclodroprod, uh, Georgia Tiff Tough. Sounds good, uh, Doug, you got a preventative down. So that's, that's, that's the trick. You really just don't want to. You don't want to give them a chance to even take root um, if you can. If you can really help it. All right, Mr. Dwayne Hopkins is in the house. He says, "Hey, Ron, ex just got off work and excited about tonight's live stream. Thank you for all you do. I just sent off my sold test kit yesterday. Can't wait to get the result of the test. Awesome, man. Yeah. So you should get it within a week. I mean, I, here's the thing. I imagine that um, they're probably getting more sold test results now. Like it's starting to ramp up. So." Uh, you know, I've never not gotten my results back within a week from the time I mailed it. And I'm in Atlanta and I think that um, my soul is in Washington or something like that. So I'm like literally like on other polar opposites of the country. Um, and I still always get my results normally within a week or so. So you it shouldn't be too long for you, Dwayne. Um, let me know. Let me know if you have any any questions or, um, but you know, you got to figure it out, man. We've been talking back and forth. You should be good to go on those results. But good job on getting uh, the soil test done. And if you guys are looking for a soil test, you can get those on the golf course lawn store um, these, both the MySoil test kit and the, the soil probe, those are both available um, on the store. All right, we've got Ned G up next. What's going on? I'm here, Professor. What's going on, Ned G? Um, I'm a professor, man. I am a student just like you guys. I just like to, just like to, to talk about grass and mess on my lawn. So I'm glad to uh, you're taking some time out of your Friday to come hang out. 
Um, Rob A says, woke up one day, half my yard was dead after it rained for three days straight. Don't know if it's army worms or what. Um, you'll know if you w walk out there, um, Rob, um, we say half your lawn is dead. It, here's the thing. If the brown spot is moving, so like you have one area um, that's dying or like just turning brown for no apparent reason and it's moving, like it's like it's getting, like you can see it's like actually getting worse um, day to day, that's, that's m very likely armworms because they can they can destroy a lawn very quickly. I mean, if you go, if you walk outside, you can see them. I mean, they're, um, I don't have a picture of them right here, unfortunately, but I mean, they, they um, it looks like, it looks like it's a small, it looks almost like a caterpillar, it's like a turf caterpillar. They're about an inch, inch and a quarter long. Um, and if you see those guys, yeah, that's what you've got. So um, I have a hard time thinking that just rain itself is gonna kill your lawn. You probably do have army worms. Um, and if you do, um, you wanna get an insecticide down to take care of them sooner than later. What you can use, um, you know, someone mentioned bifenthrin, that's definitely an option. If you're looking for an option that is all natural, non-toxic, um, you can use the Miramichi Green Pest control. I, I'm going to take this on and off the shelf like 17 times tonight. I just know it. Um, you can mix this with eight ounces of the product with one gallon of water. This is great from a liquid option that's non toxic that can control army worms that can kill them. And then if you're looking for like um, a granular product, like a Mac Daddy, like the really, really good stuff, go with a Celeprin, a Celeprin G. Um, I, I've already put like um, links in the, in the chat, but I'll, I'll set it to you here really soon. Again, that's an excellent, excellent product. Um, the active ingredient in that one is called chlorantranilopril, and while that's important, is that it will kill army worms, bill bugs, annual bluegrass weevils, grubs, um, but it won't kill. It's not. It, it won't harm earthworms. It also won't harm pollinators like bees. A lot of insecticides, other insecticides, will kill the stuff you want dead, obviously, but they'll also harm like the beneficial insects. And um, acelaprin is one of the ones, or the active ingredient in it is one of the was one of the um, few that. Is very is selective is more selective than 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 many others. So I'll put that in the chat there for you, um, if you want as well. So you probably do have army worms based on what you're describing, uh, what you're describing to the rest of us. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, Thin cut says my renovation isn't doing well. Hurricane Fred washed away about 99 percent of the seed. Going to wait till spring to plant to plant um, zoysia plugs. Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, a big torrential rainfall will wash away a lot of the seeds. I don't know about 99% though, um, thin cut. I mean, it's, you probably lost some of them, but I wouldn't say you lost, you know, I mean, 99%, that's that's like all of it. Unless unless your entire lawn was like a river where it stripped away like, I don't know, you know, an inch of soil, you know, you more of the seed is probably still there than you, um, than you actually give it uh, credit for. All right, and Rob A, uh, there you go. That's that's a celebrant. And then, then the, the, the pest control is gonna be at the golf course lawn store. Um, but yeah, waiting till next year is not a bad option either if you want to uh, if you want to do that. Let me run down here and get some super chats here. We got a couple here from the lawn tool, the the the, the Arkansas uh, trouble lawn troublemakers. Super chat. I see it. He says, looking swole, Ron. Keep keep <laughs> keep at those delts. Happy weekend. Uh, I appreciate it, sir. That, that's not really due to my work. That's more of like due to um we are in black belt, belt, black belt cycle. So twice a year, there's a black belt test, right? So we're in cycle for people that are um, candidates or trying to test in October for either first degree black belt or like another degree of black belt. So what that means is that all the rest of us get to suffer along with them. So there's all these really painful um, planks and you know push-up drills and just all kinds of just nasty stuff that I actually pay to do to myself, believe it or not. But yeah, um, it's a byproduct of all the martial arts. So I appreciate it, sir. Hope you're doing well. The Tahoma looks like it's coming in pretty nicely, by the way. Um, you, I see you and your brother are always making good content. So uh, yeah, keep um, keep keep keeping us updated. I want to see how that, how that Tahoma 31 um, um, does for you guys. And then next up, we got um, Austin Super B. Chat Super chat. Received. Thank you so much, Austin. He says, um, lawn leveling is much more enjoyable when <laughs> you watch professionals do it from the comfort of your air-conditioned house. That is true. That is the truth. You are not wrong um, about that. About that, Austin. The first time I did it, uh, first time, or the first time I had it done, the first time my lawn was leveled, I had professionals do it, and you know, I did the carnal thing. I'm like, eh, that doesn't look so bad. I can do that, and you can, but it's um, it's a lot of work. I'm almost at the point where if next year I top dress the lawn, I don't even know if I do it myself. I might actually just pay like um. Uh, like uh, the, you know, the guys that like Sam Man or one of those guys to come out and come do it. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I already got plenty of top dressing content, but so if I do it next year, I might just pay to have it done instead of doing it myself. What do you guys think? You guys believe me? You're, you guys you guys believe I'm gonna pay someone to do it? You guys think I'll probably just end up getting out there myself and doing it again? 
I'll, I'll, I'll leave that up to the uh, to the audience. All right, so um, Eden Raka says that um, I have army worms. They're horrendous. They are horrendous. Um, and you you really want to get an insecticide down um, to take care of them. Like some some people have mentioned that you've got bifenthrin. That's an option. Um, I've been linking in the chat, but if you scroll to the bottom of the chat, Eden Raka, like you'll see there, I'm mentioning an insecticide called Acelaprin G. It's a granular, super easy to apply. It will kill armyworms, and it more importantly than just killing them, it's gonna control them or prevent them from, from, um, from re-emerging for several months. I, I apply that product in April. I've had no issues with armyworms, grubs, or any other like lawn damaging insects in my lawn, neither has my neighbor. So it's a really good product. If you're looking for a liquid, um, a liquid, Again, bifenthrin is an option in that, but if you want to fix it for something that's non-toxic, on the golf course lawn store, we have um, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. I can show you that here really quick. So you just go to golfcourselawn.store, and then you scroll down, this guy right here. So, a ga so one gallon of this stuff, again, is $109, but that will cover, that will treat up to 120,000 square feet. So one gallon is gonna last you um, years, I mean, depending on, on how often you use it. So um, it's a very, very good product. Um, and the big thing is it's non-toxic. You're not going to damage the environment. Um, you have to worry about kids or pets being around this stuff um, after you apply it. And the nice thing about it is that, that the armyworms cannot develop a resistance to it either, right? So that's that's a big benefit of that one too. Whereas certain insecticides, um, over time, they can develop an, um, can develop resistance. Like the way the me method of action, the way this kills them, they can't develop resistance to it. So that's another benefit for um, the... the um, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. So again, we have that in stock at the golf course lawn store. Sorry you're dealing with that, man. I've seen damage from that. Like a buddy of mine who's, um, he works in the, um, he sprays lawns for a living. He's an applicator. He tells me like he gets calls every, gets like 20 calls a day of people like getting destroyed by armor worms in the Georgia area. I mean, it's just, it's it's a serious, serious problem. Like pr primarily what he's doing is spraying, is, is like treating lawns for army worms. So uh, I, I totally get what you're, what you're saying, he sent me some pictures, um, and uh, and yeah, and actually, if you guys watch the video that's coming out Sunday morning um, on army worms, that video, like the, the actual worms you see there in that in that video, the footage is some of the stuff that he sent me. So you can he's showing me like a you know picture of what a lawn looks like and how quickly it can begin eating up and creeping and destroying a lawn. So definitely check the video out if you if you're interested in seeing that. Um, but uh, getting insecticide down and that will help you. Um, that'll at least stop the problem, um, Eden Raka. Hopefully, I'm saying your name right. Um, okay, next up, um, Mr. Um, the Wind Chariot says, can't wait to put down um, pre-emergent. I've been um, hand pulling weeds all summer. Follow Ron's example and strap my weed tool to my mower. Kalinga and Spurge has been a pain in the rear. Yeah, man, so so here's the thing. Like crabgrass, like manually weeding crabgrass, especially if you're mowing short, like that is doable. That I, I've, I've successfully pulled that off this year. It's a pain, but it can be done. Like um, Kalinga, like Nutsedge and Spur like Spurge and Nutsedge are just, they're just so tenacious. And the problem with them, um, not Spurge so much, but like um, Kalinga or like the Nutsedge, they, the, um, it's because the bulb is so, um, I can say it's fragile, like they break really easily when you try and like manually weed them. So there's, there, there, those are the, the kinds of weeds where um, spraying them is, um, it's, it's probably more effective than trying to manually weed. You can do it. But they uh, they grow back really quickly, and unfortunately, um, unlike crabgrass, they are not really deterred by height of cut. Like you start mowing your lawn short, like I was at half an inch pretty much all this season. Um, crabgrass still grows, but it hates life. It's always looking sickly, like it's trying to fall over because it's being cut really short. Spurge and Kalinga, all day, all day, every day. They're like, come on, bring it, man. They like especially Spurge. Spurge just does not care. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel you, man. Get that get that pre emergent down, so you're not going to be dealing with it. Um, you know. I guess into the winter and into the spring. So, uh, so there you go. All right. Next up, we got here. Demir ninety one's in the house. Says, "What's going on, everyone? I just finished up a soil spray as uh, the rainstorm rolls in. Perfect timing. Very cool, Demir. Glad you got your application uh, down. And then um, next, we got here. Uh, D W Davis says, "Per your armworm su um, survey, I did do a celeprint early, and apparently it works. Yeah. What do you think? I mean." What do you think, right? I mean, it's uh, it's it is a it is a good product. I mean, the biggest again, the biggest detractor is that it's not inexpensive. It's not inexpensive, right? That's the, that's the biggest negative, or the only I would say it's really a big negative. Um, it's but it's just a it's a different grade of product than what you will get at like the big box stores, and it you know because of that, it works really really well. But it just costs more. So um, I'm glad that you're getting good results with uh, with it, D.W. Davis. I appreciate uh, the uh, 
the feedback. Glad to know that, you know, when the video that I put out in April where I was saying, hey, you guys really need to put an insecticide on your lawn and put a cell up and down. This is a really good one. I know it costs more, but trust me, it's good stuff that you guys that actually followed it, you know, are not having issues with army worms or grubs or that kind of thing. So thanks so much. I really do appreciate the feedback. Always good, great to hear. All right, next up we got Michael um, Rumpf in the house. He says, hey Ron, 2,000 square feet of my front yard was new sod in April. I top dressed the yard. It looks great now, awesome. It's great stuff, great to hear. Can I put down pre-immersion on the new sod this fall? You said you put it down in April. What kind of sod is it, um, Michael? If it's any kind of cool season um, grass, I'm gonna say no. Like cool season grass is a little bit more, it's a little more delicate um, than Bermuda. If it's Bermuda, then yeah, if you, it's because it April, so. April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, so six, six months. Um, yeah, I, I would, um, you, you absolutely can do that. So a good example, on my lawn, it was um, sodded in December, uh, many moons ago, seven, like seven years ago, it was sodded in December, and it got pre-emergent like two months later in um, late February, early March, right? And it's and it's done really well. So, I mean, it, just as uh, just to be conservative, six months for Bermuda is fine. Um, for other grasses, uh, you really want to give it a year. You want to give it a, a full season for it to, to come in nice. With Bermuda, you can you can get away with that. Um, you didn't tell me what kind of grass uh, you had you had though. So if it's Bermuda, you're good to go. If it's a cool season lawn, I would I might wait. I would wait. I, not I might. I would wait till next year. So great question, but good good job on looking out on uh, on on pre-emergent. Right. That's a, that's one of the best things you can do because as you will find out, or most people will find out, it is much much cheaper to prevent weeds from growing in the first place than it is to treat them after the fact. Like the stuff, like a good example, this bottle, what would I do with it? Yeah, this bottle of Prodiamine is like $20, $21, right? Um, like you look at the video that I did on Celsius uncertainty to, to, to treat, um, you know, a lot of warm season, a lot of warm season weeds and things like Nutsedge and Spurge and Poa, like each of those bottles, like, I don't know, Celsius is like 120 bucks, $110 a bottle. And then certainly is another hundred. So you're like at 200, just over 200 bucks for those two products to take care of weeds after the fact. So if you want to spend, you can spend 20 bucks twice a year, or you can spend a lot more money after the fact, because it's, you know, it's a lot harder to kill weeds, um, after they're already there without harming your grass. So, uh, so yeah, good job on looking into pre-emergent. Um, it's like one of the best things you can do to your lawn. All right, next up, uh, Dominic Killies in the house says, how do I kill grub worms? Okay, so um, there's a couple of options. There are, um, there are insecticides you can use for that. What I use, Dominic, is, um, you, again, I'm sounding like, I'm sounding like, a, like an acelaprin salesman here, but you can use acelaprin. Um, that works very well um, for controlling grub worms. Um, if you're also, another option, if you're looking for something that um, can control grub worms and also has a fungicide in it, so if you want to put down a product that, you know, gives you some fungus control option, some fungus control as well, um, you can look into a product called Caravan G. Um, it's also made by Syngenta. So if all you're looking for is strictly an insect uh, insecticide, a celeprin. A celeprin G is what I recommend. I've been putting that in the chat. But if you're looking for something that is a combination product, so fungicide and insecticide, that is where um, a that is where Caravan G um, comes in. So let me send this to you. So this is the combination um, insecticide and fungicide. Let me see. It's at Dominic. Dot Dominic. There you go. And if all you're looking for is just the insecticide, then um, a Celeprin is is what I would go with. This guy um, here. And boom. It's been put in the chat a couple of times, but it's just it's in there just for. Um, for you now, so so that's those those two will do a great job, do a great job killing them and keeping them keeping them away going forward. All right, next up, DW um, says per army worms it works. Oh, thanks, thanks uh, again, um, DW Davis. Okay, next up um, we have here Kendrick Young says, how do you raise soil pH for tall fescue lawn? Um, so if your pH is low, you're going to want to um, apply some kind of lime, um, Kendrick. So you can. Uh, lime comes in two major flavors, two major varieties. You've got like calcitic lime and dolomitic lime. So um, in your soil test results, I mean, you obviously did a soil test because you know what your pH is. In your soil test results, it should also tell you if your magnesium is low. If your magnesium is low, you're going to want to go with dolomitic lime. If your magnesium is fine, then you can go with calcitic lime. So if you so the, the only difference between them really is that 
Um, dolomitic lime has more magnesium um, per, by percentage by, in, in, its, in its makeup than uh, calcitic does. But either lime will work, but I mean, if you're just trying to really be optimized things, look for the magnesium numbers on your soil test and then pick the lime um, based on that. I actually have a video on applying lime to your lawn that actually talks about that. It actually talks about exactly what you're trying to do, um, Kendrick, and I will put that in the chat for you now. This is my lawn, my uh, raising my um, soil pH levels video. So watch that video, it's not terribly long. It's only like uh, three minutes, three minutes, 14 seconds. Um, totally entertaining, as entertaining as a video on raising soil pH can be. Uh, and that will give you, um, you know, to show you what I did and what, and what will help. Hopefully that does well. And then James is saying a dominion for grubs. Yeah, that's an option as well too. And then lime raises soil pH. Uh, yep, James. Yeah, man, I got to bring you on as like a, as like a, you're like the LG and SMK of the lime machine. You also got my backup guy, right? I appreciate it. But yeah, lime and then which one to go with is what I just told you based on your magnesium levels. So there you go. All right, Help Out Fashion says, is Turfplex a good product? If so, then why? Is it a good product? Um, yeah, it's a good liquid fertilizer. Um, why do I like it? Um, because um, it works well in a, speeding, in a spoon feeding program that I like to use. So here's the thing, like a lot of people like to put down, well, put down fertilizer in their lawn, you know, once every six weeks, sometimes as much as once every couple of months. I find I get better results, more consistent results by fertilizing my lawn using a spoon, a spoon feeding program. So what do I mean by that? Um, by that, I mean, I put down a granular fertilizer, Humic Max, the one you see me talking about, I was showing earlier. I put that down once per month, like that's actually going down tomorrow. And then twice a month, like tomorrow also, the Turfplex will go down and then 15 days later, I'll apply it again. The reason why I like Turfplex is because it's relatively quick release, meaning that it, it, um, it, it, is, it releases its, its nitrogen um, faster than some of, some of the other liquid options. It, um, its uptake is foliar, meaning I don't need to water it in, so I can just spray it on the grass. I don't need to put water on it for it, for it to begin working. Um, and it also has a little bit of micronutrient in it. So as far as um, something that's also gonna give your lawn a little bit of a green boost, like I can show you, like it's a, there's your formulation, it's a 22-3. But as far as also having like a, a little bit of iron, a little bit of zinc, a little bit of manganese to kind of help produce a deeper green, it also has that as well. The nice thing about this bottle too, about this too, is it doesn't take very much. It's a, it's a pretty potent fertilizer. The label, the label calls for six ounces per thousand, um, and that's really all you need. You can put it down. You can put down very little of it, six ounces mixed with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet, and you get a really good result. So it doesn't take a lot of it to get a very good response in the grass. So that's why that's why I chose it. There are other fertilizers that are options too. It's not like Turfplex is the end all be all of of, of liquid fertilizers. There's other options. It's just one that I find that works well, um, that I've gotten good results with in my testing in the spoon feeding program. Like it mixes well with like the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit. Um, it mixes well with Teenex. It mixes well with a lot of the products that I like to apply at the same time. So when I find something that 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 satisfies all those requirements, like it works, like the gra grass turns green and stays green, um, it doesn't clog up the sprayer and it mixes well when I when I apply it with like the golf course lawn carbon kit. If you know what I'm talking about, by that that is this. That is this is this is something I also spray on the lawn monthly. This is um, like a a. Um, a soil enhancement package that I put together with Miramichi Green that contains some kelp, it contains um, some micronized carbon, and also contains a microbial package. So this, these three products that I also spray, which also get sprayed tomorrow, those mix very nicely along with Turflex. So that's the reason why I use it. But again, it's not like you must use that one. Um, I just like it, I get good results with it, and that's why I stick with it. And that's actually the one that I use in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. I actually teach that and show that in my course. Um, mainly because and people get good res good results with it, right? So, um, so hopefully, hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, and if not, let me know and I will revisit it. I appreciate you chiming in. All right, uh, Kevin Wilkinson is back. He says, "I did buy a leveling rake. Yes, it's cool season lawn. I live in Philadelphia area. Uh, the new tornado alley. It's crazy, right? How the weather's are, how the weather patterns are changing." He says, I'm in the market for a real mower. Oh man, all right, now a fun question. He says, thoughts on an outlet? Uh, you like that like you can change out the reels. So yeah, so that's a good point. So um, Kevin, if you are looking for, if the interchangeable reel system is important, or cartridge system is important to you, meaning you wanna have like a mower and you also wanna be able to do like scarification, you wanna um, have like a brush on there if you want, you wanna do verticutting, um, that's a that's a really that's a really good reason to look at something like an outlet, right? So if that's if that's important to you, uh, then go for it. 
Like I know Princess Cut Lawn Care has one. He seems to get really good results with his. Like it, it does a good job cutting. Um, and the thing is, and the reason why I also might lean more towards Alit is because um, they also have a commercial line, right? So if you think about it, like the, the part of the reason why Toro's like residential mowers are pretty good is because they make like really expensive mowers. They make like commercial grade, like expensive professional grade mowers. And a lot of the technology and the stuff they learn in that trickles down into their consumer grade mowers. The same thing is true for Allet. Like Allet also makes um, professional real mowers, like like mowers that cost $10,000, $15,000, really expensive mowers. Like they have one that was like 14, 15 grand, um, like, like tanks. Um, and a lot of, and those seem to work really well. They're used by certain um, professional baseball um, teams. So, you know, they know what they're doing when it comes to building a mower with a, with an interchangeable cartridge system. And a lot of that, those learnings trickle down into their more affordable options that are targeted to consumers. So if you're looking at, looking for one, that's a great option. Um, True Cut makes a good mower, makes a good real mower, but it just depends. I mean, if you're looking for an interchangeable cartridge system, there's really only two games in town. There's Swordman and then there's the Allet. So depending on which one you like, whichever one you like based on the reviews you look at, um, that's the one to go with. You know, you're not, you're not going to be unhappy with either. Um, I'd probably give the nod more toward the Allet, um, but again, they're both both good mowers, great. You know, you're going to get a good, a good cut with, um, with either of them. So hopefully that helps. Congrats on looking for a real mower. Here's the thing though, um, Kevin, yeah, keep in mind. Remember, real mowers are are really they're really designed for cutting your grass short. So you have a cool season lawn. So I'm guessing you probably got something like a rye grass or Kentucky bluegrass. Something you're going to maintain like at an inch and a half or lower um, because you don't want to be cutting anything like fescue or anything tall with a real mower. That's that's the wrong tool for the job. So just something to keep in mind. You didn't say what kind of grass you had, but um, because you said cool season, I just want to put that out there that you want to make sure you're cutting. You know, you're you're, you're committing to mowing short if you're going with a real mower, because that's really what they're they're designed to do. All right. All right, Jay Pompano's giving me a hard time. He's like, I almost forgot, like button, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, sip, mm-hmm. That's just for you, Jay. That's just for you. You know, listen, don't make fun of me about the way I, I drink my lemonade. This, this is how I do it, all right? It's how I do it. Don't 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 give me a hard time here. You just got back. You gotta you gotta be here for like a couple of live streams before you can start giving me, start harassing me again. Can't, can't just jump right in and start giving me a hard time all over. All right, next up, I gotta speed up now. We got a lot of questions tonight. <laughs> all right, J Jasmine um, Butkovich says, I have Xeon Zoysia and some rust problems. I spread a, a three and 11 uh, fungicide. Is it going to work? I'm from South Carolina, Charleston. Um, yeah, so if you already put a fungicide down, Jasmine, that should help. A lot of the issues that people can have with rust um, problems, rust issues in their lawn, uh, it, it can be from excessive water. So yeah, you may be getting a lot of rain. Um, not much you can do about that. But if you are watering your lawn, let's try backing off on that. So if you're watering, you know, I don't know, every other day, let's back it off to say, you know, twice a week. Just start reducing the watering, start pulling the watering back for a couple of reasons. One, um, temperatures are gonna start falling here soon. So the lawn's not gonna require quite as much water. Like the sun's not gonna be burning as much of it off. Um, and because we're dealing with a fungus issue, um, you know, we don't want to create a condition where there's a lot of moisture and a lot of heat because fungus likes that, right? So let's let's start. Let's, we can't we can't as much as we can control um, the amount of moisture that goes in the lawn. Let's try reducing that uh, a little bit and seeing if that helps. You're already putting a fungicide down, so you should be good to go. But I think that a lot of times rust issues are like a lot. Putting too much water on the lawn is um, is can tends to promote those types of problems. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if I can help with anything else. Great, uh, great question. All right, Super TA's in the house. Says, hey, Ron, on our way back from Charles, from Chatsworth, GA, and Nashville, Tennessee, didn't see any nice, didn't see any nice Bermuda lawns. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, when you say nice, I mean, what do you mean nice? And not any that are mowed, that are mowed short. Um, but that's, that's probably true for most grass types, Super TA. I mean, and here's the thing, guys, as much as we may not realize it, we are very much the minority when it comes to like the amount of work and love and you know obsession that we have in our lawns. Like most people do not care about grass. Like they mow they mow their grass just enough to not get like a nasty gram from the HOA. Um but it's not like a widespread thing. So uh so yeah I'm not surprised you didn't see too many good looking lawns. Uh but yeah there are there are some really nice lawns in Georgia. Around here there's some really nice lawns um in my neighborhood. So yeah. All right. Um, Ch uh, Chewy Chew says, what's up, Ron? I seen a video where you did um, some leveling with carbonized PN. Yeah, man, I did. I did, um, so in the beginning of, or closer to the beginning of the season, just the front lawn, um, you know, 
a viewer um, reached out to me and says, hey man, can you can you show top dressing with just soil? Like I don't want to, I don't really care about leveling so much, but I want to see what like just are you putting down like top soil on your lawn, can that work? And I'm like, hey, I've never actually done that. So we're going to do it on a small space like the front lawn. And I decided to go with carbonized PN. The main reason is it's a great product. Um, you know, you just have biochar, have compost. And a, a huge reason is that I know that I'm not going to get any weeds in my lawn when I put like, you know, 20 bags or however many bags of this stuff I put down on the lawn, on the front lawn, I'm not going to get any weeds in the lawn when I do that. Um, and I'm also helping improve the quality of the soil and whatnot. So yeah, I did do that earlier this season. Um, and the lawn looks great. You asked me now, what were the results? Uh, the lawn looked incredible. Like literally, um, the green, like the dark, the dark, I wish I, did, I probably have some pictures of it. If I have some pictures, I'll have to put them up in the live stream next week if I can find them. But the, the, the richness, the darkness of the green after applying that was insane. I mean, yes, the, like Humic Max, fertilizer, carbon kit, all those things also produce a really, really good result, but literally doing nothing else but other than just putting in that really rich organic material. Um, like two weeks later, the lawn just woke up and it was, it looked incredible. It looked really, really good. Um, you know, unfortunately due to price, it's not really, at least for the size of my lawn anyway, it's not really practical to top dress my entire lawn with carbonized PN. I mean, that would be, uh, you know, frankly cost prohibitive. Um, but as far as a really, really good top dressing material, if, you, if all you care about is just introducing like a really rich organic mi mixture into the lawn, tough to beat it. It's really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I was, I was very, very happy with it. Like that's something I might actually do next year just on the front lawn, not the entire lawn, because it'd be, it'd be kind of pricey to do that. But yeah, it, it definitely does work. Um, it's great, great option. All right. Um, so Alex B says, definitely using a cellar print next season and hope to have the fogger by then as well. Also using the natural Miramichi green pest control product. Yeah, man, that's it. I mean, th that's a, that's a great, um, combination. Really, if you do a cellar print just itself, like in April-ish, you shouldn't have really any issues with, um, with grubs, bluegrass weevils with um, with any any insects, armyworms, you shouldn't have problems with any of that stuff all season long. And that's where the Miriam Green Pest Control comes in where if you have like, um, you know, mosquitoes, spiders, white flies, um, roaches, like, you know, really what it, the, the, the idea behind that product is that if you want to take on doing your own pest control, like you don't want to pay someone to come out and pay them a bunch of money every single month to do it. You could take it on yourself, and you're using a product that is that's you know is safe. It's clean. It's a it's a it's a non toxic product. So you have to worry about harming yourself or kids or pets or things like that. So the two of them can work very well together. But if you get a celebrant down early in the season, um, you're not you should not have any issues with grubs or any other um, lawn damaging insects. And then the the pest control will just be you know something you can just do every every few weeks, once a month, whenever you decide to do it, to help keep other insects away and keep them at bay. So uh, very, uh, very good stuff. And then yeah, Alex B says, yeah, protecting pollinators and beneficial or insects and organisms is important. And that's that's the thing, right? I mean, you know, while, while um, where we can, it makes sense to use products that are effective and also don't like kill a bunch of stuff unnecessarily in the process. So there's always that. When Jared is saying, my lemonade is hard, made by this guy named Mike. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's hard lemonade is actually pretty good stuff, man. I used to drink those things. I used to drink wine coolers a lot, like back in the day. But man, the, and right now, they, they give me a headache. The problem with wine coolers is it's too easy to drink a lot of them. And the headache they produce is like nothing else, man. They're pr it's pretty horrible. So uh, so yeah, but um, thanks for sharing what your beverage of choice is with us, um, Win Jared. Really do uh, appreciate it. All right, so Troy Ridley is talking about um, his top dressing mix. He says, hey, Ron, I replaced getting masonry sand with screen chocolate loam. I've never heard of that. That's something new to me. I learned something new today. It's a mixture of sand, clay, and decaying organic matter. This sounds pretty good. It says, hopefully Bermuda will grow into it faster. September birthday here. Yeah, man, so you mean another September baby, man. You and me, we're, we're, that's us. We see eye to eye. Um, so yeah, if you got sand, clay, and organic matter, it just sounds, sounds, sounds like an awesome top dressing mix, man. I've never actually heard of that before, but it sounds like it should work really well. You have to keep us posted on uh, on uh, how it does. Okay, um, and then Greg uh, Cla Clawin says, I want to level my lawn, but does that mess up my pre-emergent? I do have Bermuda. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, anything that you do to your lawn as far as that creates trauma, right? Like, so like manual aeration like, or core aeration, does it theoretically damage um, or reduce the effectiveness of pre-emergent? Yes. Have I done it every single year and not really seen like a, in other words, other than this year, every year my lawn has had pre-emergent on it. Um, and every year, like literally when pre-emergent goes down in, you know, Feb February, March, um, 
uh, and when April rolls around, I've aerated my lawn. I mean, I really go at it. I, I make like the multiple passes. Like I seriously go at it. And I don't have issues with like huge weed outbreaks. The, the, the weeds that I have in my lawn are like um, nuts edge, like Kalinga in the areas where water drains. And that's something I'm just, just going to be a thing because that's just a, an area where those weeds just thrive and they do really, you know, they just, that's just where they're going to grow. So yes, it does. Um, but I mean, but I, in my opinion, at least for me, I found it to be overblown to the point where, you know, people are afraid to do anything to their lawns. They put pre-emergent down. I have just not found that to be the case where, um, you know, where if I aerate my lawn, now I have a massive weed outbreak. That's just not, this has not been the case for me. Like I've had more, I have more weeds in my lawn this year, um, than I have in the past five years. And you know why? Because I didn't put down pre-emergent in the spring. It has nothing to do, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I aerated the lawn because last year I did it and I didn't have weed problems. So, um, I would put down pre-emergent. If you want to aerate your lawn, you can. Um, I've always done it, and it's not its not been an issue for me. Alex has done it, not been an issue for him. Like, he put down pre-emergent. We did his pre-emergent. Let me think about this. We did his pre-emergent in, like, super early this year. We did it in, like, February, early February. We aerated his lawn, top dress his lawn. His lawn looks amazing. There's no weeds in it anywhere. So uh, take that, um, you know, you have a sample size of two, and for neither of us, we don't we don't have issues with it. So I, yeah, so yes, in theory, yes, it does reduce the effectiveness. Um, but I think in many ways it's overblown. If you if you do a good job with your pre-emergent application, you can still aerate and top dress, and and you you should be fine. Should be good to go. No no issues at all. And if you're really worried about it, just don't aerate. I mean, I think aeration is important. It's a good part of top dressing. But if you're really concerned about it, just don't aerate and just top dress it. But I mean, I think you should aerate as part of top dressing. I think that you get a better result by doing that, Greg. Great, great question. Good one. And congrats on having Bermuda, man. Those Bermuda guys got to stay together, right? All right, Alex B. Okay, now this is a side conversation that is not uh, for me. So we got a question here from Notorious M I the Notorious M I G. Uh, says, any recommendations? I did a late summer test growing Bermuda in West Texas weather. Dry heat normally in the 90s. Um, It should do all right. As long as you kept water on it, it should grow in just fine, Notorious M I G. I mean, there shouldn't be... um. Shouldn't be a problem. I mean, Bermuda likes heat, um, heat and sunlight. So if you got both of those, it, it probably did well. As far as recommendations, I mean, get a soil test done and mow it a lot. You know, get a soil test done, fertilize it based on those soil test results and just mow it. That's, those are the big things. And then once you want to get into more advanced stuff, like introducing like, um, you know, granular and liquid carbon and getting on spoon feeding programs, those kind of stuff. Like if you want to go really down the rabbit hole, um, you can dig on that. You can look into that stuff later. Like I've got tons of content on that, but the big thing is get a soil test, fertilize it and just mow it, mow it and enjoy it. You know, it's easy, it's easy to overcomplicate lawn care when you're just getting into it. Like you're saying you're a lawn growing newbie. Um, you know, if, it, if the grass is growing, you did it right. It's growing, it's doing well. Uh, the thing that's going to make it look good is just regular, regular mowing. That's, that's the most important thing that contributes to a great looking lawn. All the other stuff, um, is important, but mowing is the, is the thing that most people just simply don't do enough of. All right. Pablo Moslo says, thin cut. I just saw your post. Thank you, sir. I love Miramichi products. Um, thank you, sir. You're like a poster boy for Miramichi Green, man. We gotta, we gotta get them to send you some swag or something, right? Um, so yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, for that, uh, Papa Mosler. I really appreciate it. Heartfelt Fashion says that what, what temperature does Bermuda start to grow into dormancy? Um, when soil temps, like kind of when it comes out of dormancy, when soil temps start crossing 50 degrees is when it will begin falling off. Different types of Bermuda go into dormancy at different rates. So like, if you want to see, I've got actually got a playlist on this. It's like a video, a playlist that didn't get very many views because it's kind of a boring topic, but last year I documented it. I have like two grasses, two different types of Bermuda growing in my lawn. Um, I have Tifway 419 and I have um, Arden 15. So what I did last year is every single week when the lawns started going into dormancy, I filmed a video every single week showing you how the two lawns going to dormancy and at different rates. Um, so if you want to see that heartfelt fashion, if you just really want to geek out on like watching dormancy stuff, um, lawns going dormant, I will find the playlist here. And I will send it to you. But yeah, um, the, the fact is, uh, the answer to your question is when, when soil temps cross 50 degrees going south, that is when the lawn's going to start going dormant. And um, as far as you know, how quickly it's going to happen, it it depends because they different you know different different grass different types of Bermuda go dormant at different uh, rates. Yeah, here it is. So here's the playlist. I'll put that in the live stream for you. It's 11 videos. Um, if you really want to, um, you know, and yeah, you want to see. Watch that, and that will actually show you on my lawn when you have two different types of Bermuda in it, like how you know how they fall off at different rates. 
There you go. All right, um, Paul Runge says, Grassaholic, at least I can admit I have a problem. That's true. You know, admitting you have the problem is the first part of, um, you know, I'm doing something about it, Paul. So I'm with you, man. Being a grassaholic, it's, it's definitely a thing. I will admit, though, man, this year has been rough as far as all the mowing. I am ready for the grass to start slowing down. And it has started. Like mowing every other day and for some stretch there every day is fun. But it's I'm ready to, for, to just pump the brakes. Pump the brakes a little bit. Slow things down just a little bit. You know what I mean? And when Sherrod says, I am, I am old and crotchety. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Chariot says, uh, grassaholics, yes, grass holes. Uh, no, thank you. I'll be here all next week. Oh, uh, the grass holes, I'm sure, will, will, are, they're probably lurking, Jay. Um, the problem is like, most of them have already been banned, so they can't like chat. All they can do is like put dislikes in. So if you guys are here, love you to pieces. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you. All right, next up. We um, have Alex, he says, um, Ron, a friend of mine just bought a new home. Lo uh, old lawn ripped out and, and ripped out and new soil brought in. He is torn between seed and sod. What do you recommend? And what would you do if you had to start over? Um, if it's a war sod, either way, the question the answer is gonna be sod. If it's a cool season lawn, you can do seed, but really, if you can afford it, sod. Sod is like the easiest way to get a lawn established, especially, if your, you know, your friend is just, they're not really fully sold on this whole lawn care thing and they're not going to be out there watering it all the time to get it to germinate properly. Um, definitely, definitely I would, I would go with side. She says, um, and if I, if what would you have to start all over? If I had to start all over, so I had to, if I were, if I were going to next season burn down my entire lawn and I were going to do a renovation, um, I might install a celebration. I might be like the lawn tools. I might jump on that lawn tools train and, and maybe try out Tahoma 31. I might do that if I were starting all over. I have to see how it does on their lawn, like how like the Tahoma looks. And in their videos, it looks pretty good, but I want to see how it looks as it goes into dormancy and this kind of stuff. So I, I might do either Celebration or um, or Tahoma. Those are, those are both options. If I were doing seed, I would just burn it all down and just do Arden 15 over the entire thing from scratch. That's an option too, an expensive option. Um, but that, that's some, that's another option as well too. But for your friend, sod all the way. It's just, it's going to be way easier. You're not going to deal with a very super expensive water bill. And it's the, it's the most sure way to get a consistent result as quickly as possible. Only negative is that it's, it, depending on the size of his lawn is it can be a bit more expensive. All right. Mr. Badai has a question here. He says, what should the pH be for a healthy lawn? Mid sixes. So um, Bermuda, like five, eight up to like the high sixes, uh, you know, as, as much as seven, two, um, is that range, but really the mid sixes is what you're after, like six, six, three to six, six, eight, six, nine. That's like the Goldilocks zone for Bermuda. So anything in the sixes is, is uh, you're good to go. But I mean, you can be a little bit lower than that. You can be a little bit higher than that, but really the mid sixes. Anything with a six in front of it when you're doing your, looking at your pH for grass, um, you're in, uh, you're in good shape. Should be, should be good. All right. I agree with you, Winchair. We should all go over to, um, LG's house. Um, um, Philippe says, Ron, are you a Marine or a former Marine? No, sir, I did not. I have not, I have not served um, in any of the armed services. I I've had the privilege of, of, of training, of doing some like um, cyber training to some of our friends um, in the Maryland area, in the Baltimore and the Maryland area. But as far as actually being enlisted or being, ser being actually serving formally, I did not have the privilege of doing that. Um, mainly because I grew up overseas, grew up in the islands and... Um, I'm, when I moved to the U S I was already, I was already grown up. I was already a grown up. I was already in my career and everything, but, uh, but yeah, nope, not a Marine. Um, just a martial artist. And I do, I, I work out all the time, which is why, you know, I stay, stay fairly fit for the most part. Okay. James says, do you specialize in warm or cool season turf? Uh, mainly warm season, uh, James. Here's the thing though. Most of what I talk about does apply to cool, to cool season. As far as like, mo as far as the stuff that's going to, allow you to get a good looking lawn, right? Um, so like pre-emergent, apply, applying pre-emergent twice a year, that applies to cool season and warm season. Mowing practices, like regularly mowing your lawn, cool season and warm season, like those things are the same for both. Um, like the fertilization, the, the rates will be different for cool season grass than, than Bermuda. Bermuda seems to like a little bit, or needs a little more nitrogen than some cool season grasses do. Um, like the carbon kit, like the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit, like really zero, like the micronized carbon, the, um, the, the soil amendments, all that stuff is the same for both cool season and warm season lawn. Really, the stuff that's different between cool season and warm season is in the biggest difference is in um, herbicides, right? So like the, the, the herbicides that you apply to cool season lawns um, will, will damage warm season lawns and vice versa. If you put, like a, if you put something like um, Celsius 
on a cool season grass like Kentucky bluegrass or ryegrass, it's going to kill it, right? It'll, it'll, it'll damage it. So herbicides are really the biggest thing. And then application rates, as far as how much nitrogen you put into the lawn, is a difference too. But again, the stuff that, the, the stuff that I use primarily to create good lawns, like what I do on my lawn, mo like most of it applies to your lawn as well. So mowing, um, mowing, keeping, some, keeping water on it, and, and just, you know, just taking care of the soil, that stuff is the important stuff that really helps you produce a great lawn. And it doesn't really matter if it's warm or cool season. It's, it's when you don't do the stuff you're supposed to do, like when you mess up and you don't put down pre-emergent and you get a bunch, a bunch of weeds in your lawn, that's when like the differences really come into play because warm season herbicides and cool season herbicides are very, are very different, at least in the post-emergent space anyway. All right, next up we got Dwayne Hopkins says, hey Ron, I used uh, Spectricide Weed Killer a couple weeks ago to eliminate Spurge. I think it helped, but I still have a lot. I would say that it appears to have slowed it down. Should I reapply? Yes, yeah, yeah you can, Dwayne. That's not uncommon with Spectricide, because remember, one, you're paying like $10, $15 for like a concoction of several different herbicides, so the rates or the amount of active ingredient is not that much, um, mainly because they probably want to prevent people from damaging their lawns with it. But if it's been a couple of weeks or a few weeks since you put it down, I would do a follow-up. So it, it's knocked it back. That's good. So we know it's effective. It's hurting the Spurge. Let's do another follow-up app, and that should do a lot for really for really getting rid of it. So yeah, absolutely, um, I would do a follow-up application. And then you said, after, and after reapplying, how long should I wait to fertilize? The two are, the two are decoupled. So, like, so, like, fer, so fer, um, like fertilization and then applying weeds, or taking care of applying weeds, taking care of weeds, like playing your spring or spectricide are two different things altogether. Um, the only thing I would say, though, so where, so let's talk about this, where a sp spring spectricide and putting down like a granular fertilizer like Humic Max would, where they would, would matter is um, if you put down like say spectricide in the morning and you go ahead and then you go and the same morning you put down Humic Max, you would want to wait until like at least the afternoon or perhaps the following day before you water the Humic Max in. So you don't want to put down like a liquid herbicide that's designed for foliar uptake, meaning it's supposed to get on the, on the weeds leaves um, for to, to kill it and then put down like a granular fertilizer and water right away because then you're kind of working against yourself. That's the only thing I'd say as far as um, things you want to be cognizant of, but as far as like, you know, putting down a, a herbicide and fertilizer, doesn't really, doesn't matter. You can, you can do them on the same day. Just wait till, just wait till the following day uh, to water it in. That's the only thing. All right. Um, Alex B says, yeah, James, most of Ron's content is on warm season grasses, but a lot of the info and tips also uh, on the channel also apply to warm and cool season grasses. That's exactly right, um, Alex. So, yeah, like I was just saying, most of the stuff that I talk about applies to both. It's just rates will be slightly different. All right. Uh, next up, we got Bamzilla83 in the house. He says, hey, Ron, my soil test results showed my pH was low and everything else was high. I picked up the Magic Cow Plus and plan on seeding with Arden 15. Will that be fine? Okay, so a couple of things. Um, Depending on how low the pH is, your pH is, yeah, Magic Cal is a good product. It can help with bringing pH up, but the best way to really adjust pH levels is a, a, a solid lime application, right? So if you don't want to get lime or can't get lime or it's just not something that you just want to deal with, um, then yeah, Magic Cal Plus is definitely better than not doing anything. Um, but if you can find out, like in your soil test, it will say whether your magnesium was low or not. And you're saying everything was high, so it was probably high. So in your case, uh, uh, Magic Cal Plus is fine, but um, another way, or probably even a more efficient way of raising your pH is to apply calcitic lime. Because I'm assuming that based on what you're saying here, magnesium levels are okay. Go and find you like a like calcitic lime. You can you can order it online, but it's going to be expensive. I would go and find like um, go like to a site one or like any other garden store. You should be able to buy like a 50 pound bag of calcitic lime for around ten dollars. Um, and I don't know what your pH levels are, but you know. A, a reasonable application rate is like 20 pounds per thousand square feet. So just, you know, how big your lawn is, um, most of those things, most of the, those uh, lime comes in a 50 pound bag. Just do the math and figure out how many bags you're going to need. Um, apply it, water it in, and you should be good to go. But then the Magic Isle Plus is also good too. Also good product too, but if you got lime, use that as well. Uh, great, great question. Okay, C. Webster says, can you pre-emergent, can you pre-emergent and seed at the same time? Um, no, it's kind of one of those either or things. If you're really trying to get the most out of your seeding project, C. Webster, I would not apply pre-emergent. Like this year, um, I really wanted to do Arden 15. I wanted to get it like throughout the entire lawn so I'd give it a chance to germinate and begin spreading and really making my lawn into a mutt lawn. That's my, my ultimate goal, right? Um, and I did not apply pre-emergent and the germination that I got this year was much better this year compared to last year. If you apply pre-emerge, if you if you apply seed 
and then you apply pre-emergent or even vice versa, um, you're kind of working against yourself. Because what pre-emergent does is it, it prevents, it, it, it harms the weeds or this uh, 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 grasses or a plant's ability to grow roots, right? And you think about it, the first thing a seed does whenever it starts to germinate is it grows roots and then it starts to grow up. And pre-emergent is gonna, is gonna suppress that or it's gonna kill that early in the stage. So you're, you're working against yourself. So what I would do is um, if you really are gonna seed, if you really wanna do that, um, I would not apply pre-emergent. Like if that's the most important thing to you, you really want to seed your lawn, I just really wouldn't do it because you're going to, you, you can, you'll get some germination, which is not going to be nearly as good as if you don't apply pre-emergent. So it's, it's an either or thing when it comes to that. Um, you didn't say what kind of grass you had. Um, I know with cool season grass, I think tenacity, uh, like it's got some pre-emergent, like some mild pre-emergent properties to it. So you can seed after that, after a bit of time. But um, for a traditional pre-emergent like prodiamine, dithiopare, spectacle flow, any of those, um, you're not going to want to seed right after application. It's, that's that's you're, you're kind of again you're kind of working against working against yourself. All right, um, let's see what other questions we got. Um, so Yolanda S says, "What's the best way to get rid of algae? I have it on my roof and garden bed." Um, so a lot of times, al so as far as like an actual product. Um, for getting rid of that. Um, that's a good question, um, Yolanda. I don't know exactly like what you can spray directly on algae to kill it. The way, the approach I tend to take is try and get rid of the conditions that are causing the algae to be there in the first place. Cause just here's why, right? Um, there are products that will kill algae, but if you're not, but let's say the algae is growing like in your garden bed in areas where like water just settles, right? Or it's really, really shady and damp and moist and just like there's not much sunlight that gets through. Yes, you can apply a product to, to get rid of the algae to kill it, but it's just going to come back in time, right? Because it's not so much, algae is one of those things where um, it's more of the conditions of the environment that are allowing it to really take root more so than like say, um, than like say weeds, right? Like a good example, like I kind of, um, um, I'm trying to give you a good, a good example here that I can, that another, like how I can relate this to, to weeds is like, it, it, like if you put pre-emergent down on your lawn, like in the spring, that will prevent you from getting weeds. Like where you do one thing, it prevents the other thing. And it's it's actually a good way of controlling or preventing weeds from coming back throughout the time that the pre-emergent is effective. Does that make sense? So if you apply pre-emergent, you're not gonna get weeds for three to four three to four months, five months, sometimes longer if you have a, a really good one, right? Um, with algae um, products that will kill it, you're get, you're killing the algae, like you're getting rid of it, but you know, you're not, you're also not, if you're not adjusting the watering, you're not improving drainage, or not reducing shade, it's gonna come back. So um, I would look into that. On your roof, you, it, you might have like a lot of trees, maybe your your, your home is, is heavily shaded. You might see about cutting some of the trees back so, the, so more sunlight gets to the roof area and gets to the garden bed. Those are some ways to, um, to help it. Like the only areas of my lawn where I've ever had algae um, is when I was doing like a, like I was doing a watering experiment and I was putting out a ton of water on the lawn as so it was always moist and wet. Um, and that's when I had it. And as soon as I stopped doing that, it went away. So that's, you know, I, I, I would encourage you to look more at the environmental conditions that are causing it to be a thing more so than trying to find, um, like a product to, to spray on it, to kill it because it's just going to come back. So hopefully that helps. Um, if not, just hit me up again in the comments down below and we can revisit it. So, uh, so yeah. Great, great question. All right, Hall of Fashion has a question about, I think, mowing um, steep hills. He says, I have a lot of steep hills in my lawn. I bought an all-wheel drive Toro walk-behind mower. It's amazing, I can use it with one hand. Will a true cut pull a hill that good? Uh, depends, depends on how big, how bad the slope is, right? Like my lawn is a decent slope and a true cut does a pretty well, good job on that. Like if you wanna see, I've got several videos on mowing a sloped lawn. Um, I think actually I've got a video saying mowing the sloped lawn with a true cut. So, um, so yeah, so I've got um, my Greensmaster and I've got also one on mowing it with, um, with a true cut. I think this is a video. I did it like last year. So I'll send that in the chat for you at heartfelt fashion, that video there. This is the one that talks about, that shows the true cut. And if you just, do, if you just go to YouTube and say like um, Ron Henry, Greensmaster slope, you, there's another video of me mowing the slope with um, a greens mower. Um, and it worked pretty well on that too. I mean, is it gonna be as well as your as your Toro all-wheel drive? It, I don't know, it depends on how bad the slope is. I, I, get, I my, It works pretty well for me, but it just depends, it depends on the slope. Rotaries are probably a bit better on slopes than real mowers are though, to be completely fair. All right, Alex B says, over 130 watching, let's get some more likes. Um, for Ron, 
you know, uh, putting in a long, all these hours for us most every week, dropping that long care knowledge. That is true, guys. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button, it's the, it's the top of the hour too, it's nine o'clock. I'm gonna take a sip of my lemonade. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel, sends good vibes to the algorithm, and it will send more people our way to come talk about lawn care stuff. So you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I would really appreciate it. Uh -huh. Good stuff. All right, Grace Ortiz says, soil test came out with a pH of 5.2, that's low. Um, phosphorus and potash were high. Nitrogen optimal, barely at 7.5. What should I put down at overseeding? Uh, Grace, can you send me the soil test? Can, can I actually see the results? Is it possible to send that to me? Um, you should already have my email address, but this is it here, ron at golfhorseon.com. Just take a, a clear picture of it and send it to me and I will, um, I'll tell you. I mean, the biggest thing is if, if you're with your pH at 5.2, getting some lime down is a good idea. Um, if your phosphorus and potash are already high, you really don't. You really shouldn't need very much. I mean, you, it sounds like your soil is already in pretty good shape, other than the pH. Um, to to you know, from a standpoint of from a standpoint of, of having enough macronutrient. Like we can't magically we want to get the pH into the mid sixes, but applying lime will help. Will slowly over time help move it in the right direction. So I don't really know. Without even looking at your soil test results, I don't even know that you really need to add anything with your seeding project. If you want to. You know, if you want to do like a like a triple twelve, like a light application of it, just so you can feel like you're doing something, you can. But you know, if your results are, are says that everything's you got plenty of nutrient, technically don't really need to do anything from what from what um, based on what you're saying to me. But send me those results, I'll look at them, and we'll get you a better answer. All right, um, Raider Nation says, hey Ron, 55 degrees this morning here in NC. Is it time to get the pre emergent down? Uh, I would wait a little bit longer, man. Um, you know, here's the thing with pre emergent. Early is better than later. You know, too, a little bit early is better than late. So it just depends on whether or not um, you think it's going to be cool in North Carolina going forward. I can't see it being it being cool. Like you guys getting tons of cool weather like here on out. I mean, it might be, but um, let's see. Let's pick a state. Let's pick like a Charlotte, North Carolina, and look at um, the your ten day according to weather.com. And let's know the weather is never wrong. It says it's supposed to be eighties and nineties here over the next 10 days. So no, I wouldn't do pre-emergent just yet. So a little bit, a little bit early for that. Um, I, I'd wait till, I'd, honestly, I'd wait till the end of this month. Um, yeah, end of this month, early next month is, is a good time to, to get it done. You know, if things change and you have a cold snap and, it's, and the weather, the temperature start going, starts heading south, then go for it. But one day or two days within the 55 degrees is not really, not really enough. All right. Great, great question. Um, Cedric G says, hey, congrats, Matt Scientist, on all your success with the channel. When um, would you have recommended to move toward the fall pre-emergent? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have the best grass of all type, Bermuda, my man, I like it. Um, same thing I just told Raider Nation, you know, this month you were entering the window, but really more closer to the, towards the end of the month is when you can do it. With pre-emergent, a little bit earlier is is better than late. Um, you know, unless you're doing something like what I'm going to be trying out this year, that coastal, uh, because that has some post-emergent in it to where if something, if you're a little bit late with putting it down, it'll kill off um, any um, any any cool season weeds that are already started germinating. So if you're going straight prodiamine or straight dithia pair, then you want to be a little bit earlier. Like end of September is a good is a good time to do that. Um, but if you are using something like Coastal, which has prodiamine and a couple of post-emergence, then you can go a little bit later in the season because anything that comes in, you are going to knock it out um, with that. So I will send that to you here in the chat, uh, Cedric, so you can see. That's when we try not. But fair not, there's going to be a video on that um, here coming out soon. So don't don't you worry. Um, it's going to be it's going to be coming out soon on that. But yeah, end of this month, early next month, and you should be uh, good to go. Should be good to go. All right, next up we have um, Rahul Berman in the house. He says, Bermuda grass, uh, Dallas Fort Worth area, small yard and a bunch of stuff, uh, trees in the way. What's a better mower in this case? Um, McLean True Cut versus Toro Greensmaster. Uh, okay, so you're comparing, so the short answer, Greensmaster. Um, but you're comparing, you're comparing two completely different things, two different completely classes of, of mowers, right? Uh, it'd be like you asking me, is a Volkswagen or a Porsche better? I mean, which is which is better? Kind of depends on what you're doing, but I mean, in most cases, a Porsche is going to be better, but it should be because it costs a whole lot more, right? Um, you know, when you say you have a lot of trees in the way and stuff, um, if you're talking about like, um, so what, what I'm hearing from that is you might have like debris in the lawn and that kind of thing. 
regardless of which one you go with, you don't want to cut, you, you really only want to be cutting grass with a, with a real mower. You don't want to be running over pine cones or sticks or twigs, like anything you cut other than grass, especially concrete. Um, I learned that this year. Concrete especially is bad for real mowers. Uh, I, I'll show you the proof if you don't believe me. Um, anything you cut other than grass is going to, is going to, it's not good for the mower. You're just going to dull it. You can potentially damage the reel or bed knife. Um, but if you're looking for the absolute best quality of cut, bar none, then a greens master is, is the way to go. If you're looking for something a little bit more rugged, it's going to be a little bit cheaper to maintain. Um, out of the McLean and true cut for me, it'd be the true cut a thousand times before the McLean for me, because that's, that's what I've used. That's what I like. I've tried the McLean. I do not like the drive system in it, but that is my personal preference. That does not mean that McLean's are bad mowers. There's people that use them and get great results with them and they love them to pieces. So it's not like I'm saying that McLean's a bad mower. I'm just saying that given those options, given those options, I would buy the greens master first and foremost. If you're telling me between the, the McLean and true cut, then for me, the true cut that is that's so hopefully that helps. Um, but you know, you get you know, any of them is going to do a great job as long as you're only cutting grass with it and the machine is set up uh, properly. All right. Clayton Wilson's in the house. He says, Hey, Ron, what's going on, Clayton? Thanks for coming to hang out. And you have a question. It says, um, it says, I need to control the growth of some holly type hedges in my beds. Uh, do you have a PGR that you'd recommend for that? Okay. So Holly, Holly type hedges. So I, you know, I don't know if T Nex is labeled for hollies. It's you know, it's um, you can spray it on ornamentals. I would have to check the label though to know if you can use it on hollies. I'm inclined to say yes. I'm inclined to say yes that that um, that T Nex anything with Trenexapac ethyl um, in it or like like Primo Max if you want to use like the name brand one. Um, like the, I believe I believe those they are, it is labeled to work on ornamentals. Is it labeled to work on hollies? I would have to check the label um, to be able to tell you. So, if you ch so um, the, a good example is, I'll give you a link for uh, T-Nex here and just go look at um, the label and that will um, that'll, that will tell you. Actually, just, just go to do my own here and look for, um, just look for T-Nex. Look up T-Nex, look up Trenexapac Ethyl and that will, um, and look at the label on it. Because on the labels there's gonna be all the grass types it takes care of and then, then there'll also be some um, instructions around application rates for ornamentals. So um, Tnex or you know Primo Max, whatever you have that's the, in that has Trinexapac ethyl in it should work. Keyword should, but check the label. All right, um, G Free's in the house. It's pre-emergent time. Hey Ron, Strap Action Gang, what's going on G Free? We're getting there. We are getting there close to pre-emergent time, most definitely. Um, Alpha Maniac says, what should I do to prepare for aeration? Um, what should you do to do prepare for aeration? Are you doing it? So if you're actually aerating, you're gonna to want to do some of these and some of these. You're gonna to want to do some push-ups. You know, stretch, warm your shoulders up. Um, have like some Advil on standby. Uh, but outside of that, not really. There's not. There's not a ton. I mean, all jokes aside, um, if you can water your lawn the day before, so the soil is a little bit moist, just a little bit soft. Um, not to the point where it's it's like a sopping mess. Don't do that. But just where it's softer, a little bit softer, the tines will will have an easier job penetrating the soil if it's a little bit if it's a little bit softer. Um, so if you've been watering your lawn regularly, don't go out and do a special watering. You're probably just fine. But if you've not been watering your lawn, and it's you got like hard, you're like hard clay soil or something. You might want to put a little bit of water on it. Outside of that, um, mark sprinkler heads. Mark sprinkler heads. Mark um, get garden hoses and stuff. Obviously, you don't want to run over out of the way. But mark sprinkler heads is part of getting your preparation process because because the the tines will damage, it will break a sprinkler head if you run over it. So outside of mar marking sprinkle heads, making sure the soil is a little bit moist, that's about it. And then just, um, you know, have Advil ready and get ready to get pulled around the lawn by the uh, by the aerator. It's, it's, it's a workout. It's great for the lawn, but it is a workout. All right, okay, Alex B's chiming in. He says, I'm typically not much of a fescue person, but one small part area in the front yard has shade for my neighbor's huge trees. Might have to introduce some fescue there into my um, KBG perennial rye grass um, hybrid lawn. Yeah, man. I mean, if that if that's what that, if you know if, if uh, the fescue fescue tends to do better um, with shade than KBG does. So yeah, if you got like a big shaded area, you may have to add some uh, some fescue there. Might be a thing, um, Alex. Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate that. It says everyone's come together and hit that like button, support Ron for the channel. I really appreciate it, Dwayne. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Paul Smith says a spectacle isn't um, isn't labeled for cool season. Oh, spectacle flow isn't labeled for cool season turf. Um, so yeah, in that case, like prodiamine, 
go with prodiamine. So I mean, obviously, like in all my herbicide videos, what one thing you will always say, um, see me say, even if I say it jokingly, is to read the label. Like read, absolutely read the label for, um, you know, for the herbicide that you're putting down on the lawn. So prodiamine will work on cool season lawns um, and warm season grass, and it's cheaper than than spectacle. So um, yeah, so if you got you got your hand, if you want to use something that's going to work really well, just go with this, man. I mean, there's no reason to complicate things. I mean, again, we put this stuff on Alex's lawn. You guys saw the video that I did this year on pre-emergent was done on Alex's lawn and his lawn has no weeds. If you guys want to see it like tomorrow morning when I walk out and I go mow and do everything else, I'll actually do a YouTube story and show you the lawn. There's no, no weeds in it. No weeds. The only damage in that lawn is from Stella, from their dog, from whenever she misbehaves and doesn't pee in the designated area. That's the only lawn damage he's got uh, really going on. All right, um, Richard Flynn says, hey Ron, Northern Illinois here, nuked my lawn and seeded recently, 80% Kentucky bluegrass and 20% perennial ryegrass. It's been 14 days, getting good germination, but I am developing moss. Cut back on water while waiting on the KBG. Um, yeah, I mean, just tr yeah, try and reduce it. I mean, you, wanna keep, you don't want the lawn to dry out, but, um, but yeah, reducing the water a little bit will help. And here's the thing, um, Richard, even if you get a little bit of moss um, during this period where you're putting a, a bit more water on the lawn um, than you normally would, as soon as you back that off, once it, once the the, 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 um, the KBG germinates, um, the moss is going to go away. It's just it's not going to. You're basically taking away the conditions that are allowing the K, the moss to to really thrive, right? So if you want, back it off a little bit. Um, make sure you though you don't allow the the lawn to dry out. See if that helps the moss a little bit, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't get too, you know, wrapped around the axle around it. I mean, I wouldn't. I won't worry too much, um, because once the ryegrass, well, sorry, once the, the KBG germinates, you are going to reduce the watering then, and then the ryegrass is going to go away. Oh, sorry, the the moss will go away after that. So, hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, um, Ogsan is in the house. He says, "Hey, good evening, everyone. Ron got my soil test back. My lawn is a true mess. No, I mean, your soil. Here's the thing." You may get soil test results that 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 have a lot of have some negative things, but don't look at it as like it's a mess. It just now you have the data, you have the information to start moving your lawn, moving your soil in the right direction. Don't I mean it's not it's not a negative thing. It's like anything else, right? Like whenever like you have to fail at things, or you have to you have to do things poorly for a while to be able to get good at them, right? So it's the same thing with soil. If your soil is not great now, that's fine. At least you know what's wrong with it, and we can fix it. So I wouldn't sweat it. All right, on the rest of your question, you said. I cut just maybe 30 minutes ago and applied lawn solutions. I purchased with magical, I purchased with magical pH up. When should I apply lime? Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing that based on your soil test results, your pH is low. Um, you can apply lime now if you want. I mean, you can apply it later, you can apply it now. I mean, the big thing is just you, just want, you want to put it down and water it in heavily, get it down um, into the soil. It needs to get into the soil to begin working, right? To react with the soil and really begin working. So uh, you can do it now if you want, you can do it um, you can say what kind of grass you have. You can do it at the end of the season if you want. That that will work too. But yeah, you can apply lime. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the magical pH up um, product. I have to look into that. I'm never I'm not not sure of that of um of what that what that would be. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, lime. You can do it now if you like. Um, no uh, no worries on on that at all. All right, and then um, Alex B says, I used weed and feed products years ago and personally never got great results from them. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with that, with weed and feed, I mean, I think it, it can have a place, right? Like at the, at the beginning of the season, if you want, let's say you're just getting started on your lawn care journey, right? You're saying, hey, this year I'm taking my lawn seriously. I want to make it awesome. And you want to start out the season with weed and feed. I mean, I personally, I still find it better to do herbicides separate from weed control. But if you're just getting started and it's kind of intimidating, you don't want to have to get a backpack spray or you're intimidated by doing that. Like doing weed and feed for your first application of the season is not a it's not a bad plan. It's not a bad strategy. Like you knock the weeds back and then your cultural practices, your mowing and everything are going to allow the grass to really, you know, take off and begin dominating. But as a matter of like every single month when I apply um, fertilizer to my lawn, I would not want to be putting down uh, you know, using weed and feed every time for that. You do want, you want to limit how much you use herbicides on your lawn if you can help it. Um, and realistically, if you, again, if you use pre-emergent, I sound like a dead horse, beating dead, dead, dead horse here, but if you apply pre-emergent in the spring and the fall, you will not need, you will, your need for post-emergent herbicides will go down dramatically. That coupled with a lot of mowing, you should be in a much better place than if you don't do it. All right, Lawn to Learn says, hey Ron, I'm just getting over COVID, man. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Um, that is def that's definitely been a thing. Like it's it's definitely wrapping up. Um, you know, I, I know someone very well that works in healthcare, and uh, they're telling me that you know the hospital is definitely ramping up here locally. 
Just I haven't mowed my Bermuda in, oh, in over 10 days. It looks horrible. Should I just scalp it and feed it? I typically mow it one inch. Thanks again. Um, just take it down to your normal height of cut, man. If you, if you, if you want to go down to one inch, if you want to get back down there, you can just take it down to one inch. It's going to look ugly for a week, 10 days, but then it's going to green back up. I, I wouldn't sweat it. Wouldn't sweat it too much. Um, this late in the season, I wouldn't do a huge, like, um, I wouldn't do a huge scalp. Like I wouldn't take it down like half an inch or anything like that. Um, mainly because it's a lot of material to have to remove and take out. Like I, I just, I, anytime I think of like removing that much that much grass, I, I just think of all the trips that, that it would take for me to do that. Um, so if you really want the grass to get back to one inch, take it back down to that. It's gonna look ugly for, again, a week, 10 days, but that's that's just par for the course. You were out for 10 days, you weren't feeling well, you know, it's no biggie. You know I mean? It's it's grass, it's gonna be it's gonna be just fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat it. It's Bermuda, you got, you got the perfect grass to do it with. So don't, don't sweat it, man. I would take it back down, but I would not do a full scalp. I would not do that. All right, uh, next up we have Walter says, I think I have some torpedo grass in my Bermuda. Light green in color, grows taller than the rest. Best herbicide. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know that there actually, you know, I have, to, I have to do some research on that one, Walter. I don't know that there is a selective herbicide that will kill torpedo grass in Bermuda. Like most times when I've, I've seen people talk about torpedo grass, getting rid of it, it's been like glyphosate. <laughs> is what I've heard, but let me take that one as a research topic. So uh, torpedo grass um, in Bermuda, uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll look in that. There probably is, um, there, there might be a selective herbicide, but I know torpedo grass is one of those, is one of those tough ones to get rid of. Um, so let me, let me do some digging on that and I will get you an answer next for next week. Or um, if you email me here, just say, hey, Ron, it's Walter from the live stream. As soon as I know, I'll tell you, but if you wait till next week, I'll have an answer for you by then. So great question, thank you so much. All right, Kidro22 is in the house, says, Ron, what's up? Damn, I'm late here. <laughs> you are late, but you're here, it's okay, no worries. No worries, all right, uh, Grant Hayden says, what, gr what grass seed brand do you recommend for Kentucky Bluegrass? Looking for a more premium brand. Okay, so I, I don't have cool seeds of grass, but I can tell you that um, I hear a lot of good things about Baron Brug. Um, I hear really good stuff about their stuff. And again, this is not, I'm not sponsored by Baron Brug. I'm, they're not paying me to say this, but I mean, I, I hear just really good things about, about Baron Brug seed. A lot of the, a lot of people that you see while also selling their own particular brand of seed is just Baron Brug seed that's been white labeled. That's, it's been, you know, they take, they take like one of these other big seed companies and they, um, they put their, slap their label on it. Um, that's a good seed. That's, that's a great one. But I mean, if you want to watch, check out some of the cool season guys are doing. Um, but just from, from a person that does not have a cool season lawn, but has watched a fair amount of cool season content, I hear really good things about their their seed cultivars. So um, you didn't um, that that's what I would go with. And also, you might want to check out um, check out Pete Pete from GCI Turf. I think for KBG, he has one that he does himself. Like he's been doing doing some testing with KBG as well, and I think he's come up with his own cultivar as well. Like he's put some it's his own blend that supposedly has some good some good benefits to it as well. So check that out as well. So check out what, what he's got going on. But Baron Brug, or see what a lot of the cool season lawn care YouTubers are doing, and um, and choose from uh, from there. But you are asking the right question, Grant. Really, you do want to get a quality seed. Like seeding is expensive from the standpoint of like your time, water. Like get a good one. Like put down a quality seed. Don't go with like the cheap stuff you can get at Home Depot because it's just not gonna. Not to hate on Home Depot or anything like that, but I mean, it's just not the stuff they have is just not not the best. Not the best quality. Um, best quality seed. So you, you are definitely on the right track by searching for a quality product. All right, Winter says, "Hey Ron, do um, you have any haters in your neighborhood? The color of of lawn envy is uh, is green, and so is jealousy. Haters in the neighborhood? Um, no, not really. I think most people are kind of used to me by now. They just know me as a crazy guy that's out there with his camera, and I was out mowing his lawn, right? Um, every now and then, I do see a cigarette butt on the vanity strip, and something just tells me." And it's always on the vanity strip. Now, granted, the vanity strip is along the street, so it could be someone just throwing a cigarette butt out the window. You know, it could be. Or this vanity strip could be being targeted. Could be, guys. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. But no, I mean, as far as people that are being mean or being haters, now, nah, not really. I mean, most times people will come up, uh, people in the neighborhood that actually know me will come and ask questions or ask what I think about things. Most people are really actually fairly cool. I mean, there's definitely some online haters, but as far as people in the neighborhood, not, not so much. But um, you can't hate it, man. You can't have you can't have any measure of success without haters. It's all all par for the course. You got you have to love them. Yeah, and Mazama Blues here has got a good one here. So Granny says, check out Midnight. Um, says Midnight O. Um, I guess that's a brand of seed or a type of seed. So check that out for KBG as uh, as an option. 
All right, uh, Frederick Dukes in the house he says, "Hey Ron, I'm tuning in. I'm tuning in late, but you're here. No problem." He says, um, "Best fall fungicide, pre-emergent. When to soil test? Okay, when to soil test? Now is a good time. Now is good. To, is is a good time, is a great time to do it. Um, you you want to do it prior to like if you've been doing what I do, which is like you're fertilizing your lawn practically every month. You want to do it like as far away from your last fertilization as possible. So if you've not done like your September." fertilization is yet, do your soil test then, right? That's what I would do. I would, I would give as much time between your last fertilization um, before you do your soil test. As fall as um, best fall um, fungicide, uh, great question. So, so as far as a preventative, like I guess a, a good general one, I'm a big fan of Headway. You can go with Headway G or Heritage G. Headway, a uh, Heritage has one um, active ingredient, Headway has two. It's got azotrostrobin and propoconazole. So this fall, when I put down, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna do two um, fungicide apps this fall. Both of them will be Headway G. So we'll take that for what it's worth. Um, you can spray it, but I mean, I just like to do. I like to use granular whenever I can, mainly because if I show that on the channel, it's easier for most people to be able to also duplicate that. People are afraid. Of, a lot of people are kind of afraid or get you know leery about mixing products and using, you know, mixing up liquid fungicides and this kind of thing. And then a lot of people don't listen as far as like using the right PPE, um, which you really, you need to do it with granulars too, but you really need to do it when you're handling liquids. Um, so that's why I tend to push more or talk more about um, granular fungicides whenever at all possible. So yeah, here's those two. Um, Frederick, you got Headway, which is the one I'm gonna be using. And you also got Heritage, which is um, also a great fungicide as well too. Either one of them will work well. Great, great question. I think I got everything. We got your soil test, got your fall fungicide, and pre-emergent. I did not answer that one, but end of this month is a good time. We're getting into the window where it's entering the window where you can start considering doing that. Late September, early October is, is the time is time to go. It's time for that. All right, Joel Hernandez is up in the house. He says, "Hey Ron, I hope your Friday is doing well. Pretty good, man. Can't complain. It's, it's a good been a good Friday. It's a long weekend." Um, this is what would you recommend for nuts edge? I tried ortho before and it worked, but the nuts edge came back. Yep, that, that's that sounds about right for the, or for the ortho. Um, it came right back aggressively. I use hedge hammer, but it comes back within a day. Okay, so sedge hammer um, takes longer than a day to work. So ortho comes ortho is is a is faster working. So if you put ortho down within a couple of days, you're gonna start seeing the nuts edge yellowing. But to your point, I have not. Um, I have not seen it do the best results as far as actually killing it, right? Um, Sedge Hammer will kill Nuts Edge. I mean, it's a it's a great product, it's a good product, but as far as far as like probably in my opinion, again, just you get my opinion on this, the best the best or, or the given the choice between Sedge Hammer image, um, the Ortho or um, like a, again more professional grade um, product between like Sedge Hammer or something else, I would lean more towards certainty. It's more expensive, but like it literally will, will take care of pretty much all sedges. It's a very, very good product. Um, it doesn't take much. You can mix it at a low rate. It comes with like a measuring scoop, so it's really easy to, to apply it. Um, uh, and that is what I'd recommend. I would go with certainty with a small scoop and like uh, like three of those small scoops. I think it it calls for like two gallons of water as a dilution rate with that with the three small scoops. So that that is what... Um, I would go with if you're really if you're really serious, you're sick of the if you're sick of the nuts edge, you want it gone. Um, certainty is what I would go with. It's what I also use in that video that I released a couple weeks ago on like mixing Celsius and certainty, like a concoction for warm season grass. Um, that so that's that's what I would recommend, um, Joel. If you if you're down to um, to get your backpack sprayer out and do some work, then certainty is what I would go with. And uh, I just put a link in the chat for you. So hopefully that helps. All right, great. Hannah says, thanks, I will. Thank you, you're very welcome. Um, accurate Towing says, I would say to my in, I am in Accurate Towing. Are you gonna come tow something? I'm, I'm afraid to tell you now, Accurate Towing. I'm in, I'm in Georgia, I'm somewhere in Georgia. I'll just say that, because I don't know. I want you, I'm not sure what you're, you're trying to do. Um, I'm in Northeast Georgia. I'll give you, I'll give you that much. How about that? All right. Uh, next up, um, what do you mean, uh, fragile? What did I say? What did I say by fragile? I'm not, I'm not sure if you're talking to me, if you're talking, um, to someone else. Um, 
Grant Hayden, but if you can put some, oh, I see what you're saying here. Um, Alex B says, Grant Hayden, I'd go with Mazama, Baron Bug, or Midnight. Um, so there you go. So I got one from right? Baron Bug is a good option. He says, though I would say my experience with Midnight, uh, using it for the first time this season, the color is amazing, but it's extra fragile. So by that, I mean, I don't see what he says, but like, his, I haven't seen what he, his answer was, but it probably, like when it gets hot, it's going to, it doesn't tolerate heat as well. It's probably, um, as far as Glon disease, maybe more susceptible to that than other um, strains of KBG. But I mean, see what he, see what, um, Alex says, because he actually has Kentucky Bluegrass. So I would go by, by, by what he's going with. All right. Joel has a follow-up question. He says, also, when would be a good time to overseed Bermuda with rye? <laughs> I live in Bakersfield, California. So temps are still in the high 90s uh, through September and October. So if it's still that high, let's wait till later on in the month, um, Joel. Um, if you want to do that, if, you, if you're definitely going to do uh, seeding Bermuda with rye, like that's something you want to do. Um, if your temps are still the line 90s, let's wait till like closer to the end of this month before you do that. Um, and yeah, that, that's what I would recommend because you don't want it. You don't want the rye because you, you, you can't plant the rye now. Um, but if it germinates in the 90 degree heat, you're going to have a hard time keeping it alive. So let's wait a little bit longer when temps fall off a little bit. It's still going to germinate just fine. Um, and you'll probably get a better, not probably, you will get a better result as far as losing less of it when temperatures are on their way down versus when temps are in the 90s. Uh, Miss Fendi's in the house. What's going on, Miss Fendi? What's your what's your uh, Fendi bag uh, avatar? I guess you're you're a fan of Fendi, huh? I imagine. All right. Next up, we got um, Daryl Tunstall in the house. Mister just got his um, what? Well, Daryl got a, a groove roller on his True Cut man. He's he's living the high life now. He says, "Hey Ron, I'm here just to jump on the train and get on the live stream. Hey, should I change my sprayer tips to a big droplet for spraying pre-emergent? Thanks. Yes, yes, you should." Um, if you got one, you got something like, um, I don't know the actual model number of this one, of this T of this T jet tip, something like this, um, will work. Um, I, I've also, so here's the thing too, whereas the, um, the pressure washer tip that the, um, flow zone comes with is it, while it does work for applying, like doesn't doing foliar applications, it's not the best for that. It does work okay for pre-emergent. Like I've done that, I've done that for um, a couple of years and it, it works well. Something like the T-Jet tip is better though. Um, you know, it just, it produces like those, um, I like to call them like the shower head droplets, like the really big droplets. Um, that, so it is, it's better. But as long as you're also watering it in um, well after application, Daryl, you're fine. You should be, you should be good to go. So if you get a, uh, a tip with bigger droplets, that is optimal. But the big thing with pre-immersion is once you put it down, water it in. All right, Winchair says, I've got cicada everywhere, fortunately. No army worms. Ooh, that's not, that's, those are not fun. What are you doing to knock those out, uh, wind chariot? Um, those, that, that stinks. Those are, those uh, cicadas are noisy, man. All right, um, A-Rod is in the house in Dallas-Fort Worth. He says, um, what to do with St. Augustine? Um, what's next after this heat? Um, just keep mowing it. Just keep mowing it, keep water on it, keep mowing it. Um, St. Augustine is more susceptible to fungicide, or more susceptible to lawn fungus. Um, but if you don't have any fungus in your lawn, just keep mowing it. I'd say just keep mowing it, fertilizing it, taking care of it, the, taking care of it the way you have been, um, and you should be good to go. And then when winter rolls around, um, it'll go dormant and that'll be all she wrote. You know, it'll be, it'll fall off. So, um, so yeah, I wouldn't, there's nothing, nothing really special, um, a rod other than just, just treating it nicely. So it has enough water, enough nutrient to, uh, to do well. All right. Um, Murianta, um, St. Villas is in the house and says, Hey, I live in New Jersey. What type of grasses are best for my lawn? So being, um, up in New Jersey, you have a cool season or you, cool season grass is going to be a better fit for your, um, your climate, where you are, your zone, um, Murianta. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I apologize. Um, so a Kentucky bluegrass or a ryegrass or um, a fescue, any of those are, um, are good options. It depends on what kind of look you like. Like if you like a taller grass, then fescue is a good option. If you like, um, uh, like if you want something like a medium, like a medium height grass, then perennial rye or Kentucky bluegrass can be good too. The nice thing about Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye grass is that if you decide you want, you know, you decide one day you want to mow your lawn really short, perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass will tolerate that. That they'll do fine being cut shorter, whereas fescue will not. So something to consider, but really just depends on which kind of grass looks, suits your eye, which one you think looks best to you. But you, you're going to definitely want to pick a cool season grass. Don't go, don't be putting down like um, Bermuda or Zoysia or anything like that being up in New Jersey. I wouldn't, I would not do that. 
Uh, great uh, question. So I got your answer. I already got Mr. Left Tools Super Chat. Um, and then uh, Patrick Gretton says, how long should I wait to dethatch after fertilization? Um, I mean, here's if it were me, Patrick, I would just do it the other way around. I would, I would dethatch and then fertilize. Um, because it's not like it's, the two aren't really linked, but the idea is that if you're dethatching and you're pulling material out, it's likely, I mean, you're not gonna get a ton of it, but it's likely that you might pull some of the, the fertilizer granules out with the grass, with the, with the stuff you're taking out. So that's the only consideration I would say. But so if you can dethatch, get rid of the stuff that you, that you the material that, you, that comes out of the lawn and then fertilize after that, you should be good to go. So, and there's not like a, there's not like a, a window. Like it's not like you have to dethatch then wait like two weeks before you fertilize. You can do, you can literally do them both in the same day. But as far as like the order that I would do it in is I would dethatch first and then fertilize afterward. Mainly because I just don't want to um, take the chance of, um, of, of like t basically putting down fertilizer and basically taking, pull some of it out with the dethatching process, if that makes sense. Uh, great question. Hopefully that's helpful. If not, leave me a comment down below and I will revisit it. All right, um, Mazama Blue and Charlie Henry are having a conversation about um, winter creeps. My neighbor, um, winter creep ground coverage has, in, has invaded my, my uh, tall fescue. KB lawn, any tips to kill it? I don't have one on that off the top of my head, Charles Henry, but being a Henry, I gotta give you an answer now. See, unless someone in the chat has already told you, I feel obligated. I gotta do it. I gotta put down, like, I gotta put you down on my notes here as far as, let's see, killing winter creep um, in uh, tall fescue and I guess Kentucky bluegrass is what you're, is what you're saying. I will look that up. If someone hasn't answered in the chat as yet, I will look that up and I will get an answer for you next week. So um, I appreciate that. Sorry, I don't have an answer now, but I will get you one. We'll get an answer for you. Okay, Mr. T, um, Mr. B.A. Baracus, right? Like uh, you related, related to, uh, to, to B.A. He says, how often and important is it to add iron to warm season grass in the Southeast? It is important to add iron to worms using grass in the southeast based on your soil test results. So if you if you're so what I would say is get a soil test done, and if your soil test says hey your lawn needs iron, um, put iron in your lawn. Soil test I recommend is this one, the one from my soil. This will tell you how much iron is in your soil, um, and it'll tell you whether you need iron or not. Now, having said that, if you are trying to get your lawn, I mean obviously this weekend is too late, but let's say you know let's fast forward to next year, right? And you want your lawn to have like that deep, you want a really deep fake green color, right? Uh, leading up to say the 4th of July. A week before, like, you know, five days, five, seven days before, um, you can apply um, iron on top of what you normally put in your lawn, and that's gonna produce a deeper green. It's not gonna last, but it will give your lawn that really deep green for, um, for a time being, for, you know, a week, 10 days, thereabouts. But as far as, like, the most correct answer to your question is do a soil test based on the soil test results, add iron based on that. And I can tell you that most people, like most people that are into their lawns, I get, I look at a lot of soil test results and literally all of them have high iron because everyone has this thing like, you know, iron equals green grass. And yes, it does produce a deeper green, but so does making sure that you have enough nitrogen and making sure you have enough manganese. Um, um, those things matter too, as far as producing it, you know, a really deep green lawn. But um, so hopefully that helps Mr. T. Um, be, you know, add iron specifically based on your soil test results. But um, if you're also looking to get just like a little extra green pop here and there, you can hit your lawn with a little dose of iron. It's not going to hurt anything. I, I do it during, I do it Memorial Day weekend. I do it 4th of July. Um, and I normally would have done it this Labor Day weekend, but I've been torturing my back lawn without putting any water on it. I haven't, like I haven't watered, like it's not true. I watered one time in 14 days. So I did an experiment with putting a lot of water on the lawn. Now I'm doing an experiment where I'm taking a lot of water away from it, just letting it get rainwater and seeing how the two different grass types perform. Cause you know me, I don't, I don't really mind making my lawn look ugly um, when I'm doing testing stuff, but hopefully that helps. Um, great, great question. Philly, Philly, uh, Philly Phil 99 is in the house. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Philly Phil. What you rolling with, man? I can't see your car. I can't make it out. looks like, a, oh, Audi. It's got Audi's R8 and um, some Audi of some sort. I can tell by the grill. Nice ride, nice ride, I like them. Very cool cars. A-Rod is like beer and grass talk. <laughs> Life is good. Yeah, man, it doesn't get much better than that, right? Doesn't get much better. All right, uh, next up we got uh, Dan uh, uh, Hathorn in the house. He says, I had a pool put in recently. This one covered a lot of clay, which was out on top of my, I don't see what else you're saying here. On top of your, I guess of your existing soil is what you're saying. Um, 
And you, okay, your next problem is Virginia Beach resident, recent pool install, push a bunch of, um, and saw push a bunch of clay soil on top of the existing soil. Sod came on top and now I've got a drainage issues due to compaction and no ground prep. Okay. Okay, so we are where we are now, right? You can't go back and, and not put the clay down, it's already there. Um, what you can do, Dan, is um, if you've not aerated your lawn, that's something you can do like aeration, like the, not like the, not the um, liquid aeration stuff, like actual hollow tine aeration, either do it yourself or pay a service to come do it. That is really good for breaking up compaction and also increasing the soil's ability to take up, to draw moisture or water away from the surface. So that is something you can try. Um, you know, it might also might get better over time too, right? Because it sounds like you, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, a, as the new sod roots in properly, um, after you put the, after you aerate it, you can also consider top dressing. Like I, I gotta tell you, I always say this anytime people ask me about it. Like top dressing, the single, the, one of the single biggest benefits that I got out of top dressing my lawn is not the fact that it's level and that it looks cool, is that like the lawn, as far as like the way the lawn drains after top dressing got way better after doing that. So something you might consider too, you know, if you, um, I don't know how new your sod is, but I mean, if you maybe not, if not this season, next season, consider also top dressing your lawn, aerate it, top dress it, because that's gonna also, again, enhance or increase the ability of the soil to pull water away from the surface. You won't have like, you know, a lot of water settling um, on the lawn like you can when you have really heavy uh, clay soil. So hopefully that helps. Um, congrats on the pool, you got the pool and you got your grass in. So that's that's all good stuff, right? And the the um, you know the, the drainage stuff will get better um, over time. Just consider that, consider it at a minimum, do uh, an aeration. And then if you're really down, you can top dress it. That will help um, as well. All right, um, Azama Blue says, Ron, you know you got a following when cool season folks are listening in. I think Leroy needs to have a cool season KBG friend. I think so, man. I think um, I'm gonna do KBG for um, for the the rye muta plot, the plot that was rye grass. I think I'm gonna do Kentucky bluegrass in there. I think that's what's gonna happen, Mazama. I probably need to start, um, yeah, I need to get some in, in and uh, probably plant it here soon because Kentucky bluegrass takes a while to germinate. So I think you are right. It's time to get some cool season grass in my life in, in a small place, but yes. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Um, Michael Sully says, well, how do you feel about nematodes for control of moth worms? Um, can't really speak to that one, um, Michael. Uh, I know that I think for controlling nematodes, there's not a whole lot that you can use, at least to my knowledge, anyway, there's not a whole lot you can use for um, that on residential lawns. Like the the, um, the insecticides that will kill them are not, like most of them that are, from my understanding aren't even rated for residential use. And I just honestly don't know that much about, about nematodes to be able to, to answer your question. I'll look into it, and if I can get an answer for you for next week, I will. Um, but um, off the top of my head, I don't have an answer for you um, for that one, but I will take it under advisement. You guys are gonna make me do some work this past, this upcoming week, man. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. All right. Um, Data K says, best fast pH adjuster to increase pH. Okay, um, so lime will work. I can tell you also that, um, Miramichi Green did had some testing done by NC State by um, by their ag lab at NC State for um, Carbon Pro G, and with Carbon Pro G, it is it is a what's called a pH optimizer, meaning that if your pH is high, it tries to draw pH to the mid sixes. If your soil pH is low, it tries to draw pH to the mid sixes. So either way, whether it's low or high, it tries to 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 to, to bring pH to the mid sixes. So. In their study, which I don't have it here, I can I can find it. Um, if you go to like Site One's um, website on their white paper for Carbon Pro G, it's actually listed on the on the second page of it. In their tests, they saw a full point um, raise in pH level over the course of four weeks using i um, using Carbon Pro G. Now, will that use that be the same result you're going to get in your lawn? Hard to say, but it, it there is something to it as far as it being able to draw pH up into the mid sixes. Now, having said that, I would still apply lime to your lawn. I really would. Um, but if you're looking for something like something you can do in addition to lime that can help you raise pH, like the the charged biochar that, that Miramichi Green uses in Carbon Pro G and also in Essential G, which is on the Golf Course Lawn Store. I can show you that here. We did lower the price on that. So if you go to the Golf Course Store and look at Essential G, this has uh, the biochar in it that um, the same biochar that's in Carbon Pro G, you can use this as well. So this in addition to lime will help raise your soil pH as well. Um, if you've got a site one nearby, 
Um, you won't be paying shipping, so it'll be cheaper. So that's an option for you as well. But either one, um, Essential G or Carbon Pro G um, are good options. I've been using a lot of Essential G this year. I've been getting great results with it, but you can use either one. Um, and that, in addition to applying Lime, will help bring your pH up. So hopefully uh, that helps. All right, Thurston has a question about a Celeprin. He says, it's okay to apply a Celeprin when overseeding, correct? Yes, yeah, no problem at all. Um, yeah, Celeprin and overseeding, no, there's no issues there. Just apply it at the correct rate. Again, a Celeprin G, like there is, like on the label, it's gonna clearly say like what, like how many pounds per thousand you should be putting down. Um, like uh, I think in the video that I did, I forget what I said, I think I said like 1.8 pounds per thousand is about, is like the, the nice happy medium that's gonna give you good control for most insects that it controls. But if the math on that is too hard, just go two pounds per thousand. Because in most cases, the treatment is anywhere from like the low ones, like I'm talking about pounds per thousand, um, one a pounds of the product per thousand square feet, up to like 2.3 pounds per thousand at the high rate, I believe. So if you go to like, you know, two pounds, um, that's gonna, that's gonna cover most things. So uh, yeah, so get it, check the label um, and apply it accordingly. But you know, 1.8 to two pounds per thousand is a good good rate for a celeprin. And the video that I did on that earlier this year will cover all that in detail. Let me see, it's, gonna, it's on the Grub video. Here we go, I found it. Yay for search. So one thing Google does really well is search, man. Gotta hand it to them, right? All right, so Thurston, um, the video that I'm linking here in the chat right now, will take you to a video that I talked about. Um, it's about insecticides, and it's really all about a celeprin. It's all about a celeprin. So take a look at that. It'll give you all things as far as rates, all this kind of stuff. But yes, to answer your question, you can do it along with seeding. Um, let's see, and then Don Hawthorne says, lawn level over clay, um, clay and sod. Yes, you can do that. Go light though. So uh, it sounds like this is a recent thing. So I would do a quarter of an inch to half an inch, no more than that. Like you don't want to bury the lawn whenever you top dress. And because you got clay soiled, I would not go 100% sand. I would do a sand soil mix. So um, what I like, um, Dan, is a mixture of 70% um, masonry sand, some kind of a coarse sand mixed with 30% topsoil or compost. So if you call around locally and say, hey, anyone that, that offers top dressing mixes, tell them, hey, I want like a leveling mix. I want something that has a mixture of sand and organic material. And in most places will already have something that's already pre-mixed or they will mix it for you before delivering it. So, or you can just pay a service and they will come out and they'll, they'll top dress whatever you want. So that's an option as well. But yes, you can, you can do that. Um, just make sure I would go light, go light and don't do 100% sand. Make sure you have some kind of um, some kind of organic material in the top dressing mix as well. That would be my recommendation. Let us know how it goes though, man. All right, next up we got Bifor uh, De Hobbit. <laughs> it's just a cool name, Bifor De Hobbit. Says, um, at Ron Henry, uh, my lawn got wrecked from Hurricane Ida. At my age, I'm too old to start over my lawn. My dream is destroyed. Okay, so I mean, it got wrecked, but I, I, when you say wrecked, like the entire lawn got washed away, it's now down just to rock and just and bare dirt. Um, you know, I, it's it probably got seriously damaged. I could see that, but you know, Ida just went through. Give it time. Like grass is incredibly resilient. Here's the thing you have to look at with guy with grass guys, like. You know, grass actually doesn't need our help to grow. Not as much as, as much as we might think. Like grass grows all over the planet without us doing any fertilizer on it. And it seems to do all right. It's only when you wanna make it look super green and keep insects out of it and keep, you know, fungus out of it and all this kind of stuff um, is when we start adding all these products to it. So even though your, your lawn probably got beat up pretty badly by the storm, I imagine a lot of water did some, did some, some damage. Time will, will, it will recover with time. You know, I'm, I'm I, I can almost, I can't say I promise you, but I can i can almost guarantee that with time, the lawn is gonna look a lot better um, than it currently does. So don't give up on it. Um, it probably looks rough, but it, it will bounce back. It will it will recover. It will recover. Even if it means like, you know, next by next season, it'll recover. So, you know, don't don't sweat it. Do not do not give up and you don't have to start over. The lawn is gonna bounce back um, by fur. I wouldn't, wouldn't throw in the towel uh, just yet. All right, Mirianta says, I don't know what type of grass it is, but my lawn is very sunny. Um, hmm. Um, that, that, yeah, that, that doesn't really help. I mean, if you could take a picture of it and send it to me, I, I'll be able to tell you. So yeah, here, ron at golfcourselawn.com, take a picture of it and send it to me. I can, uh, I can help you there. Or if you just comment on one of my videos um, on YouTube, I will probably see the comment and I'll be able to help you with that, um, help you that way too. But I, need, I actually should see, need to see a picture of it to know what kind of grass you are dealing with. 
All right. Um, and then, uh, Dan, I already got you, man. I got you covered. You said, what, what mixture to use for lawn leveling over clay and compacted soil and sod? So again, I'm a fan of 70-30 mix. And if you're doing it the way I recommend, it's not going to be compacted when you level it because we're going to aerate prior to compaction. If you want to see the Ron Henry way of top dressing, the Ron Henry school of top dressing, which is a whole lot more work than a lot of people um, will do, but is helps you produce a really good result. Um, check out this video from earlier in the season. I found it. Let me see, at Dan, check out this one just for you. This one shows aerating and shows you shows aerating, um, you know, carbon um, um, uh, soil elements being applied, fertilization, top dressing shows the entire thing, even shows overseeding Bermuda, which you're really not supposed to do. And everyone tells me that all the time, but did it anyway. So just so you can watch, you can follow everything in there up to the seeding part because you're not really needing to do that because you've already got sod down. But if you want to see the process of like aerating and then like the sequence of events, take a look at that video. It will um, it will help you out. Pretty much all of day one is what you need to you need to primarily watch. Uh, great, great question. And again, congrats on the pool and the new lawn. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what other questions we've uh, we've got. You guys are are, are getting talked out, guys. Um, let's see, Tom V has a, has a question here. He says, hey, Ron, I got my turf plex today. It's been really dry here in Chicago over the past month. Should I be careful to continue spoon feeding every two weeks until there's more rain? I have been watering. No, not really. I mean, you should, you should um, if you're spoon feeding the way I, I suggest and at the rate. So again, the, the amount of nitrogen that I, that I recommend you put in your lawn is actually on the low side. It's, it's fairly low. The only thing I would say is you being in Chicago, you don't have Bermuda. So um, with my spoon feeding program, I'm putting in around 0.7 pounds of nitrogen per month. Um, that should be actually fine for like um, a Kentucky bluegrass or a ryegrass, but you can back it down a little bit if you want. Um, with the Turfplex, you are putting down 0.2 pounds of nitrogen. You're putting down very, very little. So as long as you're following the low rate, right, which is like the six ounce per thousand rate, you're not putting a lot of nitrogen in the lawns. So as long as you're following that and you're already irrigating, it sounds like, your lawn should be just fine. You should be able to put that down, you should get a good result, should be an issue. I would not go for at any rates higher than that because um, to your point, you're not getting any help from rainfall, but the low rate should be good to go. Should be just fine. All right, um, Truth Seeker says, I have Bahia grass and I know it's not the best. I don't say it's not the best. You got what you got, man. I wouldn't, don't, don't, hate on, don't, don't hate on your lawn. He says, but looking for a good all around weed killer that I can use in my Bahia grass without harming the grass run. That is a question that I've gotten like twice this week and I need to do research on that one because I've got, because I honestly don't know. I'm sure there is a good selective herbicide for Bahia grass. I know you can't use um, Celsius on Bahia, it specifically says not to do that. Um, but I will um, look up that one and get an answer for you. Uh, let's see, Bahia grass selective herbicide. I will, I will get an answer for you on that one, um, truth seeker. Um, but yeah, off the top of my head, I do not know. Cause it's not, cause it's not a common grass type. Like there's only, there's not that many people that actually have Bahia. So I don't know that one off the top of my head, but I will get you an answer. Um, and if you want, if you don't want to wait till next week, um, I, you may or may not have already emailed me. Because I think I have an email from someone asking me that question. If you haven't emailed me, email me here and I will um, answer you once I know. Um, but if not, just wait till next week and I, it'll be one of the talking points for next week as far as what kind of herbicide you can use on Bahia. Great question. Uh, Dada K says, what are your thoughts on the Toro Time Master? Well, that's a good mower. I've never used one myself, but I mean, I've not seen anything that Toro makes that has not been quality. Um, Toro makes a good mower. Honda makes a great mower. Either one of them will be, will be good. I think just, just look at your budget. Um, look at your, based on your budget, um, you know, buy, uh, buy the mower that, that, that fits for you. I mean, you can't, you're not going to go wrong with Toro or, um, any of the Honda mowers. Any of those are going to, are going to work pretty well. All righty then. Clambake says, you're the man. I appreciate it. Um, Clambake, thank you for the, uh, for the love and support. I really do um, appreciate that. All right, oh, and my, uh, my cat says, or no, is it my cat? Oh, my clat, my, my clat says, hey everyone, sorry joining us a bit late, just checking in from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, thanks for checking in, Owen. I do like San Antonio, man. Like the Riverwalk area is really cool. Lots of good eats along the Riverwalk. So I haven't, I haven't been there. I've been there over like probably 10 years at this point, more than that. 
But yeah, I, I, San, San Antonio is one of my favorite cities in Texas. So very cool. Thanks for coming to check in, Owen. All right. Uh, Data K says, how to improve soil boron and zinc? Thanks. I have the answer for that. So uh, there, there's a couple options. You got a granular option and you got a liquid option. Um, the granular option has also got fertilizer, like got NPK mixed in with it, right? So you got, but if you're looking for strictly um, a micronutrient to raise boron and zinc levels, what you're going to want is a product called Nutrizolve Data K. So we'll go here over to the golf course lawn store. And I will scroll down and I think Nutrizolve is right here. So if you scroll down, you see this guy here? Nutrizolve is strictly a micronutrient. So in this, you're gonna have, um, you have chelated iron, boron, copper, zinc, manganese, um, and iron. So it's got all of those, right? So it's this, as far as like, if all you're looking for is like a micronutrient fertilizer, you're trying to address your micronutrients, um, Nutrizolve is the is your go-to. It's a great, great product. I use it on my lawn as well to, for the same reason you're talking about to address boron and zinc levels because the lawn requires tiny amounts of that stuff. Um, and it's and a lot of the micronutrient products you find they'll have like the zinc, they'll have like zinc, iron, and manganese a lot of times, but they won't have the boron or copper in them. So this has all of them. Not that expensive, and you can get it on the golf course lawn store. It's in stock and shipping today. If you're looking for a granular option, let's say you need like a like you need you're just using like a starter fertilizer on your lawn. Another option is uh, this one, the starter fert from Mir from Mir Major Green from starter fert from Yard Mastery. It has um, it has uh, in addition to having NPK, it also has a complete micronutrient stack in it. So it's got a little bit of boron, a little bit of copper, a little bit of zinc in there as well. So it just depends on what you're after. As far as which one is going to be taken up faster, by far it's gonna be Nutrizolve, right? But the, the, the liquid product is gonna be a better option um, out of these two. Either one will work. Um, you're asking me, I would bias Mari more towards the Nutrizolve if you have a way to apply it. Otherwise, um, the starter for it is an option too. So thank you so much for that. Um, is, is, is there we go. All right, um, and they say I'm going to answer questions as I'm as I'm rolling down. So I got you, I got you covered there. Dot uh, um, and then LG says at Ron Henry, uh, LG has a, birth, a September birthday too. Next Friday, as a matter of <laughs> next Friday, as a, as a matter of fact. So you are the 10th, September 10th. Cool man. Sept that's why I like you, man. September babies, we got you know we got to unite, man. I'm more towards the closer towards the end of September, but um, yeah, we're. We're all in September, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me know, um, LG. We'll have to do something. We will have to do something. All right. Uh, Kevin Mann says, Ron, I live on the west coast of Canada and I have a huge grub issues. Uh, please help. Um, a celeprin, G. Put down a celeprin. Um, that is what I would recommend. So I've been talking about it tonight. Let me um, let me give you a link to that, um, Kevin. Reason why I like a celebrant is because it's gonna kill the grubs and it's gonna prevent them from coming back. There are like some um, products you can buy at like Home Depot or big box stores that will target um, grubs, but they don't have much residual effect, right? So I put down um, a celeprin in April and I haven't seen a grub or um, army, worm, army worms or anything like that, any of the nasties um, in my lawn. Now you live in Canada, can you get it? I don't know, but we can, we can, we can try it. So just, just try and see if you can order it. And I guess it'll, you know, I guess do my own. We'll let you know if they can ship it to you or not, or also check on Amazon. Amazon might, um, you can check there and see if they have it. But I mean, I just sent you a link there that will, um, take you to that product. That's an excellent, excellent product, um, for grubs. Hopefully you can get it in Canada. I'm not sure if you can though. Okay, uh, Jerry Patson says, what liquid fertilizer and weed, um, what liquid fertilizer and weed in one would you recommend for a backpack spray like a still SR430? Thanks for an awesome channel. So I don't have a recommendation for a fertilizer and weed control in one. I don't really recommend spraying the two of them um, together. I would, do, I would do them separately. So as far, I don't know what kind of grass you have either, but as far as a liquid fertilizer, the stuff that I recommend is this, um, Jeremy. It's Turfplex 22.3. It's a great fertilizer, not that expensive. Um, you get pretty fast results with it. Um, and, you know, it will go down just fine in your still 430, your SR430 backpack spray. You can get that um, on the Golf Course Lawn Store. So if you go here to the Golf Course Lawn Store, it is going to be, clicked on the wrong one. No, I did, right one. It's going to be right here, Turfplex. 
So there you go. So this has got this good liquid fur and it's got some micronutrient in it as well. Um, depending on what, the, the reason why I don't have an answer for you or I can't really give you an answer as far as what um, weed control to, to mix with it is it really depends. It's really not that simple, right? So depending on the weed you're trying to treat, you would use a different um, herbicide. You know what I mean? And then the thing is with, with weed control as well, really for a lot of those, a lot of liquid weed control products, they want you to apply or want you to mix um, uh, what's called a surfactant. It's, a, it's, a, it's like an oil or a product that helps the, the weed control or the, the, the herbicide adhere to the one, stick to the leaves and not dry out as quickly. So it maximizes uptake. And that's not necessarily something you need to be using with a liquid fertilizer. So really you wanna, in my opinion, you really need to separate the two. Um, and which, again, which fungicide, which fungicide, which herbicide you use is based on your grass type and also based on what type of weed you're trying to target. So it's not that simple. It's saying just mix these two together and go to town, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so liquid fert, um, turf plex, uh, for the herbicide, it depends on what weed you're trying to target. So if you put it in the chat later up further down I, and you let me know what kind of grass you have and what kind of weed you're trying to take care of, I might have an, an option for you, but um, I can't give you um, an, an answer without that. All right. Um, Gehan, um, man, I'm going to try this, but I'm going to I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm going to give it a shot. Ge, uh, Gehan um, Malawarachi, I think I think I got it close. Because I live in um, Toronto, Canada. Should I use pre-emergent this fall or next spring with my Kentucky bluegrass? Yes, you should use pre-emergent this fall and you should use it in the spring. So, so pre-emergent really needs to be applied twice a year um, for the best control, for the best weed control. So spring, like fall, uh, springtime, like um, March, March's time frame. I like February, but February, March is a good time frame. And then um, in the fall is when you want to apply pre-emergent as well. So the, twice a year is what you should be doing for the best, uh, the best possible uh, result. All right, Dada K is back. Um, he says, um, lots of bent grass showing up this fall. Does this preventable, is this preventable if I apply pre-emergent in the spring and other application in the fall? Um, I don't, that's a good question. I don't believe pre-emergent is gonna target bent grass, um, Dada K. I mean, there might be some pre-emergents that do, but I don't believe prodiamine um, does that. I don't, I don't believe it does. I can, let me take that one as a question as far as a pre-emergent that targets um, that targets bent grass. So you have Kentucky, you have, what kind of grass do you have? You have Kentucky bluegrass, what kind of grass? Um, I think you, you, you didn't tell me, did you tell me? Okay, link, listen in the chat what kind of grass you have and then I'll, um, I'll look for an answer on that one. I'm not sure if there's a, um, a pre-emergent that will suppress um, bent grass, um, but I'll, I'll put a note on it. Put a note on it for that one. Great, uh, great question. All right, uh, next up we have um, for, uh, Jerry Peterson says, for Wisconsin to add to my above comment. What did I say? Okay, yeah, so um, yeah, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're in Wisconsin, it wouldn't change the answer as far as fertilizer. Um, so I imagine you have a cool season grass. So um, a good combination that a lot, of, People, some people get mixed results with it, but um, tenacity works fairly well on most cool season grasses. What some people will do is they'll take tenacity and mix it with um, speed zone um, as, a, as, a, as a blend that works well to tar to tar do a better job targeting a lot of cool season weeds. Um, Princess Cut Lawn Care actually has a video on that. And I will find that for you here really quick. Um, uh, Jeremy, so look at take a look at this video. Um, uh, on on um, targeting to, on on cool season weed control, and uh, that that should get you in a much better spot. Looking for it really quick, really fast, and there we go. I got it. Boom. Um, copy link. So I it, you may have to you may have to back up to the beginning of the video because the link that I have like drops you like halfway in the video. But um, just look at this. This will be your option for um, weed control for cool season grass. I'm assuming this what you have because you're up in Wisconsin. All right, but read the label. As always, read the label before you spray anything on your lawn. All right, next up, we got a super chat from Andy Watley. Thank you so much, Andy, I appreciate it. Super chat received. He says, hey, Professor Ron, I'm, I'm arriving late to class. I just finished my first mow in eight days. Yikes, I do not, I can't imagine what the lawn looks like after that. He says, rain every day for a week, uh, fall lawn care night, Milo's lemonade, while price it, pressing that like button ever so gently. That is true, sir, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. 
You guys can time this. It's the top of the hour. It's time for some lemonade. So if you guys have not yet given me a like, I'd really appreciate it. It's a free thing for you guys to do to support the channel. And uh, I've already had some of my lemonade, so I can't really use that as an excuse, but I'd appreciate it if you give me a like anyway. All right, next up, we got E says, E, uh, hello, Ron. My second live stream, great series. You are very welcome, E. I can't say sir or ma'am, but um, uh, you're very, very welcome. You are not one to waste bandwidth. You're like, I don't want to you know, send too much over the wire. It's just E, that's my, that's my avatar. So that's my, that's my, my, uh, my handle. So, but yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, and these are always online. I, I leave them up. So if you want to go back and look at some of the older ones, you can. I got to see about getting someone on the live stream. Because, I mean, it's just been me. I'm sure you guys kind of get tired of me. So I, I got to get like a guest on. Maybe we can get BYD to come back. Maybe next week I can convince him to come back and come hang out with us, right? Maybe you guys might like that. He's always fun. All right. Uh, Leaf Cat says, happy birthday at LG. Very um, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, definitely. Her happy early birthday um, at LG. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jack Riff says, is perennial ryegrass toxic to common Bermuda? I've never heard of it being toxic, um, Jack. Um... It, it can have a negative effect if you have if you have perennial if, if you overseed common Bermuda with perennial ryegrass, um, and you don't get rid of it in the spring, it can slow down the Bermuda's ability to come out of dormancy and really begin doing well. But that's not something that's that's um, only limited to common Bermuda. Any any Bermuda that, that's going to be a thing. So not toxic, but it does compete with it for resources. So like uh, most people that do ryegrass they will they will seed with it like now they'll oversee the Bermuda lawns with um, ryegrass now so they can have their lawn looking green further into the winter and then they can also have it green earlier in the spring and then people that are doing it right will spray it out they'll, they'll use a selective herbicide that will target ryegrass to kill it um, around the late March early April time frame when the Bermuda is starting to come out of dormancy so that way the ryegrass is gone it's not competing with the Bermuda anymore and the Bermuda can take off and do its thing so Toxic? No. Is it? Does it compete with it um, when they are both actively growing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it will make the Bermuda look kind of kind of crappy if you don't get rid of it. So I wouldn't say toxic, but it is. It is like another grass. It's a. I'm not going to call it a weed, but it is another you know plant growing in the lawn that is consuming resources that the Bermuda has to to compete with. So um, there is that. All right. V um, is chiming in, says, hey, Ron, I like your videos. Um, you're a true lawn guru. I don't know about a lawn guru. I just, I, I just like messing with lawns quite a bit. But um, yeah, I know, I know a little bit about lawn care. We'll just, we'll leave it at that. He says, um, how do you fix a big patch, uh, big patches? We try liquid fertilizer, seeds, and solid fertilizer. Okay, so a couple ways to, 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 cover, to, to, to tackle this one, V. The first thing we got to figure out is why is the area bare? Right, like why is the area that you're trying to, to 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 fix? Why is it bare? So, if you have a warm season grass like Bermuda, and it's bare, um, there's a couple of things that can cause that. I mean, it can it can be a fungus problem? But most cases, it's um it's either like a traffic issue, meaning like people are parking cars on it, or there's tons of traffic in that area all the time, or uh, it's a shade problem. Um, if you have warm season grass like Bermuda, it, it really needs a lot of direct sunlight. And by direct sunlight, I mean like even light passing through trees really isn't good enough. It really needs to have like direct light getting on it. So um, if you have shade, um, that can be part of the issue. But let's, say, let's assume that that's not the case. Assume you have a big bare spot in the middle of your lawn. There's no trees around. It's getting plenty of sunlight. And there's also no like debris like plywood or big rocks or any other trash under the, in that area that's, that's causing the grass to not grow well. So let's say all those things are not a thing, right? Because all those things can cause you to have a bare spot. Um, the best way to, um, to fix a bare spot and also ensure that the grass that grows into that bare spot matches is to do plugs, to transplant plugs from other parts of your lawn. So what I, what I mean by that is there, there's a tool, I think like Pro Plugger makes one. There's a couple other companies that make them as well too. But you want to find like healthy spots to your lawn that are doing really well. And you, it's, you use this tool, that, um, it will, I don't know, it looks almost like a pogo stick, but like you, you step on it and it will extract like a cylinder, a plug of grass, um, of soil and grass. And then in this bare spot, you will um, remove a plug of grass, and a, a plug of the bare, the bare area, and then you'll insert that plug that has grass in it. And you'll do a few of those in this bare spot. And what that does is it, it allows the grass that's around the bare spot to grow into it, but it also puts grass inside the spot that's bare and allows them to grow out and spread to. I'm, I'm answering this assuming that you have Bermuda or some other creeping grass. If you don't have Bermuda, you have something like um, 
like a, like a perennial ryegrass, then seeding, like what you're doing is gonna be uh, the way to go. If, see, if the seeding hasn't, um, it hasn't germinated from the, if you're having problems with the seeds not establishing, then you, got, you might wanna check like your watering. Cause the hardest part about fixing bare spots in your lawn with seed is most people don't realize how much water, or just how much water, but how regularly you need, you need to water and how diligent you need to be about your watering to get decent germination. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, again, I would check that bare spot, make sure there's not that some like physical condition that's causing it to be bare in the first place. And if that's not the case, then like I was saying, you can show, you can try plugs, you can try seeding again, but make sure that you, you don't allow the seeds to dry out because that's an important part of getting seed to work well. Um, and yeah, I think that's what I've got for you. So hopefully, hopefully that helps um, and best of luck with it. Let me know if, if I can help with uh, with anything else. All right, Mickey K says, hey, at Ron Henry. Hey, Mickey K, I uh, appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. What's going on? And uh, yes, Andy Watley says, yes, slow down on the growing and mowing and take time for some college football. Yeah, yeah, it is about to be college football season. Um, yeah, the dogs are about to come out again and start playing and break our hearts, you know, but break our hearts. It's, hopefully we don't have to meet Alabama anytime soon. We'll see. If there's any Georgia fans, do not give me, don't give me a bunch of hate because you, but you guys know it. If we have to meet Alabama, it's never good, but. We still love him anyway. All right, um, um, Paradox says, hey Ron, love your videos, man. Keep up the good work. Watching from Ontario, Canada. I appreciate it, man. I will do my best. You guys keep showing up, I'll keep making them. So I appreciate you guys um, watching the content. Travis Winston is in the house. He says, good evening, Ron and Golf Force Lawn Squad. Late to the show, traveling while tuning in. Glad I got my mowing before I left. Thanks for continuing this live stream, Ron. Great info, have a great weekend. I appreciate it. Uh, Travis, have a great time and have the time off. Um, Mickey K says the grass hole, grass trolls would exercise their right to fall into a fire. Eh, yeah, man. I mean, they're just, they're just, they're just a, little bit, a little bit misguided, man. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's just, it's just a sign of some, some measure of success, right? I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, they just, they don't, you know, I, I don't, I really don't care. It doesn't, it really doesn't bother me. It just means I'm probably doing something right, man. You, if you don't have haters, then you're, you're not relevant, right? So there's, that's, that's one way to look at it. All right, um, Paradox has a question. He says, um, how many pounds of nitrogen does a cool season lawn take versus warm season? Great question. It's different for every grass type. So Bermuda um, takes four to five pounds over the year. You can get about with a little bit less than that, but four to five pounds is what Bermuda needs. Pretty much all cool season grasses are gonna take less than that. It's gonna be less than what Bermuda takes. Bermuda is pretty nitrogen hungry. Um, most cool season grasses are gonna be in the two to three pound um, range per year. And when I say per year, that means like when the grass is actively growing during the growing season. But just look up your grass type um, paradox. And without knowing your grass type, um, I can't say for sure, but, just, but if you just Google like, you know, my grass type, technically blue grass, how many pounds of nitrogen is, does, you know, insert your grass type need per year, it'll tell you, um, and you should be good to go. But it's gonna be less than Bermuda, which, you know, takes a lot of nitrogen to be, to do, uh, to do well, to do well. Uh, lawn masters like LOL at Mickey K, yeah. You guys are having a good time, man. You guys gotta behave. You guys like, like cutting up too much. All right, um, Dada K says, when to apply second pre-emergent? Does it prevent bent grass? Okay, so Dada, I've gotta look, up, I've gotta look into that uh, as far as, I've got the, that written down as far as if there's a pre-emergent that, that prevents bent grass. I'm not aware of any, but I've, I've actually never looked to see um, if there's any pre-emergents that, that are actually labeled to prevent bent grass. So I have to look in that one. I don't know the answer to that one off the top of my head. Um, the second pre-emergent is um, fall time, so, with, by second, I think you mean like, you know, applying in the spring and applying in the fall. It, the, so you want to do it once in the spring, Mar um, you know, late February, March-ish is the time frame, and then the second one in the fall. So uh, if, coming up here in the next month, next four to six weeks is when you're in the window of getting down a, uh, a fall pre-emergent. So hopefully that helps. I'm going to do some research on um, pre-emergent and bent grass. I've never heard of that, but it might be a thing. I can, I, I learn something new every day, so I'll, I'll definitely do some research and I, I will... Uh, I will let you know. Um, Jay Bonner says, why would deers come in my lawn and eat the Bermuda? I guess it's tasty. I don't have deer, um, I don't have any deer that comes into my lawn, but I guess they just, they like the way it tastes. I don't I don't know. I mean, there's, there's, there's repellents you can use for deer, um, um, you know, obviously other than a shotgun. Um, but um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they're um, why they're eating your Bermuda. I guess it's because it's something they just they just feed on. But there are repellents you can use to kind of keep deer away. So you can look into that um, as well, Jay Bonner. 
All right, um, Todd from Sand Hills from the Sand Hills says, hey Ron, loving the content. Double cross cut mowing this morning. Tiff tough, nice man, you get that double cut in. Serious, you're serious, you're hardcore, I like it. I like the level of commitment. All right, um, chat, uh, Jay Pompano says, chatting with about fungi with my knowledgeable site. One guy, he said, my microbes, organic matter, eats, controls, fun, uh, fungi. I definitely noticed way less fungus problems this year. Throwing some G, um, some Compro G and L, any truth? Um, does microbial activity eat fungus? Um, I mean, microbial activity, the microbes, they eat pretty much all, pretty much all organic matter. So I, I would say, yeah. Um, but I mean, to say that you're, that you're putting down um, Carbon Pro L or Carbon Pro G has um, stopped or has reduced the amount of fungus you get in your lawn, um, I can't say that for sure. I can't say for sure on that one, Jay. I can't say for sure. I mean, it sounds, I mean, here's the thing, the healthier your lawn is, right? The healthier your lawn is and the more balanced you are with like your fertilization apps and also like not putting too much water on the lawn. Um, all of those things help with reducing the likelihood of fungus being able to take root and damaging the lawn. Um, using, I mean, incorporating Carbon Pro L and Carbon Pro G, like granular carbon, is only going to help things. It's only going to help improve the quality um, of the soil, which in turn is going to improve the quality of your grass. Um, but to say that putting down like Carbon Pro G is going to prevent lawn fungus, I can't, I can't definitively say that that to that connection um, exists. Might be, might be, but I, I, um, I, I've never, I've never, I, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I'd be so quick to say that one. But I'm glad you didn't deal with any fungus this year. That's, that's pretty awesome. All right, next up, we got Kelby Ruiz in the house. He says, hey, my lawn is super dry and hasn't had much bounce back from watering two days a week. Um, when, where, is this, where the sprinkler heads are is less green, but still have lots of dry spots. Water more heavily? Uh, yeah, so it could, what you might want to look into, Kelby, is your coverage. So um, if you've not done like a water test to see actually, or not water test, but like a, to check your irrigation system to see how much water it's putting down, like get like a shallow dish or like some tuna cans and put those out, you know, 15, 20 feet away from the from the from a sprinkler head and run it. And then just look and see how long it takes for that for that tuna can to fill up. Um, you know, it, the thing is you're gonna find is the further away, the further away you you get from the sprinkler head, in mo in most cases, the less water is getting on the lawn, right? Kind of makes sense. And the closer you are to the sprinkler head, it's getting more water. So it sounds like um, it sounds like one or two things. Either you're not, you don't have enough overlap, meaning like the way your sprinkler heads are set up, you, they're not overlapping properly enough to, to make sure that the lawn is getting enough water or getting good coverage, or um, you're not watering enough. You're not running it for long enough. So the answer to the second question will be answered by using like a shallow dish or some tuna cans and seeing how, how much water you're actually putting out in an irrigation cycle. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, um, Austin uh, Singleton says, I lost my tab for the backpack sprayer. If you could drop that, I would be grateful. Yeah, so the backpack sprayer, so there's a couple of different ones. You got um, a really, here's the thing, guys. If you, I haven't done my video on it yet. I'm planning to do it. Um, I got it here. I, don't, I can't go get it in the live stream, but the the, yard, the new spray that Yard Mastery is putting out, tell you what, man, that's, that's, that would be, that's the, um, you know, that could be the new contender. That could be the new uh, contender for top dog. Main reason why is that it has a lot of the benefits of the flow zone, but you don't have to go out and then spend another, you know, $30 in buying um, different spray tips. So that is kind of a cool, that's kind of a cool, um, a cool thing. So um, if you want to see what I'm talking about, and it's also a little cheaper than the flow zone too. And unlike the flow zone, you can actually get it. <laughs> so they're actually, they're actually in stock. Uh, like flow zones are sold out everywhere. Um, but yeah, uh, Austin Singleton, here you go. Let me send that to you at Austin, Austin Singleton. Uh, this is the one that I'm talking about. The nice thing about that one, it's it's got the dual pressure switch, which actually I like. I don't like the I don't like the potentiometer backpack sprayers. I like like either high or low, which this one has, and it also comes with an assortment of spray tips from from T Jet. So um, you know, if you want to apply pre emergent, you want to do um, foliar applications, you're good to go, and it all comes with it, which is kind of cool, and it's cheaper than some of the other options out there. So if you're gonna if you're gonna buy one now, um, if, in other words, if I were starting over today and I were buying a backpack sprayer, the Yard Mastery one is, is more than likely the one that I would buy because it's just complete. You've got everything with it, right? It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like a flow zone done right, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps. And of course, I'm gonna be doing a review on it, but, if you, but you guys already know what I think. It's a, it's a good product. All right, 
Um, next up we got here, Jay, Jamie has says, is pre-emergent okay to use in flower beds? I've never heard of anyone mention that idea. I, I did that earlier this year. It works okay. You can you can spray prodiamine in um, in flower beds. If you have mulch in there, the thing is a lot of it has trouble getting down into the soil. Probably a better option is a, um, it's a granular, I can see the bag. It's yellow, a uh, preen, I think it's called preen, P-R-R-P-R-E-E-N. It's like a yellow bag. You should like, your, a lot of your big box stores should have it. That is a is probably a better option for a pre-emergent that will work better in like flower beds or mulch beds. You can use prodiamine, you can. Like, so if you have a, if you have a flower bed that has no mulch in it, um, then yeah, you can go with pre-emergent, no problem. But if you've got like mulch, then something like preen, that's like a granular is gonna do um, a bit better. And I don't have a link for that, but just you go to your big box store and just look for preen or just go online and search for preen. It's, again, it's P-R-E-E-N um, and that should do the trick for you. All right, um, Patrick says, how often should I apply a product to fight high pH? Currently it's 7.9. So here's the thing, Patrick, adjusting soil pH is gonna be, um, especially, you know, you're almost in almost at eight and high, high sevens, it's gonna be a process over time. Like if you wanna see some awesome, awesome options for adjusting soil pH done by people that have forgotten more about soil pH than I will ever learn, check out like the content here from my, from my soil, the guys at Soil Lab. Um, like they actually have a series on pH. Like they did a video here on how to change your pH with calcitic lime versus dolomitic lime. That's not your bag. Like your thing is how do I get how do I um, lower it? But pretty much in their video, they show using an elemental sulfate and they show using um, citric acid as an option for lowering pH. So I'm gonna send you this video here. This is the first in their series. Um, and they did some follow-up as well to show you how it can trend down over time. The big thing, the big point I want to kind of get across is that it's just, it's gonna take a while. It's not, it's not a, it's not one of these things where um, you know, you apply a product and like, a, you know, two weeks later, a month later, you know, the pH drops rapidly. The thing is, you know what it's at now. Um, you know what it's at and you know you need to regularly apply products to try and bring it down. But here's the thing that's also important about that, right? As pH goes up, so like you know, where you are like at 7.9, the ability for particularly like the micronutrients to be absorbed um, like from the root system, from the soil itself, um, gets hampered. You know, they get they get locked up. In other words, the, the, you'll have like iron and zinc and manganese in the soil, but they're not readily available for uptake by the grass when your pH gets higher. So for you, something like um, using like Nutrizolve, like a like like using like a foliar um, product to to get your micronutrients into your into your grass is going to be a good option because now you're not you're obviously you're bypassing the soil, but you're using you're just applying it directly to the plant leaf. It's being absorbed that way. Um, now, granted, you're not really building up your pH. You're not building up the, the micronutrient levels in the soil by doing this, but you're still feeding. You're still feeding the grass. It's a way to get those micronutrients in the soil that otherwise are going to be harder um, to get um, to, to make available to be made available given how high your pH is. So I, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. Um, I won't be too down on yourself. Don't be too irritated about it because you just do a lot of foliar apps for like your micronutrient, right? And then check a look at that video that I just linked um, by Soil Lab. Um, definitely watch it, check that video out, subscribe to their channel. Um, they do, they're doing a lot of really good research on it and like they're, they're doing like month to month testing um, to, show, to show how the soil pH changes over time with different types of soil um, and different types of products. So it's really, really, really good stuff. So I think, I think you'll, you'll get a kick out of that. I think you'll like that. All right, um, next up we got Dalvin Larry. He says, hey Ron, I applied Humic Max this week. Good job, good job, sir, I'd like to hear that. Um, expecting to get hurricane rain, but I didn't get a drop of water. I did get 90 degree weather, which browned my grass even more because I wasn't home to water. Uh, just put some water on it. Whenever you get home, or, well, now that you're home, I guess, just water it and you're good to go. So yeah, no um, no worries, no harm, no foul. Um, no problem there at all. Just water it Water it now that you've, uh, that you've got it. Um, and then you should be in, a, in good shape. All right, um, Data K has a question. Duration to apply pre-emergent every two months apart. Does pre-emergent prevent bent grass? Okay, um, so no, you don't need to be applying a pre-emergent every two months. You really ideally need to be applying it twice per year, spring and fall. In the spring, in the spring, if you want to really um, be hardcore, like some guys, some people like to do like a split application in the spring. So they'll do like a lighter app like earlier in the spring. And then like in April, they'll do like a second application of pre-emergent. You can do that. Like there has been some research that shows that that's, that does a better job controlling weeds. 
I've never done that. I just normally just do one heavy app and that's it. Like on Alex's lawn, we did one application full rate in the springtime, like in, actually in like early February, like it was, it was super early. He doesn't have any weeds in his lawn. Works, you know, worked great all season. Um, so no, you don't need to be, don't apply pre-emergent every two months. You apply it in the spring, in the fall. And if you do a good job applying it, you are good to go. All righty. Um, Nicholas Knight Sr. says copper sulfate. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe that's, is that the question for, for the, maybe the algae question? Um, Nicholas, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, thanks for chiming in. And then Wayne says, thanks for sharing your knowledge. You're very, very, very welcome, Wayne. I appreciate you being here um, to watch. Um, great stuff. And then um, let's see what else we've got here. Michael Sully has a, has a, is chiming in and saying, hey, Yolanda, zinc strip. A zinc strip along the peak of your roof will get rid of algae and moss on your roof. Cool. See, I learned something new. So there you go. You can put a strip of zinc along the along your roof, huh? So I guess um, you have to find out how you go about doing that. I guess you have someone do it. But that's, that's a cool tip, Michael. Thanks for uh, for sharing that. All right. Um, Demir says, Ron, I've seen some of your videos. You use Brandt Supreme Green. Not sure if you still use them. I use Brandt, mm, I don't know what that is, Mega Megalex on my greens bi-weekly and my lawn at home is a great product if you can find it. And the last part of what you said is why you don't see Brand Supreme Green on the channel anymore. Like the place that used to carry it, they don't carry it anymore. And like getting it online um, is really difficult. Like I actually reached out to, um, I reached out to Brent and I asked him, I said, hey, listen, is it possible to make this available? And I didn't get a response. They're like saying, hey, I guess they have enough business with like the professional turf industry. They don't want to be bothered with this. And then my local place that was carrying it doesn't carry it anymore. So I looked for a new option, found Ecologel, uh, tried out their products. I mean, love their, uh, love the Turfplex. It's a great, great product. Um, and so I switched to that. So that's it. I mean, the big thing is I want to use stuff that's also um, available for you guys to get your hands on. But I mean, I, I get what you're saying, Demir. With you being um, in professional turf, I'm sure you can get brand, you can get anything you want, right? Um, but um, I'll have to look at that. Brand Mega, Mega Alex. I'll have to look into that. Um, and just see if I can just learn more about it and what is what like what's what's the awesome sauce about it. Um, but I'm probably not going to be able to find it locally. Uh, but yeah. All right. Um, next up, we got Wayne Green. Says I got the notification late. I'm late to the party. You got the notification though. It's better than nothing, man. I appreciate you still coming to hang out. I appreciate you coming to hang out. All right. So we got uh, Ribido up next. He says, Ron, help. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Uh, you know, that always takes me back when I was raiding, raiding, like doing a lot of World of Warcraft. I was like a hardcore gamer. Um, you know, when we wipe on a boss, someone does something stupid, we like mistakes were made, guys. I says, I says, okay, mistakes were made. We don't need to get, we don't need to get into it. We don't need to get into it. You can't say that and not give us details. He says, my tip tough got scalped down real low about two weeks ago looking dead. Will it recover in Central Florida tips? Yes, it will recover. It will recover. Um, no problem. Yes. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, not you, I'm not saying you did it, but someone probably went in your garage when you weren't there and like set the height of cut super low on your mower or something. And you know, you made like a bunch of passes and before you realize it, you scalped the lawn. It's probably what happened is what I'm thinking, um, Rubido. But yes, to answer your question, it will bounce back. Bermuda is incredibly hard to kill even when you want to kill it. So, um, so yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna come back. Um, no worries. All right, so we've got a good question here from Patrick Cassell. He says, what's the difference between Miramichi Green and a Celeprint? I missed that. Okay, so um, uh, thanks, KS. I think, uh, thanks, Ron. Um, so two different things all together. So um, a Celeprin G um, is an insecticide. It's an insecticide that Syngenta makes, targets grub worm. I say grub worms, not grub worms. It targets grubs, um, annual bluegrass weevils, bill bugs, um, sod web worms, pretty much any kind of turf caterpillar, it will kill it. That's, that's, what, that's what it goes after. Um, so that's, that's the, that's that thing one, that's a celebrant. So it's an insecticide made by Syngenta. Miramichi Green, um, makes, um, the big thing with them is, is sustainable ways of improving soil health and by, uh, byproducts that is improving, um, the quality of your turf. So to kind of get into that, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go to the golf course lawn store, so the products that I talk about from Miramichi Green, I've used a lot of their different products. But we've got um, from a from like a from a making your grass better standpoint, you have the golf course lawn carbon kit, which consists of three different things, right? You've got NutriKelp, Release Zero, and Biospectrum. Release Zero is ten percent micronized carbon. So what does that mean? What it what it means is it aids with nutrient uptake in um, with anything you apply to your lawn. Um, if you're using like a liquid fertilizer, so let's say you're mixing it with like 
So you're mixing a fungicide with it or an insecticide with it, or like how I do it, you mix a fertilizer with it. It helps aid with nutrient uptake. So in other words, you're gonna get more out of whatever you apply to your, to your lawn that is up that is taken up foliar, that's taken up by the grass leaf. Nutric help has a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of phosphorus, a little bit of potassium in it. I'm like, you know, one, one, four, very little of that. So it's a, so it's a very mild fertilizer, but it also contains 24% um, kelp extract, sea kelp. So that's like, you can think of like kelp as like a vitamin pack for your, for your, um, for your soil. And by definition, also your grass. It, again, same kind of things, helps with nutrient uptake, helps, um, helps uh, with, bi with microbial activity. It's just, it's just an overall beneficial additive to your soil. Um, and and nutri kelp also contains 2% micronized carbon. So between the release zero and nutri kelp, you're putting down 12% micronized carbon. You're putting down 24% um, um, kelp extract. So again, just stuff to help feed the feed the soil and feed the plant. And the final um, product from Miramichi Green that I that I use um, that again is targeted towards improving soil quality is Biospectrum. So Biospectrum is a microbial package um, that it's, it's microbial food and beneficial microbial bacteria that, that you're able to introduce into the soil. So why is that important? Why should you care about adding bacteria, bacteria to your soil or, or microbial activity in your soil? Well, if you think about it, whenever you apply fertilizer, right? The, when fertilizer gets down into your soil, the reason why we water fertilizer in, or like granular fertilizer anyway, the reason why we put down granular fertilizer and water it in and get down to the soil is so that the microbes, the microbial activity, um, the mycorrhiza and, and other types of bacteria can eat it and when they eat it and poop it out, they, they, they transform it, they make it, they turn it into a form of nitrogen that is available to the plant for uptake. So by having healthy, like, ha uh, like a healthy soil ecology, making sure that there's good microbial activity in your soil, um, like your fertilizers are gonna work better. Anything you put in the soil is just, is just gonna work better because like the microbes that are in the soil which help break down organic material or break down fertilizer and turn them into a form that's available for the grass for uptake, like they need to be there for that to happen. So um, part of what you're doing with the carbon kit with the biospectrum is you're, you're introducing that. Um, the other product from Miramichi Green that you hear me talking about as well is their all-natural pest control. So if you have army worms, which a lot of people are getting destroyed with this year, and you're looking for a non-toxic product um, that you can't, it's a non-toxic all-natural product that um, is gonna that kills roaches, kills um, army worms, mosquitoes, um, um, aphids, um, a bunch of other stuff. Let's look at the label, but tons of kills tons of different stuff. Um, and there's and, it, and the big thing about it is that the insects cannot form a resistance to it. And also equally important is that you're not gonna, you don't have to worry about putting this stuff down and then have worrying about like pets going in the lawn or you going in the lawn or kids going in the lawn because it's a non-toxic product. So the big thing with Miramichi Green is all their products um, take a sustainable approach from the standpoint that um, they try, they, they, are, they are very, very effective products, but they also are designed such that they don't harm the environment in the process. Like none of their products require that you water them in to work. Because think about it, if you gotta put down a product and then you gotta go run irrigation, that's like another step, another thing you're doing that, um, you know, that if you can remove that and still get a great result, all, the, all that much more, all that much more better, right? So hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, a celebrant insecticide, Miramichi Green, a company that makes a set of products um, that are that are sustainable and that like serve different purposes. Um, in my case, it's gonna be about improving soil quality to get better looking grass, and also in, um, for killing insects in a way that is um, as safe as you can make it for you know your pets, family, that kind of thing. So hopefully that helps. All right, um, next up, let's see. Um, I've already answered your question, Dada K. I think I've already got you. You've asked like a, a, a million times. You're very, very welcome on that. And then um, Wayne Green says, thanks to the person that asked the Atlanta pre-emergent question, the info provided and the answer helped me. There you go, sounds good. Um, um, 732 located says, concrete cu concrete with a mower or did I misunderstand? Okay, so here's the thing. You're making me relive a, something that's very painful, um, 732 located, you just, you just are. But um, since, since you asked, I'm going to uh, show you what happened. I've got two videos and I'll put them both in the, in the chat here for you to watch. Um, one of them is going to be whenever uh, Ron does it wrong, whenever you don't pay attention when you're real mowing and you hit concrete, you try and mow concrete with a real mower, what happens? And then, then the follow-up video, the recovery, when I get my baby back. So I'm gonna show you both of those. You'll get a good laugh out of it, um, if anything, at my expense. But I can just tell you that um, I've done the research, 
real mowers and concrete do not mix. So this is my, my oopsie. That's the video showing that. And then um, this is the follow-up video showing you what you showing you how much it actually costs to fix a greens master whenever you break the when you damage a reel, destroy the bed knife, you have to put bearings in it, all this fun jazz. You can see um, the recovery. Um, I can't type recovery. There you go, Ron. And then that's the video for that. So if you want a good laugh, take a look at that. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, long short is, is don't mow concrete with your mower. Bad things will happen. All right. Uh, next up, we got here Randy Verlade says, Hey, Ron, I've been spoon feeding my very thick celebration Bermuda with gross regulator. My question is, I also did a heavy verticut on it. Will the grass come back since I also applied PGR? Yes. Yep, it will. It will. It might, it might take a little longer, but it'll, it'll bounce back. No worries there. Um, I mean, Bermuda, I mean, PGR just slows down Bermuda. It still grows. I mean, it's still, it still very much grows, but it just, it just slows it down. All right, next up, we got um, a question from another PGR question here from Owen McClatt, Mike Clatt. Um, he says, Clayton prompted me to ask a PGR question. Is there a granular PGR that you can recommend? The ones I've come across have been in liquid form. Um, yes. I mean, not one I can, here's the thing. There's one I can tell you about, but I can't necessarily like endorse it or recommend it because I've never actually used it. But there is one called um, Governor, I think. It's called Governor G. Um, I think the Andersons makes it. I think. I think that's who makes it. Let me see here. Governor. Um, Governor. Governor G. Um, yeah, it's um, it is a it is a granular pre-emergent that contains the same active ingredient that's in uh, the liquids. I'm trying to find it here really quick for you. Um, Governor. Um, pre-emergent. Uh, on PGR. Let's see. Let's see if I can see if I can I can find it for you. But yeah, it's called Governor. Yeah, here we go. This is it right here. Boom. Found it. Yay! It is the Andersons. All right. So um, here is a link to it, um, Owen. So if you don't want to do, you want to go through the trouble of mixing it um, at Owen Metclat. Um, that is um, the PGR, the, the granular PGR. Again, I've never personally used it, so I can't tell you how good or good or bad it does work. Anderson tends to make pretty good products, so I can't say, you know, I'm, I, I'm inclined to say it's probably gonna work just fine, but I've never actually used it personally. So I gotta put that disclaimer out there, um, just, just so you know. All righty. Okay, Frank Garner's in the house, says, what's up, bro? What's up, Frank? Thanks for coming to hang out. And then Donna K says, hi, Ron, good stuff. Thanks for sharing your expertise. Donna K, you have the record, man. I have never, I mean, as far as someone that's been super, super persistent to get their answer, their questions answered, you take the cake. But you're very welcome. Um, I will look into uh, bent grass and pre-emergent for you. Uh, I'll, I'll see what, what I can find out, man. But uh, I appreciate your tenacity in getting your question answered. All right, David West has a question that says, hey Ron, happy Friday. What would be your go-to for killing armyworms? Certain areas of our backyard would hit really hard. Also, will Bermuda recover? Um, thanks for your help, sir. Yeah, so for armyworms, I would do, for a granular, I would use a Celeprin. A Celeprin G, great, great product, um, easy to apply. Um, um, that is what I would use. And it, it, it provides control after the fact. There are um, products you can buy at like one of the big box stores that will work too. But um, as far as like a residual effect to, to keep killing them and keep them away out, keep them out of your lawn, um, less so. So a Celeprin, not inexpensive, but like I put it to you this way. I applied a Celeprin G to my lawn in April and Alex's lawn. We have had no issues with um, any turf caterpillar issues. So no, um, no grubs no army worms and none of that stuff. And other arm lawns around here are getting damaged by it. We've been very, very, um, we've been clean, no problems at all. So if you want um, a granular option, there is that. If you want a liquid option, if you want something you can spray, then the same thing, the pest control, the Miramichi Green Pest Control um, will also kill army worms as well too. I have a video, David, coming out on Sunday morning that is gonna talk about this topic. It's gonna be a really short video, it's like three minutes. Um, but the long short of it is because you're on the live stream, you get to find out ahead of time. It's going to be a Celeprin um, for a granular, and it's going to be the Miramichi Green Pest Control for the liquid. If you're really trying to be a boss, you do both of them because the two of them work well together. The, the, the pest control is going to work a little bit faster, and then a Celeprin is going to also kill army worms and give you that residual effect. So if, it's, so if you can afford it, do both. Do, do put both of them down, and then you're not going to have a problem with... Um, with army worms or grubs or bill bugs or, or bluegrass weevils, pretty much all the pests, the nasties that mess up your lawn, not gonna be a problem. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that helps. So if you wanna watch my video on Sunday morning, I'd really appreciate it. But um, but that's the long short of, that's what I'm gonna be telling you to do. So uh, hopefully, 
Hopefully that uh, helps. All, all right. Um, next up here we have um, um, Patrick Kizel says, can I use Miramichi or a Celeprin um, for army worms? You can use the pest control for, you can use both of them. Yes, the answer is both. You can use one or the other, or you can use both. If you're looking for, kind of like I just answered the question, if you're looking for um, more uh, longer control, then the Acelloprin is a much better option. Like it's gonna, it's gonna last for months. Like it's literally season long control. If you're looking for season long control and you wanna kill, like actively kill the ones, like you just wanna knock them out faster because Acelloprin will kill active um, uh, army worms too. But if you're looking for like the fastest way to get rid of them, to kill the active ones and also get residual control, do both. Do the Miramichi Green Pest Control and then also apply a Acelloprin. You can, you can apply both products. There's no issue at all with doing that. Um, and that's what I'm going to be telling, again, just not to repeat myself, but that's what I'm going to be telling you guys Sunday morning. Uh, great, great question. So yeah, if you get those ordered, get them, on your, get them down on your lawn and you'll be good to go, Patrick. All right, um, Donna K, another question says, best way to loosen up hard clay soil? My opinion, um, hollow tine aeration. You can use some of the liquid products, the liquid aeration products. They, they do help some, but as far as like actually breaking up compaction and loosening up um, compacted soil, hard clay soil, water it and then the next day um break out the aerator and that's for me that's the best result that's gonna give you the best the best results so hopefully uh that helps all right next up we got zach hall says ron what's up my man you're very very uh not too much man i'm just uh, I'm, I'm good i'm hanging in there you know life is uh life is good cannot complain just hanging out on a friday night with you guys right talking about lawn care stuff all right um dada k says uh, what algorithm do you use to pick the questions? You've not selected not even one of mine, but great stuff. Thank you. Actually, I have selected yours, um, Dada. The way it works is it goes top down. It goes from top to bottom. So um, I don't, it's not like I, you know, un unless it's like one of the trolls in the comment section like them, I'll just ignore. Um, but no, I'm, I don't, I literally answer the questions in the order they come in. So if, you, if you're in the chat and you just scroll up, you'll see I'm literally just walking down the comments and I have to kind of weed through people that are just talking to themselves, or talking to each other, and then actually something that's a question for me. So I literally go from top to bottom. The only the only difference to that is if someone sends me a super chat, I'll run down and try and grab that, um, and then go back to my spot where I was and just kind of work down the list. So the earlier you are in the live stream, the sooner you get your question answered. So I just I just work down in the order they come in. So it's not like I'm like um, you know I'm like picking um, certain people and like ignoring other people, unless you're a troll, in which case I'm ignoring you if you're wondering. That's definitely a thing. All right, uh, next up, um, Zach Hall says, hey Ron, my yard looks like uh, crap, a lot of scalping and out of regulation. When do you stop putting down PGR? Um, so this month would be the last month for it. September is um, the last month that I would do PGR on the lawn. Um, yeah, because the growth is gonna slow down enough that you really shouldn't need it. You really shouldn't need it, Zach. So yeah, if you wanna put down, if you wanna do one more app this, this, uh, this month, that will carry you throughout the rest of the season and then you should be good to go. So hopefully um, hopefully that that question. Um, <laughs> Michael Selly says, I dedicate after he answers mine, your question is behind mine. Just like that, see, that's the thing. I don't, other than the super chats, I want to skip ahead, man, because I've done it before. Like I've skipped someone's question, or I don't acknowledge them. And you guys can be ruthless, man. You guys are, are, are nice, we're all funny in games, like so I, so I skip someone's question. Right, so uh, so yeah, I take them in the order they come in, mainly because it's the only way I can really keep track, and it's just fair. It's fair to the people that came in; they were here earlier. They asked the question first, so I answered their question first. So that will help. All right. Um, next up, we got Le legendary um, Hanzo. Hanzo, man, I remember who was Hanzo. Hanzo was a was a character in Samurai in Samurai Showdown. He's like a ninja in Samurai Showdown. Like uh, takes me way back when I had um, Neo Geo. Um. Okay, so the question is, what are your steps, um, when to know when to apply, when to apply pre-emergent in the fall? When soil temps begin to go down, um, um, legendary Hanzo, so um, when the temps get into the 50s is what a lot of people will say, but really for me, once we get into like um, late September, early October, that's pre-emergent time. That's the time to, to get it down. The rules for pre-emergent really are a little bit early is better than a little bit late because but after it's germ after the weed is germinated, pre-emergent's ability to really do much with it is not is not really a thing. It's not gonna if once weed's germinated, it's growing. You can't really kill it with pre-emergent. 
save um, like di diphyopera, like for certain types of weeds. So a little bit earlier is better than a little bit late. Um, and again, um, for in the springtime, March, like late February, early March is when I like to do it. And then in the fall, about four weeks from now is when it would happen. But the window's opening now. You know, if we get like a cool snap where, you know, temperatures in your area begin falling and they're gonna stay consistently low, then yeah, then put some pre-emergent down and you should be good to go. Like I said, a little bit earlier is better than a little bit late. So uh, hopefully that helps. All right, Calvin says, yo, Ron, what's up, Lawn Squad? Uh, Ron, thanks for the advice and how to treat a high nitrogen in my lawn. It's slowly coming back or okay to put down the, my carbon kit. Calvin, hashtag Marietta. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I remember your question now, our correspondent is Calvin. Yeah, you're fine to put down the carbon kit. Literally, you think about it, the only thing in the carbon kit that has any NPK in it is NutriKelp. And it's like 1% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, a little, and like 4% uh, like potassium. So not like trace amounts, we could say, right? Um, so yeah, you're good to put that down. It's not gonna add any measurable amount of macronutrient to your lawn. So you're good to go. Yeah, no, no worries with that at all. All right, great question here. So BCP, um, BCB Properties Pros says, hey Ron, in a perfect world, how often should I do a soil test? Um, so in a perfect world, you would do one at least twice a year. Here's, here's my take on that. Here's why I, like to, why I say that. Um, a lot of people do soil tests in the springtime, right? So um, you do a soil test in the spring. It says, hey, this is all stuff that's wrong with your soil or things that can be improved in your soil is a better way of saying it. And it gives you pretty much a treatment plan for the growing season, right? So you apply those, those products to your lawn, you apply fertilizers in the correct ratios to try and bring the soil levels to where they should be just to, to get the best out of, your, out of your fertilizer and to have nice green grass that we love. Um, but then how do you know? How do you know how effective your fertilization strategy over the season was? So that's why, like for me, at least twice a year, um, I like to do a soil test in the spring. And then, so now with us being, um, me having warm season grass, we're getting to the point where we're about to stop fertilizing the lawn. Uh, so like later this month, we'll, I'll do another soil test. Um, and that will let me know how my fertilization program and also the lime applications that I've been doing over the season, how those have helped influence nutrient levels in the soil. So at a minimum twice a year, I've been doing them quarterly, like every quarter mainly because I started doing that last year and I just like the data. I'm not saying that anyone else really needs to do that, but it's cool to me to be able to see, hey, every quarter, every three months, how much does pH really move around? How much does the, does macro, does like nitrogen levels and you know all the different nutrient levels, how do they move around throughout the season? So I do it more just for my, um, for just for research, because I just like having, you know, that type of data to be able to look at, but it's not necessary. I'd say if you're in a perfect world, if you have the time, which again, it doesn't take very long to do, I would get one of these guys, the MySoil soil test, um, along with it, get a probe. So the first time you buy the soil test kit, buy the one that has the probe, the package that has the probe in it. And then um, after that, all you have to do is buy the test kits and then do one in the spring, one in the fall, and you're good to go. And as far as where you can get those, you can get them on the golf course lawn store. I'll show you real quick here, BCB properties. So um, just go to the golf course lawn store, scroll down, and here you've got a couple of options. You've got, like if you're starting out, you got the starter pack here. You've got just the test kit without anything, and then you got the pro pack, which is kind of cool. Like you could buy this and you're good for the year. That comes with two sole test kits and the probe. So if you're just starting out, you could go with something like that. But this is the one that I like to use because it's super easy. You get all your um, all your nutrients um, in that, so you get like your nitrogen, and like uh, NPK, micronutrients, pH, everything is, is in your results, um, and it's super easy to understand and read. So that's um, why I like that one. Hopefully that helps answer your question. All right, next up we got Lino Gomez says, "Hey Ron, my lawn is getting overrun with weeds. What type of post-emergent do you recommend for cool season grass?" Um, tenacity and speed zone. So tenacity just by itself works pretty well. Some people get mixed results with that. But um, there's a video, which I will link to you here in the chat. I'll link to you right now so you can check that out. That Princess Cut Lawn Care put a, put a lot of time into putting together that shows you how to mix that combination up that works really well in cool season grass. So Lino Gomez at, um, there we go. And then this is the video you should, you should check out that talks about um, a blend that works well in, uh, in cool season um, grass. Dada, K, I think I've already answered your question as far as pre-emergent application times. times. Um, Patrick um, in Texas says, if I have high pH, should I stay away from Carmen Pro G? Excellent question, it's an awesome question. The answer is no, no, you shouldn't have. So the, and so, so the, where you're going with this, Patrick, is um, 
if you just strictly use just straight biochar, like non-charged biochar, um, it has a tendency to raise pH levels. The biochar that's in Carbon Pro G and also in Essential G is charged, meaning that it, it, it tries to find equilibrium in the mid sixes. So if you apply it to a higher pH soil, it's gonna try and draw it down. If you apply it to a lower pH soil, it's gonna try and draw it up. So yes, um, Carbon Pro G or Essential G, you can apply those even with your high pH soil, no problem with that um, at all. So great, great question. I've been asked that one before, but that's, it's good to just repeat it every now and then. That's, that's a, a great question. All right, um, so um, Aaron Meltzer says, hey Ron, I have a mix of centipede and some Bermuda and Bahia. Any way to get rid of the Bermuda and Bahia? Man, you gave me the tough one. If you're trying to tell me you want to get rid of the Bahia, I, I could just tell you just do Celsius. Um, I have to look into that, man. I don't know what, I mean, I, I know that um, Celsius, Celsius will kill Bahia. It will not kill Bermuda. Um, as, far as, as, as far as a, uh, selective herbicide that will kill Bermuda in a centipede lawn. I don't think Fusilate will do that either. I'm not. I'm not sure on that one. Let's see. Kill Bermuda and um, and Bahia. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time this week looking up this, researching this. Um, Bahia in centipede. Okay, yeah, I have to do some research on that one um, for you, Aaron. I've not gotten that one before. I don't know if it's possible, um, but I will look into it and get you an answer. If there's, if there's one product you can use that will do both of those. Again, if you're trying to get rid of Bahia, um, Celsius. If you're trying, but, but Celsius is not gonna kill Bermuda. It's specifically designed not to kill Bermuda. So if, you, if you're fine with the Bermuda and you just wanna get rid of the Bahia, you can use Celsius. But if you wanna kill the Bermuda and Bahia, that's a tough one. Again, Bermuda is really hard to kill, so it's hard to um, hard on that one. It's a tough one to um, to, uh, to to go with that, um, and yeah, and so yeah, so you, so Frank is talking about Trimic nine nine two for weed control in Bahia. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. I'll I'll look into uh, into that one. Make a note of it. Um, but um, the thing with tenacity, you also make a note there on tenacity is that it's um, you said it's safe for it's safe for Bahia, which he is trying to kill, I believe, right? So um, he wants he wants the Bahia and um, he wants the, Bermuda, the Bahia and the Bermuda grass gone. He wants to keep the centipede. So um, so yeah. Well, I'll do some research on that one. I'll get an answer for you, uh, Aaron. Great great questions. Good good stumper question. All right. Um, Suraj Mathra says, Hey Ron. Hey everyone. Days are starting to get shorter. Temps are getting a little lower. Looking forward to off season. A nice break of Bermuda rehab. Your tips really help the season. Thank you. You and me both, man. As much as I love mowing, I am ready for it to slow down. I'm ready for a break. I'm ready to, you know, sit back, just do the live stream, make my content once a week, you know, does chat with you guys. That's going to be nice. I'm ready. I'm ready for, uh, to, for a nice change of pace. Um, that will be cool. All right. Um, Let's see here. Ralph Oliver says, Ron, a lot of people in Florida have Bahia. Maybe not by choice, but they have it. I ripped mine out by hand last year while unemployed in Cedar Bermuda. And that's how I ended up here. LOL. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it, man. Um, I, I need to do some more research on Bahia because I'm getting more more questions on Bahia grass. And I honestly just don't know that much about it. So, all right. Thanks for your, thanks for your help, Papa Moslo. I appreciate it. Safe weekend to you, sir. Take care. Um, have a good Labor Day weekend. And then let's see here. So Jason Sales says, what's a good blanket weed control for a yard full of weeds? All kinds, mostly crabgrass. So for someone just starting out, something that's easy to apply, um, Jason, I'm gonna say go with this. It's Spectracide. Um, it's a weed stop product from Spectracide. Uh, you can find this at your local big box store. It kills a ton of weeds. Um, you didn't say what kind of grass you have. I'm assuming I'm assuming um, warm season grass by, act, by asking, by uh, in this answer. Um, but you can find this at your local big box stores. It's a good product, kills crabgrass, kills a bunch of other stuff, um, and it's relatively easy to apply. You can apply it with a hose and sprayer. There are more professional grade products that you can use as well outside of um, Spectracide. Um, but you know, for someone just starting out, I wouldn't, you know, you don't need to go down that rabbit hole. You got to have a backpack sprayer. You got to mix them accurately. You got to make sure you wear the right PPE. It's just another, it's just like a whole other, you know, order of magnitude. Just, I was saying it's not hard, but it's just more work than just buying the bottle of Spectracide, making sure you got long pants on, long shirt and some gloves and just spraying it. It's, it's just, just easier. It's already mixed, you know? There's nothing really that you have to do outside of, um, outside of that. 
All right, so great. Hopefully that helps. Um, if not, let me know and I'll, I'll revisit it. If you're looking for a cool video showing you what's involved in using one of the more professional grade um, blends that works for, that works pretty well, um, check out this video that I did um, that talks about mixing two two products, um, Celsius and Certainty. But I mean, again. Um, I would just go with the spectrocyte, honestly, just for, you know, you're trying to get rid of crabgrass. Like it has, it has, it's actually better for crabgrass than my concoction because it has, um, um, it has, it has conchloric in it, which is better against crabgrass than Celsius or certainty for sure. All right. Um, great, great question. All right. So um, next up, we got Austin Beard it says, um, Ron, I have a mixture of Bermuda and tall fescue in my lawn. I live in Dallas. We're just not mid nineties every day. My tall fescue looks great, really. Besides the by besides Bermuda, why they've been treated the same all season, huh? Um, I I'm guessing you're mowing your Bermuda tall, um, Austin, and I guess maybe you I don't know your tall fescue, whatever you're doing to your lawn, as far as you know the fertilizer, your mowing practices, the watering, it's just it's just taking it's just it's doing all right. So, um, if it's if it's working well, you like the way it looks, roll with it, man. I wouldn't um I wouldn't change it if it's working. You know, because, you know, normally um, temps in the 90s, tall fescue should not do well in those types of temperatures. But if yours is doing well, you know, I mean, I, it's better than the opposite. So I would uh, I would just keep doing whatever you're doing because um, it seems to be um, it seems to be working. You said, why does your tall fescue look better than your Bermuda? Oh, so you said not that it looks thing, but why does it look better? I don't know, because it really shouldn't. It really shouldn't. That's that, that's a tough one. Um, the only I could say is this. If if you have if your if your lawn is shaded, um, let me see. Did you didn't say anything about the sunlight? If your lawn is shaded, despite the fact that it gets um, a lot of heat, like the fescue will do better in shade than Bermuda will. So if your lawn have, if you have some big trees in your lawn um, and you've got you know your fescue just tends to do is doing well despite 90 degree heat, like Bermuda will not do well in shade, whereas fescue will. That's the only thing I can think of that would cause a fescue and Bermuda when they're growing together for the fescue to really thrive and the Bermuda to fall back a little bit. That's that without seeing your lawn, um, that's what kind of comes um, comes to mind. Um, JG says Mickey K grass hole. Gra uh, grass hole, grass trolls, that's a great one. You guys are having way too much fun with yourselves. Too much fun. All right, um, Jill Reyna488 says, I have um, Nimbleweed and Wild Violet. Ever any recommendation on herbicide? I think Spectracide will do that. I think it'll do Violet. Um, let's see if it does Nimbleweed. Just like over 470 weeds according to the label. So let's look here really quick. So nimble um, weed is not on the label, but um, Violet I think is. Um, yeah, so it treats a couple different types of violet. So I have to do some, I have to look for you on the, I don't have anything for you on the Nimbleweed um, problem, question off the top of my head. Um, uh, Jill Reyna, 488. I don't know what kind of grass you have, but if you've got warm season grass, this is the product that I'm talking about. This is gonna cost you like 10, 15 bucks, not that expensive, and it will take care of the wild violet. Might also take care of the Nimbleweed as well too, but it's not listed on the label. So I have to do some research on that. I'm gonna find out. What will kill nimbleweed? Um, nimbleweed um, herbicide. So it's good for that's a good one for me to, uh, to do some research on. Great, great question. All right. Um, let's see. Austin Bird says, any thoughts on barren bug, barren bug ry, uh, rhizome? <laughs> can't say that word. Rhizomotus uh, tall fescue. Can't keep it. Uh, can I keep it looking nice even during scorching Dallas summer? I've never used it, so I can't really say. I know that Baron Brug makes a, makes a quality seed product, so I can't tell you for sure um, how good it is. But I mean, I just look at the reviews, look at what other people have, have said about it, and go based on that. It should be all right, but I've, I don't have any direct experience with it to be able to tell you how well it would um, it would work or not. All right, next up, VMH is saying, "Hey, Ron, once the Bermuda seeds germinated and grow for about four weeks, should we put down fall pre-emergent?" Um, or don't deal or don't and deal with the winter weeds. Um, VMH, with everything you've been through with trying to get that lawn to grow, I would probably forego the pre-emergent this fall. And I, I hate to say that because I just know you're going to have POA. You're going to be dealing with weeds in the springtime. But like um, we can deal with POA. We've got, you can do like some certainty um, and image. We could do, we have some options for, for killing off POA in the springtime. But as much work as you've been putting in your lawn this season, I don't want to take a chance of putting down anything that's gonna that's gonna potentially damage like the seed that you're finally getting the germinate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it should be fine, but um, 
just knowing that everything you've gone through, let's um, let's wait till the spring. As long as you just 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 know that you are going to have weeds in your lawn. We are making you're making this decision consciously, and you're just going to deal with it after the fact later on. You know, so that's as long as you're good with that, you're good to go. All right. Um, let's see um, what else we've we've got going on here. Um, Murta says, "I'm glad you're informing people um, about pesticides." Yep. So, yep. Thanks for thanks for that, Twilly. I appreciate the uh, the comment. Um, Murta has a question. He says, um, "I just put down carbonized PN for an overseed leveling project. Perennial ryegrass seed is coming in nicely. How soon after can I put down TNX for this cool season lawn in the Northwest?" Let's let it. Let's let it. Um, you know, established first Mertel. So like, I'm glad, carbonized PN is a great, you know, great uh, uh, top dressing mix or organic material to get your seeds to grow in. Let's let the grass establish and grow nicely. So, you know, mow it, you know, two or three times. Um, and then if you wanna look at a PGR, that's fine. But I wanna make sure it's, it's healthy, it's strong, it's doing well before we smack it with some P, with PGR. Again, it's not, you're not, um, when applied at the correct rate, um, PGR is mildly stressful to the grass. If you apply it at the correct rate for perennial ryegrass, you're not going to kill it, but it's still a mild stressor. So like, you know, the fact that you just seeded the lawn, you're, it's just growing in, let's let it get a little bit more established before we, we do anything to it that's going to, um, it's going to introduce stress. And besides, because it's a brand new lawn, you shouldn't really need PGR until it really starts growing aggressively anyway. So let's, let's let it grow in nicely before you do that. Um, very good. Donna K says, cool season lawn. What's your thoughts on dormant seeding? In this case, what would be the right time to apply seed? Um, so for cool season lawns, like the time to, to see those is around now. So like September is the month when, when yeah, you're going to see tons of YouTube content of people seeding, um, either overseeding their lawns or seeding cool season lawns. Um, as far as dormant seeding, so you mean like putting it down like in winter months or during the summer months when whenever the grass goes dormant, you could do that. But I mean, to me, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the real benefit of doing that is because if you apply, if you apply grass seed at a time when it's not optimal for the grass to grow, it will, what the worst thing that could happen is that it actually germinates. So it could germinate, but then like good example, like what I did, what I do when I tested with perennial ryegrass, right? I put down, I seeded perennial ryegrass in the middle of summer. Like as soon as summer was starting, I put it down. It germinated beautifully, but it germinated in the middle of like a lot of heat. And what happened? It had a hard time staying alive and it ultimately died off, right? So you want to see the lawn um, when you're entering the time when it has as much time for optimal conditions for the grass to grow well. You can do whatever you want. You can seed whenever you want, but. Um, given the expense and time commitment involved in seeding, I would do it like at the beginning of the time when the grass is going to, you know, when it's correct for that type of grass, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps out. Hopefully my, my explanation makes sense to you. Um, Austin says, have you ever seen the evergreen sprinkler heads? I have not. I've never heard of that one, never seen it, um, but I'll take a look at it. We'll see. All right. Um, VMH says the Yardmaster backpack sprayer using the flood jet tip when spraying higher pressures, it wouldn't give the largest droplet for soil applications. Wouldn't T jet, a turbo T jet induction be better? Yeah, I mean you can. It comes with an assortment of tips, but if you can get the induction tip, um, the air induction tip with the for the, the produces the larger droplets, you can absolutely do that too. VMH, that's obviously an option. But it comes with, I was it comes with three tips. It comes with the, with the two tips that the all the T jet sprayers, all the sorry, like the flow zone comes with. But it also comes, I want to say it's three um, sprayer tips. I want to say that. But it's going to be in the review that I do eventually here. So stand by. It's coming. It is um, coming. Um, let's see here. FXR Parlor says, Ron, any cool season grass overseed projects for, your, for in the future, in my future? Overseeding as far as like overseeding on my lawn? No. <laughs> I'm not I'm not overseeding my lawn with, with the cool season grass mainly because I don't want to mow in when it's cold out. And I don't want to spray herbicide on it in the spring. So that's why. I am going to seed, like I have some little grass planters outside. I will grow some, some maybe some Kentucky blue, blue grass in that, but that's going to be the extent of me growing cool season grass on my uh, lawn. That's going to be the extent of it. All right. Um, next up, we got Do It Right Dad here says, if I wanted to, to sod a warm season lawn full of weeds, should I kill the weeds in the fall and sod in the spring? Yes, you could. I mean... Here's the thing, you can you can really can sod um, warm season grass. You can you can do it anytime. Like my sod was put down in the middle of winter, not the most ideal time to do it, but it grew in just fine. 
Um, but yeah, if you want to kill off the weeds now, like you want to take this time period to knock the weeds back, kill them off. Um, you know, put down a pre-emergent during the fall so they don't, they're not, and then when springtime rolls around, um, they're not going to be growing in as much. You could do that. Um, it's kind of, kind of your call. Um, but it's not, it's not strictly, it's not strictly necessary to do it right, dad, but it's your, your, your call. It's your call on that. I've seen people, um, install sod, like I mean, in other words, around here, which a lot of the, 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 the homes in this neighborhood are new. I've seen sod installed at all different times a year. And as long as it's watered properly, so it gets to establish, especially if it's like a, a warm season, like it's Bermuda, it's going to grow in just fine. So um, no uh, no worries on that one. But if you want to kill the weeds and before you get rid of, before you bring the sod in, um, one less thing for you to have to contend with. If you're going to do pre-emergent in the fall, use something like prediamine because it doesn't last as long as like something like um like spectacle flow like a um like a like the longer like the longer ones cuz you don't you don't want to put down sod and then immediately still have a lot of um pre-emergent um still in the uh in the soil. So I would just do pro I mean if you decide to do it this this fall. Your call. All right. Um next up we have a Boucher's Mar um Marzok saying what are the heights of um, heights on a true cut a C25? Trying to see what the best height of cut is. Um, so it depends. I think a, I want to say a true cut can go up to two inches. I've never mowed it, mowed my my lawn with it that high, um, and I really wouldn't recommend mowing it, mowing your grass with a real mower that high. So it can go up to two inches and well below half an inch. So it's got a pretty broad range as far as cutting heights. Um, the optimal height, Botros is really based on how much time you have to mow your lawn. The, low, the, the general rule is the lower you go, the more often you have to mow. So a, a for real mowing, you didn't say what kind of grass you have, but for Bermuda, a good height of cut for Bermuda is around 0.75 inches. If you can mow it three quarters of an inch, that's a good height where you're not having to be out there every other day mowing the lawn. It looks really good. Once you start going below that, it, it takes a lot more commitment to keep the grass looking good between mowing. So you've got this broad range, but really if you're doing it right, you're going to be mowing under an inch um, if you're using a real mower. That's ideally what you'd want to be doing. So great, uh, great, great question. All right, next up we got here, um, what natural weed preventer is good for crabgrass? Um, hmm, natural weed control. I'm not really aware of any that won't, that will not, that will prevent crabgrass from growing. I can tell you that this season, like if you mow your lawn short, like if you're mowing it like half an inch, um, that is really hard on crabgrass. Like it's still going to germinate and it's still going to grow, but it's going to, it's always going to look sickly. It's never going to get really, um, it's not, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to like really establish and become a real big mess. Like in my lawn, there's got crabgrass all throughout it. Um, I bet a lot of you guys can't even tell, right? Because the lawn is mowed so short and I haven't been spraying any real post-emergence on it other than when I did that video on the Celsius uh, Certainty Combo. Um, and so as long as you're, if you're, I guess the natural preventer for wab, crabgrass or the natural way to, to control crabgrass, if you don't want to spray any herbicides, it's to mow your lawn really short, but really just apply pre-emergent. It's not that hard to do and that is going to do a lot for keeping crabgrass away. That is really what I'd recommend. All right, Kevin is saying, Grass, uh, grass is going brown and thinning in spots. Growth has slowed way down as well. Grub and fungus control applied out three weeks ago. No big, no change. Um, possible pH issue. Let me see. Grass is going brown and thinning in some spots. Um, uh, growth is slowed. So I, I'm not sure where you are, Kevin. Um, but just know that you know it's the grass should still be pre going fairly well if you have warm season grass. It hasn't cooled off that much yet. Um, the grub and fungus control. Um, if you had grubs or army worms in your lawn, those should, should stop that. If you had a fungus problem, those again should suppress or stop that. Um, but as far as it going brown and thinning, um, are you letting the, the grass get really tall and then mowing it? Are, in other words, are you mowing infrequently? Because if you're not mowing the lawn regularly, especially when the temperatures are high, um, especially with warm season grass, it is going to look brown. So that, that's the one thing with, with, um, with warm season lawns like Bermuda, like this time of year, especially like July, August, you really need it. You got to be mowing more, more often if you want the lawn to stay green between mowings. So um, I don't have all the information to be able to answer your question, but I, I doubt it's a pH issue. I doubt it's a pH issue. All right. Um, Jay Pompano says, um, dude, you're awesome. There's no way other way to put it. Great session, man. Thanks for all you do. Take care. Good night, um, Jay. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Um, Twilo says, um, you are killing... This is uh, Tully says you're killing this. About to get to the point where you can't answer everything. 
Um, thanks for your time. Yeah, it's getting there, Jay, because we are already after, um, it's been four hours and we still got a couple more, but we're gonna burn through them. Or I just gotta give shorter answers. I, got, I need to learn to talk less, which you know for me can be a problem at times, right? So, oh, um, let's see, let's see. What, other, what, else, what, else, what else we got here? Um, prehistoric pirates says my dad mows his lawn and accidentally cut his finger in a sharp blade. Um, yeah, well, yeah, don't stick your lawn, don't stick your finger under lawnmowers. That's uh, that's always a bad idea. Don't do that. Okay, um, and then the last says, last year I had an issue with moss. I removed and reseeded, but I'm worried about it coming back. My pH was low, so I added a bunch of lime. Should I use something else to stop it this fall? No, just keep doing, um, keep adding lime. Add lime. I mean, if you haven't soil tested again to see where the, your pH is gone, um, you should do that. But I mean, if you if it was low enough that it was causing, you know, if your pH is in the low fives or even lower, um, that is definitely creating a condition where moss is going to be love and life. So the so we can um, if you if you had low pH this fall, I would also add lime again too. I would um, the last. So that's um, that would be my recommendation. All right, Kevin says, I think you just answered my question. My first year using biochar and it was uncharged, so I bet my pH is high. It depends, man, because here's the thing, there's, there's a lot of, there's, there's, you'll get different different views on that. And, and as far as how much of it, how much of it you need to apply to materially raise pH, um, to raise pH levels. So but yeah, you get your soil test done, you'll see, like the, the soil test will, will give you the answer. So, uh, so there, there you go. All right, poetic, uh, <laughs> poetic stud one hundred and one. I like it. I dig it. Poetic stud one hundred and one says, "What's the best fall fertilizer uh, for Mich for Michigan grass that will not burn the lawn?" Okay, so the way to find out what the best fertilizer is for your particular grass is to do a soil test. This will tell you what kind of fertilizer you need to be applying in your lawn. If you're like Ron, don't want to do a soil test, but I want a great fertilizer application that will not burn my lawn if I apply it at the rate per label, then I've got a great option for you. And that would be the one we all know and love, which is Humic Max from Lebanon Turf. This one right here is in the Golf Course Lawn Store. So go to golfcourselawn.store and then scroll down and you will see Humic Max. This is an excellent, excellent fertilizer. Awesome product. Um, it's a 1608, so not super high on nitrogen or potassium, but it also has 8.9% humic acid um, poetic stud. So in addition to feeding the soil from a standpoint, uh, of feeding your grass from a standpoint of giving it the macros that it needs, like some nitrogen, a little bit of potassium, it's also going to put some um, humic acid into the soil, which is going to help with microbial activity. It's just, it's just really, really rich organic material that's just going to help improve your lawn um, overall. So if you want a great option, uh, humic max is what I would say to go with. So there, there you go. But really the best answer is you really need to do a soil test and get get the and based on the results, fertilize based on that. But if you just want something to put down now just to get started, um, Humic Max is an, is an awesome option. So there you go. All right, so Raj Molthra says, for a new Bermuda lawn after seeding, would you wait till it goes dormant to apply pre-immersion to reduce any harm to new grass? Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, depends. Yeah. So the, the thing is the, the root system is still the thing that pre-emergent pre does not attack the top growth. It attacks the ability, um, to grow roots. Right. So, um, in other words, if you, if you grew grass seed, if you put down Bermuda now, right. Um, which you really should, but if you see the Bermuda now and you got it fully established, it grew in really nicely and you were to go still go apply pre-emergent in the fall, it's still probably a bit early. Um, even though the Bermuda is going to be going dormant because it's still young. It's still a new, it's still a young grass. Like you're not going to have six, eight inch roots from grass that was just planted, you know, a month or two ago. So um, if you planted Bermuda grass seed like the latter part of this year, then waiting until the spring is is better out of an abundance of caution. That That is what I would do. That is a what I would go with. All right, so um, Gregor, Gregor, Gregorio Martinez has run. Um, what uh, what would you recommend for my lawn for, for, for the fall? I have tall fescue and I got a lot of weeds and crabgrass. Uh, I'm in Tennessee. So you have tall fescue, you got a lot of weeds and crabgrass. Okay, so that same blend that I was telling you um, that Princess Cut put together, so Tenacity and Speed Zone, um, that is, that's a good concoction that will work well on cool season grass. Here is the video. I'll put that in the chat for you, Gregorio. Here's a video that shows you how to mix it. Um, so let's see, at Greg, there you go. Gregorio Martinez. 
This is the video that shows you how to how to mix it, how to apply it. Um, that that will that's that's what I would do if you're looking for something to knock out um, weeds and crabgrass in a cool season uh, lawn in Tennessee. All right, um, uh, BCB is back. He says, Ryan, saw St. Augustine sod in June. Been getting some sedge. How soon can I apply a weed killer um, herbicide to the new lawn? Well, I mean, if you if you if the St. Augustine is established, because June, so June, July, August, so it's been it's been a few months. If you want to apply, uh, if you want to go with like certainty, um, that that would work because that works against sedges. Um, that's a that's a good option. You can also use image. That image is going to work as well too. It's a little bit it's a bit slower to work. Um, because it's been a few months. I mean, those either of those should work, should work fine. Just make sure you follow the label, make sure you apply it at rate. Do not go heavy, and uh, you should be good to go. Out of those two, certainty is gonna work better um, than, than image, but um, either, one, either one should work. And if you need a link to certainty, uh, I've got it right here, got you covered. It is um, right there, at B, uh, C, B, long property, there you go. That's that's what I would go with. All right. Oh, yeah, so Connor Souls is saying I definitely need to check out the those uh Irrigan or Irrig Green uh sprinklers are digital and you can create a border word spray to avoid the house and driveway. It sounds cool, man. But it also sounds like more stuff to break and go wrong. That's that's what that sounds like to me. Mm. But it's cool, man. If it saves water, it's a good idea. As long as it saves water and it's reliable and it's, you know, it's just not a pain to fix if something if something breaks. Because, I mean, here's the problem. The more complex you make things, the more they're going to break, right? Like, complexity is the um, is the enemy of reliability, right? So uh, so there is that. Okay, we're, we're winding down, guys. We are winding down. Botros Marzlik says, Thank you, Ron. I have Bermuda grass. This is my first season having Bermuda. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the cult of craziness. Here's the thing, um, um, Botros. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you that Bermuda is a weed and that it's like a subpar grass. Do not listen to them. Bermuda is alpha. It's, it, is, it is alpha grass. That is all. And you said, you top dressed it already. It looks great. I'm planning on doing it again. Man, you jumped, you jumped in hardcore. He says, I live in NC. What should I be doing now? Just mowing it, mowing it and enjoying it. Um, in a couple of weeks, um, put down a fall pre-emergent. Um, and then uh, and then in October, uh, if you want to, I'll have a video on this, but if you want to do a preventative fungicide, um, that's a good idea too. So like, because one thing you can that can happen in Bermuda, you can get spring dead spot, spring dead patch, depending on you ask to, like spring dead spot to spring dead patch. Um, and it's something you need to take care of in the fall. Like by the time you see it in the spring, it's already too late. And it's a, it's, it's a pretty nasty fungus because it takes quite a while for the grass to recover from it. Like my lawn had mm, three nasty spots of it. And it's only in the last eh, last month that it's really grown in and filled in nice and you can't really see it anymore. So if you want to prevent stuff like that, putting down a fall fungicide is a good ex a good idea. You can use um, Heritage. Heritage G is a good option, but I'm going to be using Headway because... Um, if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go with the Mac Daddy one, right? And if you want to see those, I'll, put, I'll give you, I'll put both those in the chat for you. Um, but yeah, outside of that, just, just enjoy the lawn, man. Put down pre-emergent, like Prodiamine is a great option. You can get a um, small bottle of it like this here in the Golf Course Lawn Store. Um, and this will take care of, um, I want to say this will cover up to 6,000 square feet um, in a Bermuda lawn. So if you have more than that, I also have it in bigger containers. But if you have a small lawn, just get the small one. And uh, you'll be good to go. And as far as that fungicide um, at, um, option, I'll um, I'll put that in there for you. So you have your, your choice between Headway or Heritage. Either one of those is going to work well. But really, just and mow the lawn, enjoy it. Uh, very good. Um, um, Austin Bird says, um, uh, well, let's see. He says, Hi Ron, there's so much info here. It gets confusing. Do you have a website that will tell us how to treat each grass, each type of grass, or something similar? Um, I don't have a website. I do have a blog post that talks about a, that talks about this in more. I'm going to say in more detail, but t but but like doesn't give you like a 30 second or two minute answer. That um like it, it brings it out in a slower pace. Um, it's at the golf course salon store. Let me show you that. So this blog post here, you guys probably never click on it, but if you just go to the to the to my store, the golf course salon store, and then right here you see blog, which probably everyone ignores because they're just trying to get those products. Click on that. 
Um, in there is a guide that I wrote a couple years ago, but I've updated it quite a bit since its, its original version. It talks about step-by-step -step guide for getting a golf course lawn. And it talks about top dressing, the products that I use, how much top dressing does it cost you, choosing the right mower, fertilizer, um, like for a, a mild application calendar, mowing frequency, pre-emergent and PGR, fungicides and insecticides, watering. And then I have like a calendar here, a mild one. Like in my course, I have like a much more detailed one with application rates. But at the bottom of that post it tells you like from month to month what you can do to um, to get a good result um, in your lawn. So you can take a look at that if you're looking for something that's a bit more spread out, that isn't, um, you know, quite as like uh, like drinking from a fire hose like the, like the live stream uh, can be. So check that out, golfforcelawn.store, go to the blog, and that you can get that that uh, that post. Uh, very good. And then Jay Clark says, hey, Ron, just joined. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, um, if you've just joined the Loft Golfer Salon Academy, um, I think that's what you're talking about, um, be sure to join the private Facebook group. In the, the, in the lessons, there's a link in there that'll tell you about um, the group and the password you need to put in there. So put that in there because that's how I vet people. Um, and yeah, make sure you do that. Make sure you take advantage of it. Lots of other lawn crazies that are in there hanging out. So make sure you take advantage of that. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. All right. Next up, we got Scott Wilbanks who says, Ron, awesome channel. I live in Arkansas, not Arkansas, but Arkansas, and I have Bermuda. What is the benefit of scalping the lawn in the spring? Great question. So um, it speeds up green up by a few weeks. So the idea is with scalping is you're getting rid of any dead material, any thatch, any any of that just, I guess, the matted crud that's in the Bermuda, in your Bermuda lawn that's that's been sitting there from when the lawn went dormant until the springtime. Is it necessary? Like, do you absolutely have to do it? No, absolutely not. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, scalp your lawn. There's people that don't scalp their lawns and their lawns still look, still look just as fine. The benefit to scalping, again, is that you're removing all, um, a lot of that dead material. And more importantly, you're also opening up the, um, the canopy to where heat, um, heat, moisture, so, I mean, you just open up the canopy where heat and sunlight can get down to, to the soil, which is gonna warm it. So it, I think a lot of the fact that you get the, the green up earlier is that that, that that little coat of insulation, that little um, barrier of insulation that the thick matted down grass provides, you're removing that. So the grass grows in or turns green a little bit sooner than it would had you not um, scalped. Negative to it is it's a lot of work. It creates a huge mess. And you really, if you're doing it right, you gotta take all the clippings out after you do it. So you shouldn't scalp through your lawn and leave all the clippings on the lawn. Like there's not no point in doing that. So you really need to make like a couple of passes and then you gotta remove all that material. So it's, it's a ton of work. Um, it's also pretty hard on equipment. So that's a negative to it too. But, um, but yeah, if you want your lawn to turn green a little bit sooner, um, that is why you would do that. That is why, so hope that helps. Uh, you're very, very welcome, sir. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Austin Barrett says, what grasses mix well Bermuda lawn that keeps shady areas looking full? Like a fescue. And when I say mix as well, like fescue looks nothing like Bermuda, but um, you can do fescue in the shaded areas and it will do better than Bermuda will. So, you know, that's um, that's that's an always an option. And then um, let's see here. Iron Joe says, what's your opinion on lawn service companies? Um, I don't know. I think here's the thing. I think a lot of times they get a bad rap, but you have to realize that a big part of what they do, like they're trying to spray, they're, they're trying to put weeds, um, weed control on your lawn, they're trying to fertilize your lawn, and they're trying to do it at a price that's competitive. And that normally means, you know, six to eight applications per year. Um, and you still have to do your part. So they will put down, you know, uh, pre emergent in the spring and the fall if they're any good. They'll, they'll fertilize your lawn a few times a year. They'll come and they'll spot spray for weeds a couple times per year. But then in between all that stuff, you got to mow your lawn, right? Like, the, like one of the best things you can do to control weeds in your lawn and have a great looking lawn is to mow it frequently. So I, I think that there are some that are better than others. There's that's definitely, there's no, no denying that. But um, they're also not miracle workers, meaning that if you don't, you don't, if you only mow your lawn every two weeks, it doesn't matter if you have a lawn care service treating your lawn, or if you're doing everything that I tell you to do, if you buy everything that's in the golf course lawn store, if you're putting down, you know, the, the carbon kit you're using, Humic Max fertilizer you're using, Release Zero, you're doing all those things, your lawn's still not gonna look great because mowing is the thing that, I mean, it's, it's, it's super important. Like all this stuff matters, it definitely matters, it definitely makes a difference, but mowing is the single most important thing um, to having a great looking lawn. And most people that complain about lawn service companies, they don't mow their lawns that much, and that's, you know, that's the results of that. So that's that's my take on it. I don't. I mean, I don't have any hate against them. I think that they they provide a service. Not not everybody. Actually, most people don't want to do what 
most of the people in this in this section on the comments are doing. They don't want to mess with like applying stuff to their lawn. They want to pay someone to do it, and they want good looking grass, right? So they they serve up. They definitely serve a, a valid purpose. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, Botros says oh, I use a true cut the same one you have in your videos. Where should I have the height of cut set? Um, I have it set right in the middle, but I'd love to cut shorter. When I top dress, what fertilizer to use? Okay, so depending on how the um, there's like bolts on the side that connect that, that that set where the front roller is, and depending on how that is set up, that will dictate like um, how the height of cut on the mower runs. So I can't tell you like put it on notch four and it's gonna it's gonna mean this height of cut. So every true cut can be can be slightly different. I guess is what I'm trying to get to here. Um, if you like the way it looks, keep it at that height. If you want to go lower, you can, but it means mowing more frequently. If you go lower, you got to mow more often. As far as the fertilizer to use after top dressing, I like Humic Max. That's what I use. Um, I've been using this season. I've been getting awesome results with it. In the video that I did on top dressing, that is a fertilizer that I show and discuss. If you want to see that one, um, the, for the product I'm talking about is this, Hum um, Country Club Humic Max. You can get it at the Golf Course Lawn Store. That is the one that I'm referring to. And if you've not seen my top dressing video, uh, check that out because in that it shows the entire process, um, everything from aeration to applying Essential G to applying the Humic Max, it shows all of it. So um, let me, I'll just send that to you, Botrus, before we sign off. I think you're about the last one. Check out that video. And I think we be good. I think that is about it, guys. All right, guys, well, cool. I think this is a record. I think this is the longest you've ever gone. You guys talked me out, but I mean, that's a good thing, right? The channel is growing. You guys had questions and I want to stick around and answer them as much as I could. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for sticking around and um, asking tons of great questions. I got a ton of research to do, tons of great things to come back to you guys with for next week. Um, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It helps me out. I put out content um, regularly in addition to the live streams. Um, and I'd love having you as a regular viewer. Also, please be sure to share these live streams if you think they can help with anyone, if it can benefit anyone else, share the content. Um, you can also get, again, a lot of the products we talked about on the Golf Course Lawn Store. I'll also have links in the end, in the description of this video once it's done, once I get done here. Um, so if you guys are watching this after the fact, you can just go in the description and in the stuff that I talked about, you can find the descriptions or links for them in the description of this video.